Hello race fans and welcome to the 24H Series Esports live here on Racebot TV. It's round three of the championship here at the beautiful Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas. My name is Peter McKay and joining me today for this broadcast will be David Haynes in the co-commentator chair. David, uh, a very modern circuit here as well. Your expectations for our drivers out here today? Well, it's always such an exciting championship with four different classes, endurance racing, strategy, all of those things. But I think the key difference to here at Cota compared to where we've been before at Sebring and Spa is it is a more modern circuit. There is more paved runoff, so track limits will become a big issue, both in qualifying and uh, across a six-hour race. Yeah, track limit's an excellent point, of course. More modern uh, circuit designs, as you say, much, much more runoff, and therefore, if you give racing drivers an inch, well, they sometimes try to take a mile. The TCRs are in the middle of their qualifying session, and we've had a busy time in TCR competition of late in the iRacing platform. Of course, the uh, IMSA series with uh, uh, running a TCR category, and, of course, the World Touring Car Series, which... Uh, culminated on Monday evening with Corentin Guinez winning for SimRC. But this man, Ross McFarlane, an absolute expert in this type of machinery. And uh, it'll be Honda versus Hyundai uh, today. And uh, we'll see who's going to come out on top. But some big, big names in this TCR category, David. Yeah, absolutely. It's super competitive. The cars are always super close, especially in the early phase of the racing, but what I can't help but notice is there's 10 uh, cars and nine have a qualifying time. And I think your bottom two don't look like they've put entirely representative times in uh, yet either. It's just a 15 minute qualifying session, all the TCR cars out on circuit together. And uh, yeah, your track limits, you are gonna be butting heads right up against that if you're trying to set your optimal qualifying lap time. I think there's a few cars out there that might be quicker if they hadn't just overstepped the line somewhere, somewhere out there in this session. Yeah, and of course, with such a long lap here uh, at uh, the Circuit of the Americas, 20 corners, and these TCR machines, the pole lap at the moment, 2 minutes and 17 seconds. So if you fluff a lap, especially early on, whether that be for track limits or a mistake, you've got to go all the way around and then start another lap again. So over the line comes Jaume Dalmez Torres, 217.854 to beat. And he that's who sets it there. Best time, 217.854 there for Zenit Esports. He goes up into second position. Good lap there. Marcel T, winner of the uh, Nürburgring 24 hour in the TCR category. And that hoisting belt car always looking resplendent in chrome and navy blue. Yep, absolutely, and he's been personal best through the middle sectors of the lap. The start of the lap was about even with what he's been doing before, so we'll be hoping to bring this one home for an improvement. There's only a couple minutes left to TCR qualifying. You see the time in the top left, that's for qualifying as a whole. Checkered flag's about two minutes away in TCR, and then after a tiny break goes GT4, then 992, then GT3, so 15 minutes for each class as qualifying groups probably means this will be the last lap, the last attempt uh, for those drivers you see. And the TCR cars do seem to keep getting performance and keep finding time on a set of tyres so they can stay out there, keep lapping and, and hope to improve. You get to cars like the Porsche 992 and the GT3 class field. They're a little more brutal on their tyres, they're a little peakier in their performance. It's kind of one run and that set is, uh, is, is no good, you've got to find another as well the group qualifying format here as well you know there's uh, you've got to make sure you get a, a nice clean run of things as well the drivers spreading themselves out pretty nicely as things stand now, there's a name I recognize number 121 Aspar team as well now is that uh, the same Aspar as uh, Jorge Martinez's motorcycle racing team I wonder uh, now, it's getting car 121. Sim RC, they're looking strong at the moment. 217.679 is your benchmark at the moment. Guinez in the Honda for this title. He won the 
World Touring Car Series in a Hyundai Veloster up towards the final corner he goes can he improve on a 217.679 here comes Corentin Guinez the French when he flashes the lights he knows it's good is it going to be an improvement it is 217.469 wow yeah sets a really fantastic benchmark pure sims are I think uh I'm not sure where they are actually on the lap right now, but I think that's qualifying done for Corentin Guinea, and he says that's hundreds out of that, but he couldn't find a whole tenth, and he's still uh, 2.4 shy of that pole. Yeah, good good lap time there from Ross McFarlane getting up onto the front row of the TCR grid. Of course, qualifying not as vitally, vitally important, as long as you're on those first couple of rows, definitely definitely helps um, but uh, yeah I'm sure Ross McFarlane will be reasonably pleased about that I think the trick will be uh, in this category uh, David is trying to make sure that uh, Guinness doesn't break away because if, if he does let the, the Frenchman get into a rhythm Sim RC could, could be into a handy lead early on because Guinness has got such strong pace watching the full send car across the line Eighth quickest for Mikel Garcia in the Hyundai Veloster. To see the number 121 Honda Aspar Esports. They're, they're ninth, but I, I don't think we have any other quick laps, David, unless you can see anyone lighting up the timing screen. Mm, Zenith look like they're still on it, potentially, uh, as we, we, we look at him here. I think they had one more. I think there might have been about 20 seconds left or so uh, when they last crossed the line. MSI, uh, you can see Pure Sims just behind as well. So there might be just one or two more. Again, you say a big lap, checkered flag only flew uh, a minute and a half ago. So anyone coming around just now definitely crossed last time before the checkered flag was out. So that's a personal best final sector as well. One of the best we've seen. And it does move them up to second. Yeah, that knocks Pure Sims off the front row of the grid. But here come Impulse Racing. They're a, a team to look out for as well in the TCR category. Half a second off at the moment. Best lap, 218.081. Do they improve? No, they stay in fifth. And Pure Sims, I think, just crossed the line behind them as well. Or maybe just in front of them. No improvement out of them. So great last flying lap attempts from Zenith Esports to move themselves up onto the front row of the grid. If this was just a TCR race, I don't think qualifying would be that important. But that first time the GT3 cars and the faster 992 uh, Cup cars come through, they really can break up the packs in, in TCR. And so being inside of the top half of the field, in touch with the TCR leader and not having that link broken it is what you're hoping to get out of a qualifying session like this. So... Uh, good qualifying from SimRC, Zenith, Pure Sims, and uh, MSI, I'd say, the front two rows of that class. Well, that's TCR complete then. Your pole setter will be the SimRC Hyundai, uh, SimRC Honda, excuse me, of Quentin Guinea. Then it's Zenith Esports with their Hyundai, Pure Sims, Honda in third for Ross McFarlane, MSI Esports in fourth, Impulse Racing in fifth, Carbon Simsport in sixth, Team Hoisting Velt in seventh, Full Send Racing in eighth. And Aspar Esports, they complete the nine car TCR grid. Just 1.1 seconds covering the entire uh, the entire field there. Quite remarkable. And yeah, it's I think you make a great point there, David, that when the when that first phase of faster traffic comes through, you're right, that could shuffle up the pack. So we've got to make sure you they've uh, not let Guinness break away uh, in that early stage. Yeah, precisely. That's that's what it boils down to. Great view of the track as well. I do love that aerial shot, and what it shows you is that really long back straight that's super important uh, to, to how you race, how you fuel save, especially in TCR. Yeah, very important indeed. So, so far we've had two iconic venues on the 24H Series Esports uh, calendar, Spa and Sebring, two iconic venues for endurance racing, or any racing for that matter. We're here at the midpoint part of the season, the six hours of the Circuit of Americas in Austin, Texas. Then, in about a month's time, we shift on to Monza, another speedrome 
of a circuit, lots of long straightaways there. Then on towards the Nürburgring with a 12 hour finale at the Circuit de Catalunya in Barcelona on the 4th of March. So a six month season, um, David. And you know, a lot changes in the iRacing world in that level of time. You know, we see the iRacing season, the iRacing world has four seasons of 12 weeks each. Of course, this championship will transcend a couple of those. And it's amazing how the performance between each vehicle can shift between each one of those seasons and the associated updates. Yeah, and the teams are locked into uh, their choice of car within class if they're in one of the classes where they've got an option. Uh, from the start of the season and then a lot can change between when you go oh i think this looks like a, a the, the good car to be in in for example gt4 as the green flag flies on their qualifying right now and they're leaving pit lane you might say oh i want to be in the mercedes or i want to be in the aston martin but six months later which is the form car to have could be radically different very good point indeed well if this is how the championship stands at the moment pure sims leading the way by just eight points from msi Team Heusingvelt are sitting there absolutely uh, level in second position as well. SimRC sit in fourth, 10 points off the lead of Pure Sims. Then it's Impulse Racing, Carbon Sims for Manatee Racing, Zenith, Aspar and Full Send. And for Zenith down there in eighth, David, they've put themselves in a great spot to add some points to that uh, tally. I'd say that's fair. Eighth in the standings, but now starting second on the grid for uh, this upcoming race, a good chance to move some points. And you look at how close uh, some of those are as well. I mean, we're, we're in a tie for second. You've got, you know, a point between Zenith and Aspar just behind them, and then a point between Carbon and Manizzi. So a lot to happen, a lot of racing still to happen. And we saw the schedule. You gotta remember that the 12 hours of Barcelona at the end is twice as many points as every race leading up until that point. So you, if you can be Within a shot of it, a lot can happen in 12 hours at the season finale. Yeah, it's a great point. Very good point. So GT4 will be our next qualifying session coming up. This is how they stand at the moment. The Mercedes AMG Team Urano outfit, they sit in a commanding lead with two wins so far this season. They'll have a 17 point advantage over SRC Mivano course. Then it's Sabel Esports in third with Fiercely Forward fourth and SCK Racing sitting in fifth. Torque Freak are in sixth, followed by Team Fordzilla, Pure Sims, SimRC and CSRA, but very tight from fifth down to 10th as well. So a lot to be decided over the next few rounds. So, whoa, here are our GT4s all out. And I tell you what, looks like they're in a bit of a hurry, David, to get a move on and get a lap time in. As it's, we've got a bit of a traffic jam here. It's like, well, it's like downtown Dubai with all these supercars. Yep, sure is. There was uh, nine cars out on track in TCR. It looks like we've got the full 16 on circuit right now in GT4. So it is noticeably busier. Might be noticeably a, a bit noisier as well. It's turbocharged V8s all round uh, with your two cars of choice in this category, being either that Mercedes AMG GT4 or there is one or two Aston Martins around and they might be thinking this is their chance for a great result because a little bit of a balance of performance break going their way. There's an extra eight kilograms on the Mercedes at this round so not a car that we've seen uh, take any wins yet this season not a car that's yet uh, stood on the podium from what I can recall but the Aston Martin's not been that far away and this could be their chance it could be yes it, it could well be of course two cars that have come to the iRacing simulator relatively recently uh, both the yeah both very elegant GT machines front engine rear wheel drive of course uh, and quite close to their uh, road-going siblings. Uh, the only difference, if my memory serves me, David, the Aston Martin actually runs the old, uh, naturally aspirated 4.7-litre V8, whereas, the, as you rightly say, the Mercedes is the, the twin-turbo 4-litre. Is that so? I thought the Aston had its um, modern road car engine in as well. So did I, uh, but last time I thought that was quite surprised myself when I uh, when I when I found it. Uh, yeah, 450 horsepower, 4.7 liter, 
V8, which is that's a it's quite an old engine actually. It's been around for goodness me, it must be about a decade that engine's been around for in various Aston Martin vantages. But uh, yeah, so that'll be interesting. Actually, aspirated versus twin turbo, and so far it's been all Mercedes. But with that, tell you what, with a, a class as close as this, David, eight kilograms, it might not sound much, but it it, it can make a difference. Also, two percent less fuel for the Mercedes as well. And over six hours, we can see that play out as well. Absolutely, I'd I'd say so. We're not at any great altitude here. So, a turbocharged versus atmospheric uh, difference shouldn't be too great, but what you do see is a lot of teams looking for a slipstream, and it's a tough game to play because you want to pick up that slipstream on the back straight if you can. It's a long lap before that, and you see Hunkos there always looked like they were getting impeded a little bit. You don't want to get such a great run at the start of the lap that you just end up stuck behind someone or needing to pass them. So this is going to get a bit messy in this first a uh, handful of runs. Now we've, we've luckily we've got uh, we've got people that we've got a very knowledgeable uh, viewership, David. Thankfully for us, because uh, on two counts we've had first thing confirmed that uh, the Aspar car is linked to the Aspar motorcycle team owned by Jorge Martinez. Um, so that's very cool. That's one of the real uh, real famous names in motorcycle racing. But and also our resident Aston Martin expert Ryan Walker. He says, yes, it is a naturally aspirated engine. An aspira naturally aspirated engine in the Aston Martin. Fantastic. Well, we've had the first run of times in, and you can see a couple of teams now on the second run not found themselves positioned where they wanted to pulling out of it. Hunkos, one of them. Things are getting messy here. The Urano, your championship leader, don't want to stay behind SimRC. You've now decided to duck out of the way. Then you see... Uh, Pure Sims and SRC Mavano Corsa right there looking to carry on with their laps. Pure Sims are on a good one here. Personal best at the 4.16 uh, Pure Sims because there are two of them, 4.16 and 4.17 and 4.16 two personal best sectors to start and then a purple middle sector and uh, it's the 4.17 we see there but the 16 just in front could go to the top with this time and in fact very likely should let's see what they can do then as well the two pure sims mercedes come out of the final corner then up to the line they go and it's paul it's paul for the 416 of matthew turnbull and pure sims esports and where does the team car go the team car sits in eighth at the moment curiously david i didn't think the gt4 cars would really be so draft dependent but judging by how the drivers are all lining up in a queue and trying to follow one another obviously it does Well, uh, I wouldn't call them super duper draft dependent, or no, what I would I say is so. they're, they're, they're sort of limited in their, relatively limited in their setup options compared to, you know, GT3 cars, etc. They are very, very close one team to the next, so the tiny margins matter. If everyone is going to be within, you know, two tenths of each other, then uh, a tenth of slipstream is. Is, is massive, could be the difference between qualifying mid-pack or qualifying at the tail or qualifying mid-pack or sitting it on pole. So I, I don't think they get, you know, seconds per lap and, you know, 10, 15 kilometers an hour down the straight from the slipstream. I, I think it just reflects on how uh, tightly knit the pack is and how inseparable they are without just that tenth of a second of slipstream that they can pick up down this long straight. And it's interesting dynamic there with these GT4 machines at the front. Uh, it's looking very strong for the Mercedes. The first Aston Martin, Sim RC, 10th place. Uh, only Aston Martin uh, out there that set a time. So, yeah, very, very interesting. Uh, complete dominance from the Mercedes. It has been a very popular car since it hit the service a, a, few, uh, a few months ago. So this car, the 421, uh, CSR A by Tropic. Is that who it is? Yep, tracking for pole position in their previous sectors, but in this long final sector, you've seen maybe 
almost getting a little bit impeded. That's the way it goes. You know, if you get a great slipstream, you will end up this close to the rear bumper of the car in front. Watch the timing column as we cross the line. And that's up to second, but how close was that from being pole? Oh, very, very close there. CSR, CSRA by intro, Entropic, six thousandths of a second, wow. So the top three covered by just 36 thousandths at the moment. As you say, David, that close, close um, the nature with the setup, very, 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 very important and how close the lap times are as well. This GT4 battle is going to rumble on and if you make any mistake, surely your day is done. You're not going to be able to come back from it. quite know but that just does show how close and how competitive it's looking up the front in this class. Here seems from CSR A by Entropic from CS SRC Movano Corsa. A little look at the weather conditions. I think that's a that's a very lovely day. That's kind of about what it is where I'm at. So uh, if you're colder than that, commiserations. If you're too much sweatier than that, also commiserations. Yeah well it's uh it's definitely not that warm here in Scotland, that's for certain. That's Did you see certain. that slide in the slow corner there from Maxi Stefanon in the Hunkos Racing Esports? Still the only car without a time on the board. The chequered flag's not that far away for these cars in this session. They only get 15 minutes, including uh, the outlap, which as we know is going to take, you know, two and a half minutes around here so this is pretty important just to put a time to the board and that car just looks mighty mighty twitchy even with the abs and traction control that these cars have got it 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 looks a handful and it looks maybe a little too lively i would say if it's going to be moving around like that for six hours you're a, you're going to destroy the tire but uh, yeah it's going to be difficult to keep it uh, keep it in a straight line uh, now with more updates on on should we call it engine gate uh, yes. it, it is. Aston. You, go back. you are absolutely right in the first place, David. I should never have doubted you. Um, so it's actually wrong on the iRacing website. Um, and, uh, well, I've been cancelled for saying that. But uh, well, I, think, yes. no, I think both of us are about to write up a nice little invoice for Steve Myers. Yes. <laughs> uh, but I've, I've, I've checked my, my, my reliable source, racingsportscars.com, and, it, and it, I'm looking at the races it's done recently. It's a four litre twin turbo. Same it. So, same motors as the Mercedes road car. Because the, the road cars definitely share the same motor. No lap there for Hunkos. That they're gonna start well, they're gonna have to start at the back of GT4, I guess. Unless they can get this one in the back. Checkered flag is not out yet for okay, uh, GT4. So I think they've got till 45 left on the clock. So in a in a in a ideal world there's two more. For, for Hunkos here in this session, but uh, it's definitely not time to put a new set of tyres on um, if that's what they're aiming to do. So what they've got is uh, what they've got. No time to muck about with trying to position yourself to slipstream off someone. No time to, you know, bolt a new set of tyres on and see if that's the magic fix. It's set a lap within the white lines and do the best you can. Mighty, mighty little curb hop. Talking about you know, the slipstream. We've seen this before. Pure Sims have got two cars in this class and you very commonly see them together like this. Turnbull for the 416 currently up top. It's their teammates in ninth place in the other car that are getting the toe at the moment. I wouldn't be surprised to see them bail out of this, try to set up to be the last cars across the line. I, I, that's kind of what I'd... I'd aim for if I could um, choose what part of the track I want and choose who was going to tow me. Well, I think it's the, if you've got a team car in there as well on a similar pace, that's the ideal scenario because you don't have to worry about relying on a tow from a rival who could easily, you know, pull out the way or block the lap or whatever. Uh, having the team car running in in close formation can sometimes work as well. Huge moment behind there. Now, who was that? It just took right behind the Pure Sims cars. Massive, massive oversteer there. Was it one of the Penguin cars? Uh, um, immediately behind, or? 
the undercut is the first Simpsons. car that's behind it at the moment. Yeah, that's a massive oversteer moment. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, the number 463 undercut racing team. Huge oversteer. Managed to catch it though. Very well done. I imagine we'll be seeing an optic screenshot of that one then. Here it is. Oh, so late in the corner as well. Uh, the GT4 cars really do, you know, move around a lot more than a, than a GT3. On the sim here, uh, the way we see it, and also just in, in real-world GT4 racing as well. Yeah, they're not... Um, they're, they're very close to their road-going counterpart. GT3s is getting further and further away from a road-going counterpart. Um, they don't have much aero at all, the GT4 cars. I mean, if you take the Porsche, for example, it's only 100 kilograms lighter than the streetcar. And that's when you take out, like, the radio and the leather seats and stuff like that. So it's, uh, they are very, very close. They use about 80% parts from the road car, usually the road car gearbox as well, um, which does make a kind of limiting factor to the performance. But quite heavy cars as well relative to their power. And... Yeah, that's definitely showing. And it seems that just around that latter part of the lap, uh, David, uh, kind of around 16, 17, 18, it almost seems to be overheating the tyres and the grip's kind of going away. Yeah, I mean, you obviously work the tyres really hard in that first sector. You've got a big braking zone in towards turn number one and then high speed, a lot of changes of direction. Maybe they cool off a little bit down the back straight, but then you do got that fiddly folded in over on itself sort of pseudo arena section towards the end of the lap here and then the really really long corner here where the peak tire loads are going to be be high so who's tracking well Hunkos are looking good to put a lap to the board and uh pure sims 417 doing very well for themselves as well uh, obviously these drivers are practicing their pit entry but where's the 416 and the 417 going to put themselves the 416 no improvement, but 417 jump up into fourth. So a bit of help from their teammate worked. Undercut go up, and Hukos didn't just Im just improve, but still that car not on the pace in qualifying. Their uh, Aston Martin stable mates in CMRC are up in seventh. Yeah, definitely Mer Mercedes domination, but more just a numbers game than anything. Only two Aston Martin setting a time there, Sim RC and Kunkos. So it looks like it's going to be a Mercedes uh, onslaught out front. Uh, so that GT4 class very much going the way of Alfterbach at the moment. Next up, the Porsche Cup cars. No need to talk about disparity in in those cars because they're all identical apart from the way of course the team set them up the uh, Porsche 992 Cup machine is a seriously impressive car and those Porsches they're going to cause a problem I think for the GT3 cars David because they're very fast down the street you didn't get to watch any of the Porsche Carrera Cup Australia action from the Gold Coast did you that's such an interesting no. place for those oh. cars jumping over curbs uh, on the street circuit but yeah super close when all is said and done in this GT4 qualifying session, that is <laughs> tantalizingly sets up the race, doesn't it? It does, yeah, it does. Six thousandths of a second between Turnbull and uh, Cadlick there in that uh, qualifying session, and not far behind as well. SRC Mivano, of course, our championship leaders, they could only manage fifth. Dylan Scrivens in the uh, Urano Esports Mercedes AMG, Roberto Ferrari for Sabel. Esports was sixth, followed by Sim RC, Impulse, SEK, and Torque Freak Racing getting into the top 10 in their Mercedes. Just one Aston Martin in the top 10 there. Uh, five Star Motorsport, they were 11th, followed by Fiercely Forward, Team Fordzilla, Hard Point, Undercut Racing Team, and Hunkers Racing Esports struggling to get a lap time in, and perhaps that thwarted their pace uh, a little bit on that timed lap. They will start from the back of the GT4 field. Next up, the Porsche Cups. Some fantastic racing here. N no doubt in this class when we get into the race a little bit later on, but qualifying always very, very tightly matched. And look at the championship, so tightly matched at the moment. Assetek Simsports, they sit on the top of the shop at the moment, two points ahead of Team 75 Bernard 
and Urano Esports. Apex Racing Academy are in fourth, with Williams Esports rounding out the top five. Then it's Sebelt, Manatee, ATRS, Ori's Rincon, and Team Forzilla rounding out the top ten in the Porsche 992 Cup category. So here are our classes. The GT3 class, three options there for BMW, Lamborghini, and Porsche. They will be our fastest class going for the overall win. The 992 class, all identical Porsche 911 GT3 Cup cars, over 500 horsepower, no ABS, and serious top-end speed as well. Some serious machinery. GT4s, we've just seen the Aston Martin and the Mercedes AMG. Quite a bit closer to your road-going car. T traction control, ABS, not too much aerodynamics. Quite a nice, simple formula, but great racing. And then the TCR category, the touring cars. Honda Civic Type R and Hyundai Veloster are your choices there. And as we mentioned, the, uh, the drivers are held to their choice of car throughout the season. So once they've made their bed, they have to lie in it. Out go the Porsche Cup cars in one long train. Let's see who's going to take pole position here in this one make category. And I have to say, these, these drivers, I would say... David, they're going to have the most fun out there today. This car is just a, a joy to drive. It's very raw, it's very knife-edged, but oh, when you get under its skin, it's, it's wonderful. Never change Peter Mackay, you <laughs> insatiable Porsche fanboy. <laughs> um, well, I, but I it's going to be have good. a Porsche shirt on, actually. <laughs> I'm wearing my own merch. I'm wearing my own merch today. Um... Yeah, but you can see the two ATRS cars there, identical liveries, the only pair of teammates in this category. They're maybe trying to set up a little bit of that uh, teamwork to make the dream work, if indeed they can in this session. And they are the only pair of teammates uh, in this class, best as I remember. But that championship points situation, so close. Assetek Simsports Visceral taking the win last time out. Took a second in the opening round at Spa. Great consistency. Your winners at Spa, Team 75 Bernard by SimRC, on the podium with third last time. And a second and a third for Urano Esports Heineken Media to be equal second in the points tally. So three teams separated by two points. Uh, it'd be a pretty decent swing in this championship if any of them can grab a win today. Still <laughs> almost seven hours away from when the checkered flag falls on that one and uh, and anything happens. But it sets up a really close championship fight so far in this class. And they all set up through the final sector, swinging wide in the final corner to get onto their first run of flying laps. What we're going to start to see from 992 and then GT3 to follow is shorter, sharper runs. The team's sort of maybe only doing one or two attack laps and then needing to pit for new tyres. Oh, there's a little bit of a lock-up there from the SMRC Team Bernard car. That was uh, just, of course, these cars do not have anti-lock braking systems like you'd have in your road car, so if you just have that little bit too aggressive brake pressure, it can lock up the tyre. Also, if you have a chain, big change in elevation, it's much easier to do that. And, of course, on, here at uh, Circuit of the Americas, that steep climb up towards Turn 1 certainly is the case there as well. Henry Salmon for Havu in their lovely black and green machine. It's kind of Tequila Patron-esque. Very cool. Uh, coming down towards the tight hairpin here of Turn 11. Vital corner going to try and get as much what we didn't see from that yeah, shot yeah. was a bit of a, a hard in mouth moment the car immediately behind came in way too hot into the previous corner locked up and nearly cleaned him out so uh not sure it quite flustered henry salman but he we were riding on board and we were looking forward but you'd be forgiven if the driver was looking rearwards well he's coming from certainly quite a long way back Oh my word, great spot, David Haynes. Goodness me, that, that, you wouldn't have thought that would have been an issue coming into the braking zone, but Antonis Despotakis just about misses the Habu Porsche in front. Of course, these cars are very typically a 911. Uh, the engine is 
hung out to the rear of the car. It's not a mid-engine car, this one. It's a rear-engine car, hangs out over the rear wheels. But what that means is that when you're coming out of the slow corners, that extra weight over the rear-driven wheels really does give good traction as well. So you have to drive the car the way it wants to be driven. And it's amazing because this car, of course, represents the very top level of sim racing, the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup. Uh, the guys that do specialise in these cars, they are some of the very best. You're absolutely right, and that connection between these cars and uh, iRacing's richest road racing world championship means we often do see some interesting names here in 24-hour series esports, in this class in particular. So Sam Katoit Katert is out on track right now. He's got a uh, Black Stripe Pro license, a Porsche Esports Tag Heuer, some variation of those in that order, um, driver. And we often see some others as well. Not at the moment, but in the race we might. We might again. Oh, Sam Coiter again. They're all lit up here as well. The former karting champion has raced in the top level of Porsche Cup competition in the past and you can see him there taking a really late entry into the corner and then gunning it out of the corner all the way down this huge long straight which kind of goes uphill and down dale but you're absolutely flat out there right to the very top of top gear and then braking very hard for the tight turn 12 down the gearbox careful not to rush the gears you can easily lock the rears in these cars if you rush the gears too much. But Sam Coiter looking very smooth. This looks like a very tidy lap. How's it looking on the timesheets? Not not any green sectors though. It does look neat and tidy, but not not the pace there just yet for Coiter. Now that means his delta is not going to be on the, the the side of improvement. And this has been an interesting little qualifying session so far because you know we've we've been into it for a while with these cars. But of the 14 of them, only eight have set a time. We saw Havu uh, end up aborting their lap, um, some others aborting their lap, and that might have been track limits there, and I reckon it was for Sam Katur right at the exit. And uh, SLC Mavano looped on their flying lap and immediately came into pit lane, so there have been a half of the field throw away their first timed lap. And... Uh, you know, reset, go through pit lane, bang a new set of tyres on, try to give it another go, but it really limits how many runs and how many attempts they get compared to TCR where the team's basically stayed out on track the whole 15 minutes, just consecutive, consecutive, consecutive flying lap. That's not what's happening here. It's a lot closer to, you know... Q3 in Formula 1 where you get one run and then the new set of tyres and then you got one run and that could well uh, be close to it. Yeah, it's very tactical, isn't it? And the, these, team prepare, these teams prepare so much for this. They all have done this lots and lots of times making sure that they're absolutely ready. It's Jürgen Frank, third at the moment for Team 75. Bernard, of course, the team owned by former Porsche factory driver Timo Bernard and the 75 comes from his dad actually his dad started racing in 1975 so that's where the team 75 comes from is that in your book uh I, do you know I actually could do actually because Timo Bernhard of course uh, raced the RS Spider quite successfully very successfully in fact mm. I bet you're incredibly excited for Daytona this coming year. Very, 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 very excited. Yes, it's uh, for lots of reasons. I think it's um, it's going to be fantastic to see a top level of prototype racing. But the the thing is, is that we've had a top level of prototype racing in IMSA for years. Um, you know, some great competition from Cadillac, Mazda, Acura, um, with great drivers in it. It's just that it's been kind of limited to. The United States it hasn't really been able to hasn't been able that's the key word the, the DPI machinery hasn't been able to race in Europe but when we see a, a truly global sports car top class formula I think it's going to be remarkably exciting that's for sure but I do think David actually it will strengthen it will filter down because 
there's a lot of grid spots that and programs that are going to be taken up with top level prototypes by teams that used to run GT cars. I think it opens up a great opportunity for the rest of the motor racing ecosystem to kind of fill that that void in, in, in GT because prototypes are really, really, really expensive and are almost prohibitively so for 99% of the market. It's a little bit of a return of the favour there, the Spadakas and, yeah. and Harvu. They were a little close and having a little moment in qualifying once again. Now we've got great live race control and stewards in 24-hour series esports and we, we think about you know, during the race, on-track clashes and, and other things, but uh, impeding in qualifying will also go before the stewards and can incur a penalty. And you're kidding me, Henry Sullivan's looped it on the outlap there and then immediately tried to get as far out of the way as he possibly could. Urano then go and throw away their lap uh, in the first sector there as well. These cars, very quick, but very loose and free on a circuit like this, and the track limits are... Uh, fairly equally but very rigidly enforced they are yes they are indeed and uh, interestingly yeah it just shows how the uh, michelin slick tire there if you come out of the pit lane absolutely cold uh you're especially if you know we'll see teams in the in the race coming out of pit lane a full tank of fuel on board which does change the balance of the car and then you know and with cold slick tires it can be possible to get it looped up there, especially on that very tight left hander coming out of the pits. Of course, when the cars run on very low fuel, it really does change the balance, especially in these Porsches where, of course, you've got the engine right out the back, fuel tank's in the front. So if you've not got the uh, much fuel in the front, it can adjust the balance accordingly. Do you speak pure sims? Because I'm looking through my translation book and I'm not sure what that weaving meant. But um, um, you can see no. that Matthias Burke is one of those drivers yet to have a qualifying time. The chequered flag is going to drop on them in just a couple of minutes here in this category. And there is still three teams without a lap at all. Burke is one of them. Uh, Maniti Racing just improved. You see them jump up on the timing column. And yeah, ATRS looking for one. Well, and inevitably, if you don't have that banker lap in, you're going to drive tighter. You're not going to take quite as much risk. And interesting are the Pure Sims car ducking into pit lane. So, yeah, I don't know what that weaving was all about, to be quite honest, from Tyler Erbias. Well, he had gone perfect in the first sector of the lap. And he might have been just a little too Held close up. behind ATRS, who were not trying to improve. They were just trying to set a time at all. So that might have been... That might have been what... What that meant is, uh, I'm up, but now I'm, I'm behind you and there's no way that I can get past you without both of us losing uh, incredible time. That's just, that's just how, qualifying, how qualifying works. Maybe just frustration, I think, um, there. And it, it is frustrating. And I think we're going to see this during the race as well. There are significant portions of the circuit, like this part, for example, the early kind of snaking S's. If you're in a GT3 car and you come across a... TCR or GT4, you're going to have to be really either patient in traffic or take enormous risk uh, to try and get through and that could, traffic could be a really important part. It's interesting, David, how you would think a, a modern circuit like this with lots of runoff, traffic management would be a, a problem, but there are certain parts of the circuit where it, there really is you know, quite limited space online. I mean, the track can be as wide as wide can be. There's always going to be a racing line that everyone's going to want to be on. I mean, looking at Assetek Simsports Visceral, your championship leaders currently only tracking for 10th on the grid. They are 6 tenths away from pole, but this lap for Anders Dahl is looking pretty good, I think. It, it was at the start of the lap, and then I think he's just not gotten onto the back straight. Uh, as tidy as on his previous personal best. But definitely still attacking this lap. There could still be an improvement to be had here. We talk about six tenths away from pole in tenth place. You've only got to find two tenths as Anders, Anders Dahl and you jump up into seventh place. 
So a couple tenths can be a lot of positions. That's Porsche Cup racing, isn't it? That's uh, it just shows you that how fine the margins are. Let's see what Anders Dahl can do then. His bet is a 206.111. Is he going to bet at that? He hopes so. Oh, he certainly does. 205.6. Wow. Up into third place. That was a huge final sector there, David. Yeah, exactly. So it finished off very well, and he just put together a good lap on the cumulative sectors all the way to that point. And that's probably the last flying lap he's going to get. Everyone who's on a flying lap right now, it's going to be the last flying lap they get. 14th place, and with a best that is six seconds away from pole, this is going to be Jan Turniak's last attempt for SRC Movano Corsa as well. Checkered flag will drop in 10 seconds on 992 qualifying. These are the last ditch efforts at trying to string all the magic sectors together. Move yourself up the grid in a very, very close field. Well, let's see what Jan Terniak can do then in the 933 car for SRC. Well, very colorful machine here with the uh, black, yellow and red flashes. 211.0, the best so far. That's certainly not competitive at all. Uh, definitely not an indicative lap. So, provided uh, Jan Terniak can Peter, get. Yes. Would it be cocky of me to say I think I could improve on a 211? Uh, well, you're a you're a racing driver, David. So I would I wouldn't say so. I reckon, I reckon I could do at least a 209. I reckon I'd be three seconds off, not five seconds off. That's well, more like two, it, though. Two or six? <laughs> no, no, don't think so. No, so a thirteenth place there for uh, the SRC Mavano course team, Jurgen Frank. And I put to you that even though that time only gained them one spot on the grid, it gained them a really big boost to, to you know, put in a time that was within a second of, of the pole time, to, to, to have actually put a competitive lap rather than just a, you know, perfunctory within 107% kind of qualifying lap. I, I think that's really important for your mindset and your ability to attack it going forward into the six-hour race to have, you know, actually put in a good qualifying. Andrea Alberti looks to, like, he could improve here as well. Set a couple of personal best sectors in the Wave Italy machine, and he's pushing there as well. A little dab of oversteer coming around the penultimate corner. Let's see what it's going to be. His best is a 205.752. That's not far away from pole. What's this going to be? He improves. Does he move up the order? No, stays in sixth place. And look at that, David. A tenth and a half covering the top six. Wow. And look at the GT3s. They're there. They're itching to get going. Again, we're talking about, you know, just a 15-minute session on cars that, you know, destroy their qualifying tyres after just one run. I mean, the tyres are still good, but you're just always going to be missing that magic two-tenths of a second that only exists in the first one millimetre of the rubber of a new tyre. So you can keep racing on those tyres, but you're not going to improve your qualifying time on, and that's why they're all queued up at pit exit, waiting for their green flag, waiting to get as many laps, as many attempts as they could manage. So Kane Halliburton for ATRS Esports. Is your pole sitter then in the 992 category? 205.480. Sam Koitert sits in second for Urano Esports. Then it's Jurgen Frank and Team 75 Bernard. Sabel Esports are fourth with Asetek Simsports Visceral qualifying fifth. Wave Italy will start from sixth, followed by the Apex Racing Academy number 998 car, followed by the 978 Manatee Machine. Pure Sims 916 and Williams Esports with their 995 Dumford machine. Last few ATRS Esports, Ori's Rincon, SRC, Mivano Course, and Havu round out the 14 car grid with the top 13 covered by just eight tenths of a second. That's quite remarkable. Interestingly, there, David, first hot lap, Kane Halley Burton got the job done. Can we like that, can't it? And you look at these times here and you see what I mean about SRC Movano Corsa, you know, they jumped one spot, you know, with their last uh, run in qualifying, but it put them eight tenths from pole, it put them only a tenth away from the next car, only a tenth away from the next car, suddenly they're, they're, they're in it, they're, their pace is going to be good enough to, to go racing. 
Well, next coming up next is the GT3 qualifying with the cars queued up at the front uh, of the pit lane waiting to be released into action. And we'll see who's going to be on overall pole position for round three of the uh, round three of the 24H series. Here are your standings at the moment. MSI Esports sit six points ahead of Kiwana Gaming with Bila Racing, Team Euronics in third. Williams Esports are fourth with Habu in fifth. Bila Racing, Team Euronics second car sits in sixth with Riley Sim Racing seventh. RSR by Butt Kicker in eighth. Altus Esports in ninth. And BS Competition, the Zebras, they are in tenth place. Just ten points to their tally at the moment. And they're at the front of the queue, David. They're wanting to get on with this and get try and get uh, a good grid spot to get up that leaderboard. Yeah, leader of the herd. And this is the category where we get the most variation of manufacturers, isn't it? We've got three very well-known global sports car racing powerhouses of BMW, uh, of Porsche and of Lamborghini. Yeah, real powerhouses is definitely the right word. And that's for sure. And some, real, some team names that uh, fans of... Uh, of the outdoor world of motorsport will recognize of course Team 75 Bernard of cars running in ADAC, GT Masters, DTN and of course on the BS competition car you've got a kind of BAR-esque uh, split livery between the traditional Zebra of uh, BS competition and the Turner Motorsport livery on the right hand side there as well of course Turner Motorsport uh, very, very successful team in the world of sports car racing with the BMW brand. And their yellow and blue cars, very distinctive out there on circuit. You know, actually, David, that they, they, the uh, Will Turner's influence for that yellow and blue colour scheme was actually the Renault Laguna touring car in the British Touring Car Championship in the mid-90s. I can see it. I can definitely see it. What's going to be interesting here in GT3 is the difference between sort of qualifying pace and race pace for these these two cars the the Porsche has been very good as a race car and not necessarily qualified as well balance of performance for here that circuit of the Americas could very well uh, accentuate that even further. Well, we're going to, while the, our GT3 cars get up to speed for their first run at qualifying, we're going to have a quick chat with our GT4 pole setter, car number 416 from Pure Sims. And uh, he's going to join us for a chat now. David, down to you with our GT4 pole setter. Well, how's it going, Ian? Yeah, we were on, yeah. Well, it's going very well for you guys, obviously. You're on pole for the GT4 class. How important is that going to be here? Um, it's going to be important. I think not for the first lap where we're going to need to save some fuel. But um, after that, if we can get the gap with the traffic, it's going to be very important and just get uh, ourselves in our zone. Teammate Matthew Turnbull uh, did the job there. You guys are unique in the GT4 class with having two entries. How busy was the radio chat between cars in, in that qualifying session? Uh, yeah, it was. I think for the first two races, we were trying to run a strategy where we, we weren't like uh, in the back and trying to do our own stuff with our draft, but it seems it didn't work because uh, we didn't pit and the tire was just going off and we didn't get good lapping but now we've changed strategies and uh, since we're comfortable cars at the end we try to give a uh, draft to our sister car so uh, it could get a good lap in and we did so we're in good position and if we could just uh, work together uh, for the rest of the race gonna be well congratulations on that poll best of luck a lot of racing still to come for you guys right, thank you So Pure Sims on pole position then for GT4 and I think the fact that they've got a strong ally in the team car up there in that G2 
GT4 battle is going to be really important. We ride on board with the BMW M4 GT3 of Ruben Bonga for BMW Team BS plus Turner. And Become the drums. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Number 96, most traditional Turner Motorsport number as well up towards the final corner then and starting this uh, this qualifying lap take us through David well we're on board with the BMW it's turbocharged we've got plenty of power and of course your sight is uh, very dramatic if you've got to go sharply uphill into the braking zone and then it flattens out at a tabletop for a very tight turn one that's pretty textbook stuff though fast straight into a big braking zone and tight corner here's where it gets interesting it's like a slalom course it's like it's like autocross if you get in a little too hot to one of these apexes clip the curb a little too much it'll cost you all the way through this first sector you're just trying to flow the speed keep the car online and, and hope it reacts well to the quick changes of direction and then you, of course got to be careful with the track limits here on the inside there, on the exit here, not so much a problem. You might want to move your brake bias around as you come down the hill to the far end of the course. And of course, we're opening up the entry as much as we can here. Popping plenty of that curb and trying to straighten out on the exit. The longest straight is of the lap here. And you're just going up through the gears in the BMW where you don't seem to shift gears quite as often as some other cars do. And I think that one is going to get a border, okay. though, from Ruben Bonga. He's not yeah. seeing an improvement, potentially. Maybe felt like he was towing the other car around, the Porsche there, too. Of course, the, we have to talk about balance of performance uh, as well. It's uh, always a topic. There's been a balance of performance update uh, this, uh, this time around. 45 kilograms has been added to the Porsche, it's very much the dominant machine at this moment in time. If you go back to the last iRacing season, a little, you know, 10 or 11 weeks ago, it was definitely the not the car to have, and then the up to the, when the update came through, all of a sudden the Porsche was the car to have. I mean, 45 kilos, that's one of the largest balance of performance adjustments I think I've ever seen uh, in GT3. Yeah, it's massive, but what's interesting to see is that there's no uh, other adjustments on there. In previous rounds, we'd seen maybe like 1% of the fuel tank capacity trimmed back from the the Porsches. They're back at the full fuel tank. They've got no power restriction. It's just just weight there in GT3. And uh, as you see in GT4, things are a little more complicated. There's 8 kilograms on the Mercedes-AMG GT4, but also a slight fuel tank restriction there as well. And, and you see every lever is being pulled in PCR with the Honda Civic getting uh, weight but the Hyundai losing a little bit of power and a little bit of fuel tank capacity so hopefully uh, that keeps everything uh, all close no the Choo -choo. Porsche teams aren't happy with <laughs> the, the weight but I uh, it's been a very good race car and it is a six hour race that we're we're heading into so Oh, how you do that. My well, goodness, Matty Cardasso just had a moment. Well, that's exactly what you said, David. If you catch that curb too much, those horrible little kind of... Oh, they're almost like skateboard kickers on the on the inside of the curbs there. And that, yeah, completely ruined that lap there for Matty Cardasso. Yeah. Quite a lot of drivers not set a time. We do have one Lamborghini in the field, as we'll mention in a moment. So, ah, I think maybe just got a little bit unsighted there, did uh, Matty Cardasso. Yeah. And just, just lost his rhythm a little bit and then ready for it. Boink, and yeah, lap gone there. I mean, and it, you could, I mean, it, it wouldn't be unusual to see a uh, an outdoor version of the car break a suspension arm there. That's uh, pretty violent. Um, but yes, we do have one Lamborghini in the field. Uh, the uh, GSR X IPR by ECV car, catchy name, of uh, Daniel Sommer. There it is. Still an imposing looking machine, the, uh, the big bull. And of course, this weekend is, or this week has been the uh, Lamborghini Super Trofeo World Finals as well. I speak acronym, so it's German Sim Racing uh, in combination with, um, oh my gosh, not Impulse. Um, uh, 
by Automobile Club America. International Performance Racing. Is it? No. no. Okay. <laughs> well, that'd be a good name for a team. You had me sold, yeah. dude. You totally. Yeah, I've yeah, that. I had it, yeah. So, I mean, good for them and good for our overlay because if all of that was spelt out, um, it would be half a pixel per letter in the graphic there. In fact, as it is, GSR IPR by ACV um, occupies a chunk of so German sim racing international performance by Automobile Club Werke. The Sorg Rensport Esports were the, the worst offenders for that back in the day. Connery will, will attest. What well, a great problem to have too many, you know, Porsche dealerships, uh, Porsche centres sponsoring you. Well, that would be quite, uh, that would be quite nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, so, I tell you what, this is, I, I, I'm going to find it very difficult, uh, David, to say the Biela team in a BMW. I mean, Frank Biela spent virtually his entire career racing for Audi. I mean, well, certainly made his, made his fame for Audi. And uh, yeah, to, to have his team running BMWs, oh, controversial. What's, you know, rolling in your grave, but you're still alive. He'll be spasming in his oh, armchair he'll, he'll, or? He'll, he'll be spitting his cigarette out. He's a known chain smoker, it's probably really a boy. So he spit, he'll be spitting his cigarette out. He'll be like, a BMW, you must be joking. So it sure looks like this uh, ASR Able Esports is the highest placed Porsche at the minute, and they look to still be improving, yeah. Good improvements on this session. Sun is getting lower, and I think the track has cooled off a bit since we last checked in on it. So it's still gripping up as we go. But yeah, maybe it's cooled off by a whole one or two degrees in the track surface. And that does jump them up to fifth with that run. You can see there's still nine minutes left in the session. These cars get around a little quicker than the other classes, so they might just sneak in one extra run uh, if they're quick. Patrick Selva in the Sabelt Esports car, who was in fifth as the highest Porsche, got bumped down a sixth. Now, uh, is that one going to stick or is track limits? No, it sticks. Second place, good lap. Oh, front row. Front row is there. Is it too late to Patrick. add 10 kilos back? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Uh, let's not go there. Let's not go there. Uh, Stefan Hofberg comes into pit lane. Maybe throw in another set of tyres and have a go. Uh, another run down. Here's Ruben Bogg, uh, our pole setter at the moment. Can he improve on his lap time? At the moment, he's not setting any personal best sectors. Um, so it's not going to be this lap to improve. But yeah, we've got to... Good balance at the front, BMW from Porsche, and then a few more BMWs, then a couple of Porsches. So, yeah, that's the. Uh, it's certainly going to be tough. I do wonder with that extra weight, though, uh, David, in terms of tyre wear and fuel consumption, that surely that extra 45 kilos is going to make a big, big difference. Well, it's not going to make no difference. Uh, whether it has as much of an effect in those. Uh, attributes as it does to just out and out qualifying one lap pace um, I'm not sure well we will find out won't we um, normally the Porsche has been very good on fuel consumption and tyre life but that's Son's 45 kilos of ballast So in a phase now where there's a lot of sort of in-laps, out-laps going on, we saw everyone, basically everyone, all 15 GT3 cars leaving the pit lane together, and they were all on their first flying lap together. Some have, you know, abandoned that lap and, and therefore become off-cycle from everyone, but broadly speaking, uh, most teams are sort of on an out-lap or an in-lap. Williams Esports are off that cycle, and that's a company and tracking very very well on this lap in fact and it still looks tidy through the final sector quick committed corner where the track limits can be an issue and then the final corner 
shouldn't be so much of a problem. Still trying to make sure it's legal, but this could jump them up a long, long way. It will. It'll launch them up to second, just two hundredths away from that pole time of BS Turner. Fantastic lap there from Atti and really dragged it out when it was needed. Fantastic stuff. 27,000, so it's a BMW from two Porsches, then another BMW. So we see the sixth place BS competition car in the number 89 machine. It's a BS competition with two cars in this, in this field. And this sixth place machine run at the moment by Felix Kernbach doing the qualifying duties. Looking very neat and tidy. How are the sectors looking as well? Personal best in sector two. And let's see, can he jump up the order at all? At the moment, four tenths of a second off the best time of the team car of Ruben Bonga. And I would imagine, uh, I would imagine, David, you don't want to be giving away four tenths of a second to your teammate, even on a lap as long as this. And he's going to get balked. Oh, big balk, big time. Oh. I would have gone to the inside there, personally. I, I would have... I would have stayed on the racing line if the other in qualifying if the other car's not on a flying lap um you know it's 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 on them to get out of the way and that was um, I don't think coming back's fault no true no I, I think you're I think you're right I think you're right uh that is a shame there for uh, Felix coming back so he won't improve and uh yeah that was one of the uh Altus cars, Altus Porsches. Sven Hasse on an absolute ripper of a lap here in his BMW for Bila Team Uronix. Hard on the power and great traction in the BMW there as well. It's a twin turbo charged motor, first gear, plants the throttle and it just grips and goes. So the Bila team have obviously got this machine really nicely put together. Oh, he's lost it. Oh, oh, be... oh well. No, and he knows it straight away. Pulls out of it, thinking, "Nope, that won't do." Oh, that could have that been pole. That lap was tracking the pole. It was. Yeah. It really was. And then at the p penultimate corner, you know, we know that's a quick corner. That the racing line is aggressive with the curbs. The rear just stepped, just stepped a little bit at the end of that lap. And ah. oh, if they're quick, they'll get out for one more. Yeah, they will. They uh, will. No, sorry, no, they won't. No, they won't. Okay, that no, they it. won't. Checkered flag out for GT3. That's really frustrating. So that means that a 46 Bila car, Sven Hasse, will start no better than sixth. Uh, and it, oh, that just would have been a real signal of intent. But you could tell he was pushing there, David, really putting the, the car to the limit. And it just broke away from him. I don't. Maybe he felt like he, you know, that was that was the lap gone. Do you, do you think he could have at least gone to the line, given it a go? I mean, I just thought, no. Oh, on one hand, it's like, well, if that's the end of qualifying, you know, what, why not just, just try? But um, unless he went over the track limits when he lost it. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. I don't, I don't know it's it was it was such a such a strong lap that they were tracking for and then they didn't land it and I think they've always been sort of eclipsed by one or two cars towards the end there as well and now they're in sixth so they'll be on the third row Havu did get a, uh, a lap together late on Madikar Soya surviving um, apparently his spine stayed in one piece after catching that that curb that's got to be some of the most aggressive curbs um around yeah i think so well ruben bonga your pole setter then by twenty-seven thousandths of a second from atti and and williams esports sabel esports are in third and havu make it four uh, three porsches in the top four despite that balance of performance adjustment bs competition sit in fifth followed by Sven Hasse in for Bila Racing Team Euronix in six, just missing out on that pole lap. Maxime Briand for Apex Racing Academy is seventh with Bila Racing Team number 45 in eighth. Williams Esports Chill Blast in ninth and ASR 
by Able Esports are your 10th GT3 machine. Then in 11th, it's Riley Sim Racing BMW's Andreas Fink with Team 75 Bernhard in 12th, GSR by IPR by ACB Lamborghini in 13th. Then it's MSI Esports and Altus Esports rounding out the top 15. The entire field covered by one second. I'm with so, you. I never know how you meant to pronounce that X out loud. I think I would say by, like it, you were multiplying by something. Is that the idea? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Oh, you mean like cr cross, like there's some kind of, you know, uh, hybrid breed? I don't know. Yeah, I think I could, we'll go with cross. Cross is a good one. So we're about to go racing here then for round three of the 24H Series Esports. Uh, the six hours of the Circuit of the Americas here in Austin, Texas. And the 24H series an exciting time. In just a, a few weeks' time, the series will head to Kuwait for the first time uh, in the outdoor world. Uh, the Kuwait circuit there, beautiful facility, amazing facility, that's not had a professional race there before. So 24H series breaking new ground in the outdoor world and also here in the sim as well. Let's take a look at the starting grid then for this third round of the 24-8 series eSports series. Ruben Bonga and BMW Team BS Turner are on the front row alongside Williams eSports. Then it's the 22 Porsche for Sabel eSports alongside Havu. Then it's BS Competition and Bila Racing Team Euronix on row three. Row 4 is Apex Racing Academy and Bila Racing Team number 45. Then it's Williams Esports Chill Blast and ASR by Abel Esports. Riley Sim Racing and Team 75 Bernhard are your sixth row. Row 7 is Daniel Sommer in the Lamborghini, followed by the MSI Porsche and the Altus Porsche, your 15 car GT3 grid. In the Porsche 992 Cup category, ATRS Esports, Kane Halley Burton on pole position with Sam Coiter there for Urano in second. Then it's Team 75 Bernard and Sabel on row two. And row three is Asetek Sim Sports and Wave Italy. Row four is Apex Racing Academy and Manatee Racing with Pure Sims and Williams or completing row five. Row six is ATRS Esports and Orish Rincon by IR. And finally, SRC Mivano Course and Havu complete a 14 car 992 grid 13 covered by just 8 tenths. Incredible. The pole was decided by just six thousandths of a second in GT4. Two Mercedes on the front row, Pure Sims and CSRA. Then it's SRC Mivano Course and Pure Sims Esports sister car on row two. Championship leaders, Mercedes AMG Team Urano are fifth alongside Sabel Esports. Starting 7th will be SimRC in the leading Aston Martin, followed by Impulse Racing, SCK, Torque Freak, 5 Star and Fiercely Forward. Then starting 13th will be the Fordzilla Mercedes of Rhys Carroll, then it's Hardpoint by Delta Sport, Undercut Racing and Kunkost Racing Esports. 16 cars, your GT4 grid. And finally the TCRs, the touring cars, Quentin Guinea continues his March at the front of touring car racing on the iRacing platform, qualifying on pole from Zenith Esports, Jaume Dalme Torres. Then it's Ross McFarlane and Mark Perez with Martin Asher and Erwin Lukas Liskovic rounding out row three. Row four is Marcel T alongside Mikel Garcia and Jonathan Alvarez in ninth. So we're ready to go, David. Six hours of racing lies ahead. Your thoughts heading into this one? Well, uh, it's going to be a good race, isn't it? We just saw the qualifying times. We talked all qualifying about how close it was in every category. Um, looks pretty good uh, in all of them. It's a strong field. It's some very familiar names and some good-looking cars. And it's six hours here at the Circuit of the Americas. So, for me... I'm going to be spending the first almost 15 minutes, I think, just trying to study those GT3s. Who looks like they're fuel saving? Because the win and the podium has really come down to who's been able to effectively fuel save to get to 60 minutes on a tank of fuel into the race. Because if you can't do that, you're going to have to make an extra pit stop. 
Pit lane speed limit here at Kota is 80 k's an hour, so that's not too bad. Uh, it's faster than Sebring, uh, in fact, but still, it's a, a long old pit lane. So you don't want to be doing that if you can avoid it. I mean, and then a team, for example, that are very high up in the GT3 points, like Koana, haven't really wowed me in qualifying at all this season. But what they do is just really good strategy, really good tyre calls, fuel saving that you don't even notice, and then they pop up right to the end, and you're like, oh, they've already made their final stop, and they're going to get a podium. So that's what I'll be watching for as the whole field begin to form up behind the pace car. Actually, two other things I'll be looking for. One is the race start zone, and two is the penalty box, because in this championship, if the stewards give you a penalty, it's not added to uh, your time in your pit stall. There's a penalty box on pit lane that you have to park in for the amount of time you don't have to serve a penalty within, you know, one or two laps or immediately, but you can serve any penalty at your next pit stop. So they can add five seconds, ten seconds, thirty seconds, a minute, etc., etc. Yeah, but the stewards will be keeping an eye on things, and uh, it's all they always are kept busy throughout the day, especially in a multi-class racing environment. Four different classes taking part here in this championship gt3 at the front of the field the porsche cup cars your second quickest class then it's the gt4s and the touring cars as well four cars that make their lap time up in different ways and a spread of lap time about 20 seconds from fastest to slowest so that gives you an idea of how much lapping will be going on that way imagine the gt3 cars will be coming through from every six or seven laps or so so the uh, TCRs in particular, they'll always have their eyes on their mirrors to watch what's going on there. So it will be the BS Turner number 96 car that leads us away into six hours of racing here at the Circuit of the Americas. The circuit opened just over 10 years ago, in fact, the 21st of October 2020, 2012. So it's just past its 10th birthday when Marco Andretti opened the circuit with a run in a Lotus 79. What a way to open this incredible facility. It's now immortalized here on the iRacing service. And let's go racing for six hours and see who is going to be top of the shop here in the 24H Series Esports. The GT3 cars lined up neatly in a two by two formation waiting for the number 96 Turner BMW to hit the loud pedal. Green flag in the air. We are racing here in Austin, Texas. And it's a superb getaway for the number 96 BMW turner machine. Up towards turn one, they go. They're filtering through. Oh, big move. Big move for the Bila car there as well. Just nipping up the inside. They all get through turn one just about cleanly. Here comes the 992 field. Staggered class starts uh, for all of them. And ATRS have gone super, super deep in towards turn one on those cold tyres like we saw on qualifying. Big handful until those tyres get warm. Big tank of fuel as well. They're tough to drive. A little bit of a hit check here in GT4. Yeah, a lot of hip checks going on there with the uh, GT4 field coming through turn one. Pure Sims wheel to wheel banging wheels with the impulse car there, I think it was as well. And then already the TCRs into action. Corntagine is leading away, but that, that open gap there could the number 123 Zenith car make the move? No, so Corinto Guinness holds on to it as well. Pearson's dropped back to fourth, but more or less, no major calamities through those first few packs as well as they all shuffle for position early on as the Pearson's number 417 car getting swapped a little bit, the five star. Oh, Mercedes in the almost golf S colors. Oh, Cody Deeth for um, Williams, chill blast and ATRS both coming together there at turn 11. Yeah, at the, the point of the apex, at the far end of the circuit, they got quite close early on. This car's looking so loose, so free, so tough to control with the full tank of fuel, with the cold tires on the opening lap. Well, he's all. Oh, so he's trying to take one car, and as so often happens in a big pack like this, he's sent the nose down the inside and then collected the car in front as it all squeezes at the apex. There's also 
uh, a bit more contact in GT4 between not it escapes me impulse and someone else and they and then both had to skip part of that first chicane cost them out both big time in the opening lap uh, the pure sims 417 it was uh, not, a, not an easy start for them but up, up at the front is team 75 by Bernard leading the way number 975 in the Porsche Cup category ATRS in second position at the moment at the front of the field in GT3 BMW BS Turner perfect getaway for them and already putting some distance between themselves and the Sebel Porsche and very promising so far for BMW BS Turner yep very uh, tidy little start for them I wonder if we have actually seen some of the the, the craziness out now and they'll try to settle in uh, to some rhythm in the opening laps here interesting line there from the overall race leader just leading the rest of the pack uh, across the road thinking about breaking the toe from a second back yeah that is uh, mighty impressive there Felix Kernbach making moves he'll, he'll be disappointed about his run in qualifying after just oh, looking like he was tracking for pole uh, and then got held up a little bit unfortunately but he's moved up into fifth early on so good start all round for fans of the flying zebras bs competition two porsches up there in this well Sebelt and uh, Sebelt and uh, williams atty kaupanen who put in a superb lap time as well and tcr zenith have got actually ahead of SMRC, so Zenith now lead the way in the Hyundai Veloster. Interesting, and look at them also immediately lead the field off the racing line, forcing the drivers behind to work if they want to grab the slipstream and if they want that extra speed down the back straight here. TCR cars oh. hitting about 220 k's an hour. Yeah, they uh, right up to the top of top gear, then hard on the brakes, rattling down the gearbox. According to Guinness, they're in second position in the Simar C car. He was on pole, but do you know what? He could be just in the box seat here, just sussing out his, his uh, rival there for Zenith. Good mix of Hyundais and Hondas at the front of the field here as well. A little bit of balance of performance adjustments. The Honda actually taking on a little bit of weight. The Hyundai actually reduced in its power and fuel limit. So for the Honda, super sharp regularly in the uh, on the handling aspect, but maybe not quite as good on the straight line normally. And Giancarlo Schuler bump drafting his Mercedes into the back of the Pure Sims 417 car of Jordan Johnson. Yeah, this was the Pure Sims GT4 car that had a pretty horrid start. Uh, all things considered, went wheel to wheel at this part of the lap into the chicane here. Both cars didn't spin out, but they had to cut the chicane. Both had a slowdown, and that cost them uh, a lot of spots. There's a bit of Porsche to Porsche contact, and the rear engine does what it does for MSI Esports. Christian Lamella, half spin there. Not how you want to start your stint, going wheel to wheel with Altus. So it's been an eventful day so far for the Altus Porsche. Uh, and it's just at this corner actually as well it was with Felix Kernbach. As oh, side by side. And yeah, pretty over aggressive there, Matteo Ugolotti and Christian Lamella. This gets barged aside and has to get back going again. Yeah, it's a tough break for MSI, but you don't see much uh, penalizable there. You know, Altus still tried to make the corner. MSI tried to squeeze them as best they could to the apex, and it worked out for one party and, and not the other. So we'll see about that one, and we will keep you abreast of uh, penalties and such as as race control decide them, or, 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 or in some cases don't decide them, or no further action is still a decision but you get me. 
So the gap at the front really opening up now. 1.1 seconds the gap between B Team BMW Turner and Sebelt Kaika Shube taking the honours of starting the car after Ruben Bonga qualified the 96 machine on pole position. Sebelt number 22, that's Patrick Selva driving that machine. Ati Kaupinen qualified the Williams Porsche and is uh, taking on the early driving as well. They're in third place with the first of the Bila cars in fourth, Sven Hasse with his team with uh, fellow BMW and BMBS competition driver Felix Kernbach there in fifth. They are starting to break away a little bit of a train but as you said David, you, you know if you don't make that 60 minute tank, uh, that 60 minute run on a tank of fuel you are really compromised for uh, winning this race and BMW Turner there flying at the front of the field at the moment. Best lap, 202.8, much quicker than anyone behind. Yeah, and we also see a big variety to the, the tyre strategies as well. Some teams might hope that they can triple stint their tyres here in, in, in GT3, and some teams aren't even going to try it. So who's doing, doing what? We won't know until later, but there are some teams that might look, uh, you know, hot chips right now that wear their tyres out and are wearing through their fuel and will fall back. There's others who are biding their time and, and treating this race like the marathon uh, that it inevitably will be. Track, te track temperature very friendly at the moment, just 23.9 degrees Celsius. Um, so, yeah, not uh, not overly warm at all at this stage. So perfect conditions for the tyres. We are only about 11 o'clock in sim time, so we will head into the hotter part of the afternoon. The track temperature will rise. Will it get excessively warm? Well, we'll see. Um, the field now just starting to spread a little bit more at the front. Meanwhile, in the Porsche Cups, well, it never spreads there. Always tight racing. And Team 75 by Bernhard lead the way with uh, Jürgen Frank taking the early honours there and Kane Halley Burton the pole sitter just sat right in there snug behind the Team 75 car everyone wants red and black on their race cars mm -hmm. uh, apparently we know that that's the, you know, the uh, mandated endurance paint scheme apparently from WEC the top two are starting to snake away and this is another one of those classes where uh, the fuel strategy is not in question but the tyre strategy might be for these 992s I've often seen them open up races changing tyres every stop but then if it cools off later into the afternoon or the evening of the race start to try double stinting well it's it started Coolish on circuit, so I wonder if uh, some teams are going to try to double stint their tyres immediately into this race. There is a chance that it keeps heating up for the next two or three hours, reaches a temperature peak and starts to cool off after that. You can see uh, with the direct sunlight we've got right now, the circuit just inching up a little bit, but officially the forecast is partly cloudy, so uh, you know. When that part of the cloud comes back across, track temperature can be um, a little unpredictable and, and, and rather variable. Mother Nature throws that up for us. I wonder if we, we might see at the other, thinking of the other end, towards the end of the race, David, where we might see some teams throw the dice and try to double stint the last stint when we get to sort of five o'clock in the evening and then the track temperature starts to come back as Sam Coitert takes a big look up the inside at turn one. Classic turn one move there for the Circuit of the Americas. The big, wide open space, and you can see, uh, you can always see a gap, but you've got to get it, got, got to get the job done. And Coitert did so there. So he moves up into third place ahead of Vince Peters. Two drivers here who've got a super amount of experience in this style of car, and they've got attention there from the Sebelt backed machine. Uh, Matthias Luchik driving that car, now right on the back of Vince Peters, but they're leading too, they've gone, this is something you very rarely see in Porsche Cup competition, uh, the gap at the front there, quite significant actually from 
third place Sam Coiter all the way up towards Hallowed Burton and the uh, leading Team 75 Bernhardt car of uh, the Team 75 Bernhardt car of Jürgen Frank excitement for the GT3s because they've caught the TCR field for the first time and this is where the race really kicks off and, and, and lights up for a second time because the TCR cars all still really closely packed together by that slipstream the GT3 cars all together as well and uh, there's not two racing lines so at some point there's going to be some level of conflict oh yeah this is where it can get quite spicy indeed big difference in disparity in speed here the thing is though several of these drivers uh, are racing in the uh, IMSA Global Esports Championship which uses this mix of cars the GT3 and oh TCR that's a huge move there from one of the Bila cars just actually giving the TCR oh, a kind of hard choice there either move off the racing line and out of my way or I'm going to nerf you that is really aggressive stuff in traffic there Yeah, it is, but sometimes it, it it proves worth it. Maybe more so for the TCRs and the GT3, because suddenly you've got a bunch of GT3 cars in between Zenith and SimRC. It's a 1.2 second lead, 1.7 seconds. See, immediately uh, it's working for Zenith Esports as a TCR car to, to be putting a lot of time between themselves and the competitors they were trying to break away from that they couldn't without GT3 assistance. It's three wide. Is it bump drafting down the back straight? It is. Relay getting the push from Apex Academy. Wow. Yeah, Riley. Whoa, spin. Spin. Spin for the Williams. Porsche reverses. And I'll have, to, I'll have to do all that work again to get through the TCR field. It's a number five car. Dear me. Do you know... Lombardi making a mistake there and 55 cars let's get a let's get a look here you really, can really see how busy it's getting down there you see, yeah the Riley BMW getting a push from the apex car oh gets touched touched by the apex car so it was given a bit of a help there David it's so busy on that part yeah. of the next track and from that angle it's hard to make any call from it but this uh, could tell us something so Made a, made a bit of sense there. You had nowhere else to go as the Epic Racing Academy car. So you push the car in front. Dad. Who would want to be a race steward? Not me. Definitely not me. Um, yeah, it was strange there. The, William, the, the Williams Porsche sort of just appeared around the outside. And yeah, interesting one. I'll be fascinated to see what the what the stewards think of that one as our sole Lamborghini plows on a car with great great balance of I mean, a V10 engine in the middle of the car but it's a very well balanced package just hasn't quite got the pace with the way the balance of the performance is looking at the moment certainly now a venerable car on the iRacing platform I remember when it was launched it was hugely hugely popular but it's, it's kind of an old stager now, David. It, the, the world of iRacing is a fast, fast-moving world. Yeah. You'll close your eyes, and when you open them, um, we'll all be racing BMW M Hybrid V8 Lombiha <laughs> Hypercar Mawatsits, which I'm, I'm, I'm keen for. Uh, looking forward to the Mawatsits as well. <laughs> Oh dear. Well, yeah, it's. Uh, I wonder what will what will be next. Uh, there's all, everyone always excited to see. Of course, we had confirmation that the BMW LMDH prototype will come to iRacing next year. That's hugely excited. The first uh, announcement of uh, one of our uh, new the global prototypes. In the LMDH rule set. How about a slightly sadder announcement? We've already had two penalties come down from the Ooh. stewards uh, during this. Now, one of them I, I felt I saw coming. There is 20 seconds for the Altus GT3. That's for the impeding and qualifying that we saw. Altus were not on a hot lap. The car behind them was on a hot lap, was on the racing line, flashed their headlights, and the Altus car did, did definitely seem to be in their way um, at that point. 
and uh, so that's 20 seconds for impeding in the qualifying. And then the other incident that we saw uh, right at the start of this race, yeah, it was that contact between the Porsche 992s. Um, yeah, was just a little, a little, a little lazy at the far end of the circuit. Here's a replay of uh, turn one amongst our GT3s. Our only Lamborghini drops back Great one spot. Move. That was a super move there from the Porsche. Yeah, getting past the 24 Lamborghini of Daniel Sommer, that's number 14 MSI Porsche. Uh, getting the move done there with uh, Christine Lamella. Just timed it perfectly, enough of a room. And to be very fair, Daniel Sommer gave the racing room as well. Great to see that. Back at the front in GT4, it's uh, number 416 Pure Sims Mercedes leading from the CSRA by in Tropic, who immediately that car is making me hungry because it's got McDonald's sponsorship on the uh, on the on the hood there, if, if I'm not mistaken. There are two cars in oh. um, the Australian GT Championship that are just full livery KFC, and oh. that. Oh, that gets me. That gets me every time. And it doesn't hurt that one of them is driven by uh, one of the, the the nicest blokes you could come across, um, Paul Stokel. So very, very easy to cheer for um, there. Paul Stokel used to drive in the sort of early 2000s, one of the Lamborghini Diablo um, SV GTRs or whatever the hell they were. All black Lamborghini Diablo as a race car. You cannot go wrong. Things are definitely interesting here though uh, in GT4. So we spoke to the pole sitter who is still the race leader uh, in that Pure Sims 416. So uh, Matthew Turnbull I think did the work. Ian Gagnon Renault was, was quite happy um, with it. And there's one imposter in this group and that's the Sim RC Aston Martin. So they're doing a, they're doing a, a good opening stint. But this could all get blown open in not too long when the GT3 cars come in here. Yeah, a they're, bit they're of discontent be on the from some of the TCR teams about exactly what went down. But it's like that every race, and it's such a pace difference, and they're both really close fields that it almost feels inevitable. Yeah, it is, and, and neither neither party wants to give away any lap time because it's just so so tight uh, at the front. Good to see the SimRC Aston Martin fighting away there as well in the leading group of Mercedes in GT4. But uh, yeah, Matty Turnbull looking very strong in that uh, Pure Sims machine. Of course, the GT4 is quite handy. You can. Uh, change tyres while the field's going in not so with the GT3s it's Andrea Alberti just a little bit I gave up a few spots there as well perhaps maybe a little mistake possibly but uh, drops back a few places, let's see what happened here Ooh, is it going to involve that TCR car just up in front are they going to outbreak themselves oh well that was kind of a little self penalising wasn't it well yeah very certainly uh, held the held the held the brake as long as possible to try and avoid any problems for the TCR machine. The Don't adjust your TV and... set. This isn't an F1 replay. Oh, it was very. Oh, who's who? Well, I guess the, the BMW has got to be. Uh, it's got I to be. Havu as as Lance Stroll in this one with the late oh. move in defence, but that's <laughs> about that's about it. I wouldn't. We're starting that fire, aren't we? We're just throwing the throwing a batch into the into the YouTube chat and throw some petrol in there as well. Yeah, great move there from the Bila Uronic BMW on Habu. So yeah, I guess that makes the Bila car for stopping, I suppose. Um, 14 Alonso, wins in right? a season, David. We thought we'd ever see that. Yeah. So this is one of the really tough places on the circuit for traffic, isn't it? The GT3 cars, sure, they've got a lot of grip to maybe try to go offline and round up a bunch of cars, but the reality is, from turn two all the way through to here, there's no easy way to get past. It's just corner, 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 and look at this. It's sort of GT3s to the left. Oh, gt 4 to the right, but there's more contact, and Altus 43 are around and in the fence. It's been a tough qualifying, a tough race so far, and it's getting more tough for them. Uh, it's been a disastrous day really for Altus Porsche in that car 43. Now who did they get hit by or, or 
So they passed the one of the Pure Sims Mercedes GT4 car. They're all, all on their own at the moment. Did they hit one of these dastardly curves? Uh, no. It's at the top of the hill here as they try to join the, the left-hand train of GT3. Oh, this hits yeah. the side of the impulse car. It's not been their finest day, has it? What I'm expecting to see is... Yeah. There's not really a GT4 width to the right-hand side of Matteo Ugolotti there. It was, it was tough to work out exactly where the GT4 was going to be because it also had a little bit of a wobble. It was offline and not the typical racing speed. So then Altus have barreled in there quicker than they expected to on the GT4. But not with the caution that was necessary to, you know, leave space for the GT4. Yeah, a day to a day to write off, a day to forget for Altus, I would say. Uh, as now the Porsche Cup cars making their way through the TCRs, uh, they'll make uh, Porsche Cup really you'll, you'll try to get as many places as you possibly can on the on the long straightaways because that's where they really they are really fast. It's, oh, the way of Italy car now. Stuffing it up the inside of the Pure Sims Honda flashes the lights in disgust. It's, it wouldn't be multi-class racing otherwise. And the thing is, of course, we're only 25 minutes into this six-hour race. As unsurprisingly, Alta's in the pits for repair. They did hit the barrier. Um, but yeah, 25 minutes into this race, David, the... You know, this this traffic is only going to mix up and meld more as the GT3s and the Porsche Cups, GT4s, they all sort of blend together and then it, it becomes one massive melee. 55 cars. Yeah, and 16 protests on the sheet so far, wow. four of which have resulted in penalties. The rest of which, sorry, two of which have been no further action and the rest of which we are still waiting on. And the stewards are probably going to be busy for a little while with those ones to be sure 16 well do you think we can get into triple figures i think we might 16 in 25 minutes is quite impressive um, that's one i've not kept statistics on uh, across the seasons of 24 hour series <laughs> esports it wouldn't be impossible in fact i reckon if we have a word with casper to court he might know <laughs> uh, again super close there between havu and the tcr action on in the 992 class here. Oh, the Williams Porsche just drives it in too hard there. Of course, trying to fight back from that early incident. You can see the damage on the front right of that Williams Porsche Cup machine. Running a 995 Cody Deeth. Trying to just make up some sort of time. And, yeah, just maybe just getting a little bit... Uh, Impatient, possibly, uh, understandably, after a difficult start to the day. Andrea Alberti there in the way of Italy car just ahead and behind the Havu car is uh, the Havu machine driven by dropped off my screen. Really? Henry Salmon. So, Havu. Henry Salmon, thank you, David. Yep, yeah, same fella who qualified that car, but of course, there isn't a requirement for the qualifying driver to be the starting driver, so you can't always be certain but typically it does make sense for most teams for their qualifying driver to be um, their starting driver so front of the field then BS uh, plus Turner lead the way by 1.8 seconds in the GT3 category setting a really nice pace there Kai Kashube the uh, Driver of the 96 from Bila Racing Team Euronics. So it's now a BMW. I see it's a BMW 1, 2, 3 now. So G there's been a lot going on in GT3. BS Turner, Bila, BS Competition, then Sabel Esports and Williams are the first two of your Porsches. In fact, the two kind of leading Porsches by a reasonable margin. I wonder if the Porsches, with that 45 kilos, David, I wonder if they're using a little bit more fuel 
than expected than the BMWs are and they're maybe struggling to hit that lap time and hit their fuel number as well. Wait and see, but obviously it's, a, it's, it's an interesting dynamic between those two cars. Very different in engine configuration, weight distribution, etc. And we're hoping by the end of six hours, any of them could be in contention uh, for the win. There's a lot between now and then with the tyre strategy, with the fuel strategy, with dynamic track that's heated up just a tiny bit further. And of course, their interactions uh, with the traffic as well. So battle here going on. Javi Ross trying to hold off the Manatee Porsche. This is for seventh in the Porsche Cup category. The Manatee car at the moment being driven by and now the Manatee car being driven by Antonis Despotaskis number 978 that is quite a mouthful that name Antonis Despotaskis Despotakis you want to have a go at it David? Uh, yes Antonis Despotakis there you go. You got it first time. You're very cultured. Uh, I had a little bit more forewarning than you, I reckon. Look how wild that Aurus car in front looked, though. It just wanted to step out on him. It needed a good bit of correction to, to save. I wonder if this isn't the kind of circuit where you move the brake balance around a bit in a car like this, because you do have some really high speed straight line stops into hairpins like at turn one and like at the other hairpin at the far end of the circuit here but then also a lot of really curved braking zones where you'd want the brake bias rearwards through the S's and uh, famously what is it turn sort of 15 16 a bit later on in the arena section in the final sector impression here of what the draft situation is like. Let's also listen in the braking zone as well and see if Antonis Despotakis not massive lifting coast there. So the Porsche Cup cars are not quite as concerned about fuel usage. But then there seemed to be a huge pull from the slipstream there, David. Not, not as much as we as we used to with these cars. No, typically not that much out of, out of this new generation car. But um, what they do have is just a little bit better fuel economy than a GT3. So they're sort of much more comfortably making it to that 60 minutes, but not going much longer than that. Um, this isn't even for position this Altus GT3 car. Having served their penalties... And they are actually not just a whole lap down to the other cars in their class, but also to these 992s. So they've got to be oh so careful how they work their way through here, not just because they're a lap down um, to these cars, but also uh, because of the characteristics of GT3s versus the 992s. Down the pit straight, down the long back straight, Porsche Cup cars can be quicker. It's a section like this where it's tough to pass, where suddenly the GT3 cars are uh, are in their element performance-wise. Yeah, it's where the aerodynamic uh, properties of the car really come into play with the GT3 um, compared to the Cup machine. Uh, braking as well is a huge one. I mean, the braking and the of course the GT3 cars have ABS and just slam the brakes on. And also that added downforce helps under braking too, and that's where the, yeah the difference in braking between the GT3 and the Porsche Cup is is quite quite pronounced as as, as well. Uh, well, 32 minutes into this race, we're gonna get we'll get an impression in about 25 minutes ish or so of who's got it right in terms of the fuel number with our GT3. So your class leaders at the moment, BMW Team BS Turner, your leader. In the 992s, it's Team 75, Bernhard, 
GT4, Mercedes AMG Team Urano have moved up to the top of the shop. So Pure Sims dropping back a little bit in GT4. So it's all moving GT4. And then in TCR, it's Zenith Esports who lead from SimRC by half a second. But yeah, that's the story there in GT4. Uh, David, surprisingly, seeing uh, Pure Sims dropping off the scent a little bit. Hey, I'm going to look at the more recent laps to see if it uh, backs up what I thought I saw. But I think three or four laps ago, they got out of shape early on in the lap and uh, and cut the, the S's in the first sector, which, of course, uh, famously, my cousin, the default iRacing spotter, says, they say you cut the course. You have to slow down and give up the time gained. And uh, that would have been what happened for Turnbull here on lap 14, his lap 14. I'm not sure if that is what I saw, but it could be. I've always wondered if that was you, David. I've heard it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you have. I bet you have. <laughs> I've heard a lot. <laughs> it's uh, Need for Speed. It is not. Uh, <laughs> the uh, Oh, as you can see, the this, this belt. 992 car almost looking like a GT3 machine trying to cut through there at real pace. Oh, a bit deep though into turn 11, a real pinch point, very tight, and then on to the long drag all the way down towards turn 12. Quite nice to see as well that they're not not, not named corners that uh, aren't actually there. You can tell it was a European who designed this American yes. race track. Um, for better or for worse, let me tell you that. Um, it's sort of self-preservation, I think, was the order of the day as well from the GT4 that was kind of mixed in with them there. I think it's a uh, hard point by Delta Sport, potentially, um, who saw that, yeah, uh, I might lose one or two tents here, but I'll, I'll live to fight another day if I just don't get in the way of this 992 battle. 995 is looking ugly on the front right and also they've still got a penalty or two coming their way at their next pit stop how it works here at circuit of the americas is uh, there's all of the pit stalls and then there's sort of the practice start area before the exit of the pit lane that practice start area is the penalty box so uh, when it comes time we'll see teams take their pit service go to the penalty box, sit in the penalty box for however long their penalty was, and then and then leave. So what that effectively does is, if they got a 10 second penalty, it's just going to add 10 seconds to their next pit stop. And that gives the race control and stewards very fine-grained control. They, can, they don't have to only give drive-through penalties or, or something. If they want to give just a small 5 second penalty, that's at their disclosure. Alternatively, if uh, there's a repeat offence or an egregious offence, uh, I have seen penalties up to, I think, about 120 seconds in this championship is is one that's possible for the stewards to give out. Uh, that is like a month of detention equivalent. Well, we didn't much talk about them, but uh, one of the Manitzi cars had a 60-second penalty for incorrect registration and uh, I think they didn't even bother qualifying. Um, so... Good to see them out there, though. That's the most important thing. Uh, Marius Janke, number 48. And you never know, but with having 55 cars on circuit and a lot of real pinch points for traffic, you never know what the attrition rate can be in front. And if Manatee, if they run a clean race, uh, just clicking, up, clicking off those laps at a good pace, then, you know, they could pick up a result. What's their best lap time at the moment? Uh, their best lap time at the moment, a 210.139. Uh, in fact, a 220.139. A 210.139 would be incredible. But, yeah, they're not quite on the pace, though, it seems, uh, it seems David, which is a shame. Yeah, I'm. I, I doubt their commitment to Sparkle Motion a little bit uh, at this point, but it must be said, points go down to 15th place in every category 
there are 10 TCRs. So, if you finish last but finish, that is a much better result than a DNF. Very true. So, yeah, they just got to keep plodding on and see, see what happens, see what comes to them. Uh, that's what endurance racing is all about. It's just about that lack of lack of mistakes, uh, no matter what level you're running at. But uh, this is what it looks like at the front of GT3, BMW, 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 a leading train. Kai Kashube looking so strong at the front there. Kashube, of course, huge experience at the wheel of this machine specifically. The M4 GT3 has been around for quite a while now and it's uh, probably coming up for two years actually on the iRacing servers, longer than it's been competing in the outdoor world in fact. And yeah, it's uh, uh, Kai Kashube has been with the BS competition team for quite a long time and yeah, knows this car really, really well in all of its ins and outs. And behind, well, of course, the Bila team, they ran the Audis and then the Lamborghinis for, for a while. Now on to the BMW and Sven Hasse keeping pace very nicely there as well. This pace would indicate to me, uh, David, that the BMWs don't seem to have a great deal of concern about the fuel economy. Yeah, it's the difference in tyre life that's going to be interesting to me. Are any of those BMWs thinking about triple stinting? Because I bet you some of the Porsche teams, some of the Porsche teams are, and Sven Haas has been absolutely a star so far um, in this race. Starting out of sixth, now running in second, closing in on the leader. Um, really big mover in that GT3 field so far. Some yeah, very. In the final sector. Ooh. He's parked out in the grass in the final sector. He stopped off for an ice cream. That's a strange one there. So around kind of turn 16, 17, 18. Not often do you find much grass to park the on here. The Impulse GT4, I think it is. Yep, we're about to about to see. So um, this is maybe 10, 15 seconds early, unless it started a lot earlier than than I think. Well, Raymond Shepherds is going to have another group of Porsche Cup cars coming through here as well. This looks ominous. Just holding his line nicely, being predictable. Holding his line, holding his line, bang. And we saw uh, one of these Merc GT4s pulling a sick drift through that exact corner in qualifying without any help. So I think you could you could touch them with a feather right there and, and, and get that result. Yeah, it seems so. And that's really unlucky there for mm. Raymond Sheffers. And uh, nothing, absolutely nothing he could have done. He was maintaining his line and uh, just got clipped by the... Porsche Cup car. So a little bit of impatience going on here in these early stages. Five hours and 20 minutes to go. And yeah, you would expect to be a little bit more, a little bit more you hope for, a little bit more kind of allowance in traffic, but it just shows you how tight it is at the front. There's a battle going on for second position here then as well as the Vila Racing Euronics car having to oh, defend very, very aggressively there snips across, across the nose of Felix Kernbach in the BS competition BMW number 89. So that's game on there as well and of course that has released uh, there it goes, there's Kai Kashubi, he's pulled one and a half seconds out of them straight away. Yeah, it's just been a tough lap for, for Sven Haaser, he was right with the race lead, now you see him holding up Felix Kvernbach and, and, and in battle with him as well, so maybe the traffic just wrong footing him, at, uh, not falling right for him and had to recover and it's brought that Sabelt car right into this as well. Suddenly the Porsche in fourth place is right with them. Yeah, big question mark is, you know, the Porsche, is it having to be a bit more soft pedaling to get that fuel number to hit that critical hour mark of course these GT3 cars do approximately an hour but you have to usually be a little bit lighter on the gas to get to that hour the problem is if you don't get to that hour 
you're going to have to take an extra stop later in the race and at this level well that's it's going to really thwart your chances of winning the race and there's just not the there's just not the lap time in say a new set of tires or anything like that to make up the difference of an extra stop so it uh these are very much endurance tyres where they have a long life but not so much explosive lap time. Oh, Pearson's Porsche off. Oh, Beth in front of her. Oh, Pilot, our leader, our overall leader, pulls in front of the overall leader. There's the Pearson's Porsche. What was going on there? Oh, well, we'll find out in due course, but it means a, a new race leader because, yeah, a couple seconds lost. For Keika Shube and Hasler, Kernbach and Selva all go through. Now Sven Hasler leads the way and there's been a big moment at the Whoa. far end hairpin. I think Pure Sims Porsche will be copping a big penalty for that. Let's see what happened then. Let's see what, 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 why the Pure Sims Porsche went off in the first place. Uh, oh, loses it on the brakes, hits the gas, spins it around. Okay, so... Holds onto the brake, standing still, and then this is oh, just pulls straight in front of your overall race leader, Kai Kashubi, who's then blocked and can't move. And that Sven Hassa says, Oh, Merry Christmas, happy birthday to me. Off into the race lead he goes. This is how it looked for Kai Kashubi's. So he's saying, Okay, yeah, there he is. Okay, I've got room here. Bang! That's shocking. That's appalling. I mean, it's it's tough to know how much space is in front of your nose, how much space is behind you, which Wait way. The gap in track. You know, yeah, yeah. If if look you at your relative, you've got a relative readout. There's no excuse for it, I don't think. And if you have to wait there a bit longer, then it's tough. That's how it works. You know, there's a lot of cars coming through there, and it's going to hit one of them. So, yeah, that's that's really poor at this level, I would say. Is a taco a sandwich? Uh, oh, good question. It was then. Oh. Oh. Ouch. That's a, that's, a, that's a niche reference, but I like it. Of course, the favourite snack of the Turner team is taco, and there is damage, unsurprisingly, to the front right of that BMW. Now, they've got good pace, but how do they fight back from this, David? I don't know. They'll be very miffed with that, no doubt, I'm sure. And you can see the Chill Blast car, the Porsche GT3, right with them, right in touch now. So, so Kalpinen in that car was also your race winner last time out as well in Sebring. So we're getting word that in the virtual paddock, uh, Pure Sims team apologising. Understandably so, because uh, it's not it's not necessarily ruined the 96 cars race, but it's made winning a heck of a lot more difficult. Now the question will be: Do they keep on ploughing in, or will they be forced to come to pit lane? Pure Sims cars in pit lane. Daniel Ferguson having to take on repair. Now, does the does the 96 car carry on, or do they? No, it does carry on. So they're going to try and at least stay on the the kind of race winning strategy at least. Let's see how this lap time goes, or the next couple of lap time goes. It's going to be a lot of traffic to deal with for Kai Kashube, but he'll be hot under the collar right now. Yeah, you notice that the, the contact on the BMW here was kind of square on with its nose and then it, it did get hit from behind, but, but very square on. But it might have hit the rear suspension, the you know, sort of side-on T-bone with, with Pure Sims there. And it's it, it's always hits to the corners, to the wheels, to the suspension that's going to uh, cause you more grief than bent body panels front and rear so that could be you know ah. accounting for the difference there's rear damage as well because uh, of course it, it created a little bit of a log jam and there is rear damage to that uh, number 96 bmw so be interested in the next stop whether uh, how long they're sitting there getting repairs if they do 
course you do get with the the way that it works is you put the t put the fuel in and then tires now i would expect all the teams to at least try double stinting their tires at this stage of the race however if you do put the tires on it's about a 30 seconds wait so it's quite significant but when the tires are going on you can at least slowly do some repairs to the car so It'll be interesting to see how they cope with this and how they handle it, but it's put them really on the back foot from such a comfortable position. Yeah, absolutely. But they still sit fourth. They still sit only two and a half seconds away from the lead, so they are not losing any great amount of time at the moment. In fact, your top three get balked a little bit out of the final corner and suddenly they're within two seconds of the lead as well so Beeler and others have caught quite a lot of traffic it looks like TCR and GT4 all at once and you be forgiven for thinking of the 55 cars on circuit about 30 of them seem to be in this sector yeah really busy here this is where they're kind of they're all culminating together GT4s Porsche Cup cars, GT3s, all in there as well. A couple of TCRs for good measure. So a big, big, thick group of traffic to get through here. There's your race leader, Bila, racing with the BS competition sister car up there into second. So it's not all is not lost for BS competition. And it seems lap time wise, even at the last lap, the uh, former race leader, Kai Kashibi, was looking really good in terms of uh, pace compared to the other leading car so whatever damage there is on that car doesn't seem to be holding him back too much however on the straight I think he's losing a bit on the straight you know David because that Porsche just pulled away from him there yeah, yeah. I don't think he's one got place... that, that grunt on the straight anymore one place he's losing out that could be it man it is tough in this traffic they were three wide going into the hairpin at the far end of the circuit now there is an awful lot going on right here. It's almost like Nurburgring 24 traffic. Yeah, except just like real life, these BMWs aren't using their indicators. <laughs> it's on the same stock as the headlight flasher. They've got no problem using that. Again, almost another three wide sandwich there is Sven Hasser leading the way and uh, it doesn't look like it's necessarily easy to be a leader because he's got to Moses his way and, 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 and park through all of this traffic yet more three wide, three wide, three wide as they go and that's the other uh, Beeler isn't it, Lucas Verstappen Yeah I think now with it, I don't know being the leader makes as much of a difference now because they're all kind of so spread out and um, and the thing is, the slower class cars are always looking in the mirror now as well, because there might be a Porsche Cup car appears out of nowhere as well. Well, we thought that traffic might have been an issue. Certainly, it has transpired that way. TCR, Zenith Esports, they lead the way by a second from SimRC. Uh, MSI Esports in third. Uh, the Renault Esports lead the way by two seconds in GT4. Team Bernard have a six second advantage from ATRS Esports in Porsche Cup. So Team 75 Bernard looking very good. Oh, Wave Italy off, 9.44. Andrea Alberti. Oh dear, what happened there? We're gonna find out. It's at the left-hander at the top of the hill here. Sandwich between GT4 How lucky to not get hit there, by the way. Yeah, that could have been huge. That could have been absolutely huge with so many cars coming through. They all did well to avoid Andrea Alberti. Just got tangled up racing incident there. I mean, there's... You would think, oh, the Circuit of America is really wide. Modern circuit traffic won't be a problem, but just the, the nature, the profile of the corners is really proving an issue here for four different classes. Again, four different speeds of car is 
quite difficult. I mean, we see it in IMSA. You have, uh, up until the end of this season, you had DPI, LMP2, LMP3, GTD, and two various driver classes as well. So it certainly is... Uh, Certainly is a challenge of endurance racing. It's Andrew Cannon coming in there. That is very early. So taking on repairs here, David. It would certainly look like a little early and a long stop. As it stands at the moment for them. This is the GT3 Havu, Maddie Soya. Oh, he's gone. So the two Havoc cars together there, they, Team 75 Bernhardt, Porsche right behind them, they're getting very, very dicey, very, very close and spicy. Oh, that's, yeah. Uh, Man. Not, not great. Shouldn't be hitting somebody that hard in, in the braking zone. Let's have another look at this. Up the inside then, gets a little bit of a jink to the side and then, whack. Doing. 75 and 79 there, T Team Bernard and 79 Pavu. What do you make of that, David? Uh, well, okay. Who was it that we had before with the, you know, moving to block when the car behind pulls out? Because I think it was kind of sorry on the back straight. So this time. Okay. You See, this move. Isn't on. What's going on there? But kind of so it's like if you're gonna cover the inside, you gotta move to cover the inside. You can't stay middle of the road and then drive in your in your mirrors either. So for for me, both of them have been a little out of see that that, that cut left is too late. And then this yep. just allowing your car to drift back over to the right in the braking zone as well. Neither of them have covered themselves in glory with that one. No. I think that's a good way to summarise it. Both of them have ended the race there. Um, the Bernard car carries on, but with significant front damage. That's going to take a long, long repair. But carries on, doesn't take the pit. Obviously, definitely trying to at least stay on the winning strategy for a couple of going. They've got to maybe make three more laps. Um, well, that was going to be a long three laps. So. Our former leader are fighting back. They got held up in an incident not of their own making. Their previous lead has been taken away, but they fought back up to second place. And all of a sudden, through that phase of traffic there, David, all of a sudden, Bila Team Euronics have a six-second lead. All of, just like that. We saw that just really dense clump where the, the planets had aligned in their orbit for... GT4, 992, TCR to all be in one place at one time and then, you know, that that, that proved difficult to get through for some. Obviously, for Biela, they might have actually come across some of that before the planetary alignment, uh, if, if you will. But then it, it, it sort of clumped and became difficult for the next group of GT3 cars, so that could be be part of it, as well as Sven Haas would have been driving absolutely out of his skin in this opening stint and there'd been a little bit of drama for everyone else including this uh, BS Plus Turner car. Yeah, it certainly is drive of the day so far from Sven Hasse as the Porsche, the Seibelt Porsche, not wanting to let Kai Kushibi get out of the sight. Patrick Selva right there trying to hang on to the coattails of Kushibi's BMW pace setting car up until now. Uh, back in the GT4s, well, Urano Esports lead the way. The, the pole sitter, Pure Sims, they're about 3.8 seconds back. And they've got a look, big queue behind them here. Yeah, fourth place, SimRC, Aston Martin, then SRC, Nivano Course, there they go. And then the sister, Pure Sims Mercedes, there at the back. So a real train here from third, fourth, and fifth in GT4. Absolutely, so that's MRC 476, highest running Aston. I can tell you, there is a protest about their contact with DRS 
Shockwave Italy, but I don't think the stewards will be getting to it soon because there is about another 10 I think they need to get to first. It has been very taxing on the stewards this opening hour of the racing um, so far. Has one gone in to the Pure Sims Porsche, the cup car and from BS Competition? Um, there's too many for me to scan. There's too many. <laughs> oh dear, that's never a good sign. I guess if it's someone who's not in your category, I guess it. Is there much? Is there much need? I mean, I don't know. It's it's. Uh, oh, bang! Sim RC budging the way through on one of the TCRs there. Carbon Sim Sport, I think. It, I think it yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a good spot. Carbon Sim Sport would be because yeah, the impulse car not too far uh, behind. So yeah, Pure Sim's car gets through. Just moves him out a little bit. Yes, it is the Carbon Sim Sport car, right alongside plenty of room and then just runs it in a little bit deep, Biff. To answer your question, yes, there is a unsafe rejoin protest between the number 96 and the 916. It is also about five or six tickets away from being called up to be served at the counter. I see, I see. Well, now this is interesting. Car number 45, Bila Racing Team Uronix. BMW a minute and 40 seconds before the top of the hour that doesn't bode well for the sister car because that damage on the front of it will not make fuel consumption any better that's for sure so can the former race leading number 96 car of Kai Kashubi make it to the top of the hours or, or you know, do the Porsches, do they have something up sleeve in terms of fuel economy? But back out onto track comes the 45. I think, if I'm not mistaken, that's the kind of first of our kind of leading cars to make a pit stop. First without damage, it, it definitely would appear. And Kota is proving maybe a little more economical than I would have thought because it looks good so far for, for all of our leading cars in this group. Um, the, the reality of inverted commas making the hour isn't um, isn't entering the pit lane after an hour, it's exiting the pit lane after the top of the hour, so they are well and truly good now by the time they get around to pit entry and pit lane, at least like 10 seconds to the hour, they'll you know take their service and they'll be leaving comfortably on the right side uh, of that of that line so I think that pit entry on the left hand side here about to get a little busy okay <laughs> it was about to get really busy yeah so the number 96 BS competition by Turner machine comes on to pit road as does the race leading number 46 uh, Bila Uronics car the Porsches car one of the Porsches carries on the Sabelt car is in, but the NSI Porsche carries on. Interesting stuff there. So the Porsche is looking pretty economical, as is the 89 car. The 89 BS competition machine looking very, very good on fuel economy. That's going to give them a tiny buffer just to push on a little bit more later in the race. Yep. Alternatively, David, they use on penalties for a few of our leading cars. Yeah, so uh, don't think any of these are the ones we didn't already uh, know about, but it is going to demonstrate where that penalty box is. It's kind of next to the uh, pace car. So they are super tight, leaving pit lane there as well. Was it two tyres on the Sven Haase car? Is that what they did? Oh, good question. No, no. Yeah. I don't think it was. I think that was plus them serving their um, penalty. Ah, no, did it, because they're so far down the pit lane, are they allowed to serve their penalty in their pit box? I didn't see them go to the penalty box to serve that extra 10 seconds. I feel like they might be one of... 
two cars or so that actually do have their pit box inside the penalty box. Well, they shouldn't, but the time checks out. So maybe you're, maybe you're like, a bit, I don't know if we can replay or not, but uh, the, they certainly, you know, 20, 20 seconds longer than the shortest stop. Um, so they could well have put a, put a couple of tyres on there. Interesting. So are the BMWs with that turbocharged motor, are they getting a little bit more, uh, a little bit more tyre wear potentially? But in come the, in comes number 55, Williams uh, Porsche. And so they're all making the, making the top of the hour, well, well past the top of the hour now. So won't need to worry as much about fuel economy. So have the Porsches got more up their sleeve than we maybe ultimately realise? And I think that Team 75 Bernard car is going to be in for a while getting that damage repaired. I mean, you look at it and you don't see a way that they're going to race around like that for another five hours. Dad wouldn't, wouldn't sit right, would it? So, leading the way now been a bit of a change through that first run of the pit stops yeah Riley oh hello Riley, BM... oh dear. Riley BMW they took just 30 seconds so I think they did fuel only I think a lot of the other cars have done some form of tyres whether that be just right side or just rears or just fronts or whatever but what it does mean is Andreas Fink leading the way and uh, yeah, he's, he's had 30 seconds. Of it. There's the pit. There's the penalty box. Yeah, Dino Lombardi serving his penalty. Curious. Yeah, because I thought it was from the end of that concrete wall. So there's like, and then the drain across there. So between the drain and the end of the pit lane speed limit. So that concrete area there where Lombardi is to the the pit exit. I thought was the designated penalty box. So there's one or two cars that look like they might have short fielded a tiny bit here. Um, Andreas Fink and Relay Sim Racing could be um, one of them. I thought they've gone long uh, on this still so far, but Apex Racing Academy you saw came out shoulder to shoulder with BS plus Turner. Um, and, and I think that's because of Apex Racing Academy just short fueling three or four seconds. We've seen great economy from both of our sort of leading marks in GT3 here. So it might be a case of Apex Racing Academy looking to just short fuel a tiny bit early, take the slightly short fill early, and try to have track position for the next uh, next part of the race, if they can. So relay. No. Interesting little variation of strategies. That's what always seems to happen in these six-hour races. First pit stop comes along, yeah, and uh, really and teams do different things. But you know that it's got. They've all got to get to the end of the six-hour race, and just, uh, it, it changes. I think it's all to do with with tires, you know, because I think the, the fuel takes about thirty seconds ish, and yeah, there's. I think there's there's drivers who are putting putting tyres on, whether it be one or two, uh, nobody's putting on all four, but I do think there's two tyres going on some of these cars, um, but Riley, as you say David, they've got their, they've got their track position, 3.8 seconds, the lead now between the 55 of uh, the Williams Esports Porsche of Atikaupen, and we know how fast he has been so far in those races, best lap time is two tenths quicker than Andreas Fink in the Riley BMW. So, hmm, curious, curious, curious. Our GT4s are in just after just after about an hour and six minutes of action, and of course they take tyres regardless. Uh, it goes in while the fuel is going in. So nice and easy there for them. So strategy all very much easy to calculate. Ooh, I think we're going to be keeping our eye on our uh, our uh, calculators throughout the day as the Apex Racing Academy car providing a little bit of a tr difficulty here for the BS competition car. Kai Kashube still on board. Yes, he is. 
trying to get past the Apex Academy car of Maxime Briand. Yeah, and so it's worked to get a little bit of track position for this Apex Racing Academy team, but uh, the other side of that is it's maybe frustrating some of these other drivers a, a touch, because they now don't have that track position, maybe feeling themselves a little held up and feeling like they're not able to match the pace of maybe MSI Esports or uh, Williams Esports BenQ, those Porsches who are, are ahead. Very interesting here how this is this is shuffling out at the front of the Porsche Cup category. Team 75 Bernard by Senmar C. They lead by 13 seconds from Sebel Esports. A really dominant stint early on from our leading Porsche Cup car as the GT3s carve through traffic. But yeah, leading Jurgen Frank really, really quick at the front in Porsche Cup. As Busy stop if you're SRC Movano Corsa, isn't it? You see the GT4 yes. and the 992 car in the lane together and a driver change at, uh, at GT4. So um, they've got longer stops and they change tyres at every stop and I think that gives them more flexibility with their driver lineup in GT4 than you typically see out of GT3 or 992 where the, uh, the tyres can sometimes be double stinted. Uh, yeah, there's that penalty box again. Yeah, so that's where you're serving your penalties. So I think the spot with Sven Hasse taking more time and the quite significant more ten seconds more than any of the leading cars, I think that was a that was a tire thing. I mean the BMW does have a bit of a reputation for eating its tires. Again, that turbocharged uh, power delivery can be a little bit of a more aggressive side and just works the tire that little bit more. Uh, you can see the GT3s coming through here past the Torque Freak Mercedes GT4 with uh, I always think it looked like an iron brew can that car with the uh, orange and blue very much a positive thing so you um that's your favorite drink you don't mind a bit of Mackie D's uh, a bit, bit of bit of what do you call it bit of, Ma bit of Mackie's yeah so yeah, uh, you've got some great Scottish got some great options I'm trying to you know uh, speak in the language of the, the, the listener, not my own. Speaking of BMWs eating their tyres, it reminds me of a review I read. And there's, I don't know, there's always a certain level of humour to just a really well-written product review. And the... Um, BMW i3, I think, is on some really weird dimension of tyre, where it's a really big rim, but the tyres are really narrow. And so no one but Bridgestone make a tyre in that dimension. And the tyre they make somehow only lasts 20,000 kilometres or so, which is pitiful for what's meant to be an economy car. So there is just a barrage of one-star reviews on this tyre from BMW i3 owners. Yes, I do, I do find that some, uh, when you read some car reviews, you think, what, what, uh, what car are they actually driving there? Because it doesn't seem to correlate uh, occasionally. Um, wouldn't mind if I in one of these cars. I'm not sure I could uh, give any kind of meaningful assessment of the ability. Just more just sheer awe of what the, one of these things must be capable of doing. As you're in a circle like this, you've got big, long, heavy G-loads. I tell you what, the form of the one guys, they must really have to get their neck muscles on point for, for this circuit. It must really, really put them through the ringer. I found the tyre in question. Go on. Oh, it's just it's just review after review of people saying like this is the only tire I can possibly buy for my BMW i3 and I need to replace it every 15,000 kilometers. I hate this tire. I hate Bridgestone, um, which is a little a little unfair. But it is you know when you don't have um, you know options, that's 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 a little frustrating as a consumer when you find yourself sort of locked in 
into a, a, an ecosystem with limited supply, you're going to get gouged. Yeah, it's uh, market forces, isn't it? If it, they're the only show in town, um, yeah, that's very frustrating. Very frustrating. Well, you don't have that problem with the Hankook tyre, of course, the official tyre of the 24H series. Amazing that they make the same tyre. For They have a dry tyre and a wet tyre for 24H series competition, and it's exactly the same tyre. It's just made in different sizes, but the tyre construction and build compound etc it's all the same for, for gt3 all the way down to tcr etc uh an amazing piece of uh, of tire design i've done i think most of my racing on hancock tires if i'm honest with you but uh not the gt3 spec the uh road going rs4 which is very very versatile and very durable and in fact on a race car seems to almost go as far as these other tires do on on road cars it's it's heating up a little bit uh amongst these porsche guys here the msi machine definitely got all over uh, williams chilled last machine a decision has to be made with the traffic in the final sector what else is heating up is the track 28.3 degrees is your track temperature now and um, so it's really starting to climb as we go past midday in sim uh, and that's going to have an effect as well if tire life is a problem for any of these crews then well that track te uh, rising track temperature is not going to help matters as we ride on board with Christian Lamella for MSI Esports Porsche the uh, Williams Esports Porsche ahead about five seconds back from the Riley BMW, of course, it appears to be trying to double stent the tyres. And so we'll see how, how <coughs> the lap times compare over the next few, few laps. It's action out on track and it's all action for our stewards. There's slowly working their way through the backlog of protested incidents from the first hour of the race. Hopefully they're not here too long after the chequered flag drops. But what stands out to me is... Well, I'll get to it a bit later maybe, Peter. Yeah, Lamella up the inside, that's a beautiful move there for the MSI Porsche driver, gets the move done very, very nice on the brakes, goes past the Williams BMW uh, of Atikaupinen. So we're getting word that the number 46, David, did not serve its penalty in the box, so it, was, it must have been either damage repair or, more likely, tyres. Yeah, I think they might have gone for your right sides or just one front right or something. Um, that's added to their time in their own pit box, but no time in the penalty box because they have not served it yet. They get 90 minutes to serve it from when it's issued. So if it got issued not that long before their first pit stop, they're within their rights to say, OK, push it on to the second pit stop because we can do that. GT3 is the car that enters pit lane most often uh, of all of the classes in this race, you know, on average once an hour. So that could be a little sort of tactical thing from them. But in the intervening time since, they've been given a, another five seconds for a dive bomb on a TCR. So making the pass from far back uh, before the braking zone. Their first five second penalty was for overtaking outside of track limits. So it's it, it's these little things about negotiating your way through the traffic that have uh, hurt them. Two Beelers together though. Yeah, two Beeler BMWs then, so more penalties hanging over. Sven Hasse, they know how quick they are, but uh, yeah, that could cost them. At the front of TCR, Zenith are leading the way from Sim RC by just half a second. They're 
way, there were quite a decent amount in front of their rivals. Uh, big gap back now for them. Uh, just looking at it, yeah, four seconds back to Mark Perez in the MSI car. So it's Hyundai Veloster from Honda TCR. As oh, Guinea is just a little bit deep there in that the Honda can't be long before the TCRs take their first trip down pit road. And I would think they'll be putting on new front tyres, unlikely to bother with the rear slope. Well, there's the thing is the amount of fuel drop that they have to take in this style of the endurance racing. Um, they can get free rear tyres as well, but it does come down to a balance preference thing and also the performance on, you know, the outlap or the first couple of laps. If it's, if you think the overall performance you get from rear tyres isn't worth the warm-up phase, then we definitely have seen teams only do front tyres even when they could have uh, changed their rear tyres. A little outbreaking moment from the only remaining Havu in this race. The, uh, the 992 trying to work its way around these TCRs. Massive speed difference in a straight line though. The Havu 992, how fast are you going? 260 kilometers an hour. Oof, yeah, I'd say. That's sh sh shoving on, that's for sure. So about 40 kilometers an hour more than the TCR has. So uh, that's. That's plenty, plenty of overspeed to well and truly get clear before the braking zone at the end of the longest straight. It's a long opening, st long stints for these TCR machines. They've already done 34 laps, uh, so yeah, it's a lot long old, long old way for these TCR machines. So that we'd expect we'll see a, a flurry of driver changes across uh, across the TCR fields early on, and. How that uh, that kind of changes the orders. Ooh, the little squeeze through there by the Wave Italy Porsche Cup car. That's just held up the Zena TCR a little bit, dropping back into the clutches of Guinness in the SMRC Honda there. Yep, on the t on the headlight flasher, displaying his dis uh, his disdain with that move. Very concisely gets the opinion across. <laughs> uh, it, it, it must be said but it doesn't achieve much constructive but it uh, it, 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 it helps you vent yes I would say so I would say so you, you always say if you're good you show your anger So having been through pit lane since the damage was received, does the front right of this Williams Esports 995 look just a little tidier than it it no. did before? It doesn't? You're right. Because no. there it are some angles where it really shows up. It still yeah, looks that like that it's one's... got a Mansory body kit on it, which is not a good mm. thing. Um, oh, just running in very hot and deep there. Guess Zenith, the do the thing. Oh, I was waiting to see more Zenith headlight flashing. Uh, maybe. The Zenith definitely had to, the Zenith Hyundai definitely had to kind of adjust the line there to allow the uh, Chill Blast Williams Porsche to come back. But they're having to take such big risks on the on the brakes. And yeah, there's the damage. It's, uh, uh, it's not going to be helping Cody Deeth, that's for sure. Yeah, that's not right. So it doesn't necessarily mean it's horrible, but it just means it's not great. No, it's not. Uh, it's certainly not at its optimum for sure. But uh, the front of the field, Riley Sim Racing, after their shorter stop, uh, we think for a double stint of tyres, uh, ah, they dropped about four tenths of a second to MSI Porsche last time by. Again, it's gonna it's gonna come back and forth with traffic. We're gonna see how goes across the whole stint but Riley holding five second advantage at the moment you would think though David that uh, that they're going to need a very long they're going to need a certainly a longer stop for their second one uh, to put four new tyres on where some of the others might be able to play around with it a little bit more yep and have you got your bingo sheet they've got a penalty 
It's just five seconds oh. though for causing contact. Turn 11 with uh, two other cars in GT3. So five seconds for that leading number 83. Well, that would that would drop them pretty much. Well, it's not just the five seconds, is it? It's the stop in the box and then get back going again. There's probably another second, second and a half in the actual serving of the penalty, plus whatever the penalty is. Yeah, maybe even a little more than that because we're dealing with an 80 kilometer an hour pit lane yeah, speed limit too. And that Riley didn't count. They, they're not as if they're right up there at the very front of pit lane. They, I think they were qualified sort of back end of the top ten, if I remember. Right. Uh, so, if, if this is to be believed. Yeah. So they definitely are. You know, they they they'll actually back back up to 80 k's and then back down again. So, yeah, that that could potentially lose them the lead to MSI Esports. And this strategy battle is going to shuffle back and forth throughout the uh, throughout the day. It does seem though from early indications that the BMWs are struggling with tyres and having to take tyres early on and that, I tell you what, as, we, as that track temperature continues to climb, it's uh, well, it's sort of starting to, to sort of sit at about 28 at the moment but if it gets any hotter it will be a real nightmare for these BMWs. It's looking all right for Porsches now. Uh, MSI, who we look at now, and Williams Esports BenQ, uh, just behind them, both have benefited pretty well, I think, from going long in that first stint. They definitely looked like there was an overcut uh, to be to be had, honestly, because the other cars pitted a, a lap earlier, and then uh, when these cars came out, they were well and truly clear of where we thought the race lead was with the Beeler cars and, and, and BS Turner. How's so the having... split in lap speed though between Apex Racing Academy and Turner and Beeler on the lap just completed? about halfway through the stints for our top GT3 runners and that gap is coming down more now MSI Esports now about three and a half seconds the difference and might actually be able to tuck in behind this kind of gaggle of Porsche Cup cars coming up there in front of course they were, it was difficult to catch on the straight for the GT3 machines but uh, TCR Zenith Esports leading the way by just half a second. GT4, Sabel Esports leading the way by three seconds from CSRA by Entropic. So Pure Sims, pull the pulse in car, not quite up in that leading battle at the moment. In Porsche Cup, well, it's Team 75 Bernhard who are cruising away at the front, 14 seconds up on Sabel Esports. Remarkable stuff there as Williams and Apex Racing Academy, they're tussling away, losing time. So, interestingly, David, the Williams Esports Porsche of Ati Kaupinen not quite got the pace in the second half of the stint and kind of dropping back a little. The relative pace in, in this stint compared to the previous is why I don't put too much stock in what happens in the first 30 minutes of the race, you know, suddenly you're like, well, okay, these teams that look lightning and, and, and un almost unstoppable uh, right out of the gate don't, don't always don't always last, so we're, we're seeing a sort of different form in this stint, and then from the top of the hour could be a new form book again It really could be yeah, and all, all about that track temperature as well, how it goes, it's sort of hovering around 28 at the moment, degrees Celsius, but if it decides to blame anymore, I think it is going to come down to tyres here on top of the way that you get through traffic. And I think avoiding any penalties is going to be really difficult, actually, especially for the fact that the top classes, Porsche Cup and GT3, because they're the, they're the ones that are having to do all of the overtaking. So inevitably are usually more 
to blame for any kind of incidents that happen. So trying to get through the whole race without kind of tripping over a, a slower class car and getting yourself a penalty, that could be the, the kind of deciding factor on who comes out on top here. And that's what makes the, the traffic such a difficult balancing act because you can't be losing half a second waiting for every car that you've 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 got to pass because you've got to pass dozens and dozens and dozens and it adds up to you know half a minute before you before you know. But if you are sloppy and so do two to the penalties add up to um, quite a punishing amount of time as well. I really do think it's going to make a difference. Are you seeing the kind of pace out of this Beeler 46 that you'd hope to see, given that extra time in the pit lane that they spent uh, putting on a new tyre or two? Because they're around cars that I don't think did likewise. I think the three cars immediately behind them all took fuel only. And they've now spent 10 laps not getting away not seem to have any advantage uh, over their teammates, over BS Turner, or indeed over Sabelt's Porsche. Yeah, yeah, I am surprised. I am really surprised. And uh, of course, they've got a, a penalty hanging over them. So Bela looking so strong, they look so strong early on, and it's just starting to fade away. I do wonder if it's just how the how the cards fall with the, the traffic, you know, it's uh, oh, a little bit of a switch back there from the one of the Bila cars, the 46 of Hasse. And it's not not been the ideal progress either for the number 96 BS Turner car. No, but we're inclined to forgive them a little bit based on how they were affected when they were leading the race and the aero tweaks that they appear to still be carrying. The car is a little cleaner than before their pit stop, but uh, not by much. You can still see sort of the front right tyre exposed and, and the rear is still uh, punched in. See, difficult moment on traction there for the 46. Now they're not past the 992, they've got to go off the racing line to try to go around them, and they're struggling for traction, therefore struggling to get past the traffic how they would have liked, and it, it costs them time, and it costs them time. It compounds against them in a section of traffic and, and, and track like that. Yeah, it definitely is good, really holding up. Some of these GTP cards are going to have to contend with that all day. Riley Sim Racing, of, uh, their overall leaders, have consolidated their lead back up a bit again. They're back up to nearly five seconds at the moment. And, yeah, so it's looking really, really good for uh, for Riley Sim Racing. I have to say, starting 11th, they've kind of stealthed their way through here. You thought, okay, they're up there with a little kind of quirk of strategy, but they, they actually are running the pace on merit. I'll be interested to see when they pit though, because if they're drastically short on fuel at the moment, that's going to that's gonna flatter them that they'd be running around a little bit, bit lighter than everyone else. But yeah, no, the last couple of laps, not, not, not bad at all. And if we put so much stock in, in track position, uh, they've got all of it at the moment while uh, others, you know, struggle battling against cars in their own class and, and, and struggling on how to get through the traffic as well. I mean, pick Sabelt here, right? They're, they're not quite close enough to the cars in front that they're battling with to follow them through on the traffic every time. But they're also not far enough away that they catch the traffic in a, in a, in a different way to, to maybe be advantaged by it. And now might end up with a car between themselves and the Beeler 45 and that's not what they want. No, no, not, not at all. And the lap times last time by for these BMWs, 205 flat, all the other cars in front are in the 203s. So this tra that traffic really, really hurting uh, these uh, three BMWs, the two Beeler cars and the BS competition cars. 
No, do we? We the TCRs, the uh, they're cracking on, uh, and we are, we should. There's the where are they now? And they're still into fortieth laps of a stint. Uh, really, and over an hour and a half. They've, they've got to be in now, surely. So Relay Sim Racing pit from the lead, so it was a very short stint and presumably a very short fuel at their last stop. So that's even earlier than I was expecting. Dominic Push is is going to get in as well. Now, this is an incident I saw. you got your Williams Esports BenQ car. Winner last time out. They're working their way through the traffic here. And I, I, I saw the aftermath, but this is the first time I'm seeing... Uh, what led up to it. Oh. Uh, no, I, I, I don't think you can say Williams did much oh. wrong there. Just a little bit of ghost contact, it seems. It's, uh, it, uh, it can't happen here. We've race, got drivers racing all over the world. Oh, dear. Um, racing all over the world and all racing in real time. And the uh, slight... Uh, yeah, the, the, just, the internet's an incredible thing, but occasionally you just get that little bit of disparity uh, between drivers who may be at different, different ends of the world, and it can just make a tiny difference like that. Um, very, very unfortunate there. So, Talking right, about the those BMW, bits of the world, I mean, Hunkos are obviously from that bit of the world that is South America, and I do believe so was the driver in the car at the time and that has definitely not made it easier for all involved no I think it's a difficult one of course they then got to relay back to the server so it works more or less but uh, just a bit just a bit of bad luck there um, so Riley BMW they yeah strange strategy going on there as well what have they got up there what have they got up their sleeve I wonder um, what are they playing at? We'll have to keep an eye on that Riley BMW throughout the rest of the day. You're watching round three of the 24H Series eSports from the Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas. Your leader in GT3, MSI eSports, 992 Cup. It's Team 75, Bernard Sebelt eSports in third. And then Zenith eSports are uh, your uh, leader in the TCR. Do let us know where you're watching from, who you're watching with, and most importantly, what race snacks have you got? Very important for endurance motorsport. David, what have you got on the snack table? You're always you're always on, on it with the snacks for us for our endurance races. Well, I was having a roasted fruit and nut bar earlier, and that was divine. That sort of you know kind of thing that lifts not just your body but your mind and spirit as well um yeah like seaweed flavored rice crackers are, are, are in the future and i'm most of the way through my big pot of tea as well uh, at the moment so that's gonna have to get refreshed at some point yes I, I've, I've been on the peppermint tea i think i'm gonna switch to the hard stuff i think i'm gonna go to the coffee uh, in, a, in a minute. Uh, I've got uh, Tyrrell's Salt and Vinegar Crisp, an absolute market leader, I would say. Um, Terry's Chocolate Orange Mini Cyclist and a packet of Jaffa Cakes. Um, so, healthy. Uh, not as healthy as the fruit and nut bar, I have to say. Is it a chocolate fruit and nut bar, at least? I think it had just like a, just like a little bit, you know. It's a little a chocolate coating, a chocolate bed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, Ryan, big up my main man, Ryan Walker, the other half of Double Scotch. He's had pie and bovril. Oh. I had a pie on yesterday. With chips. So, TCR's in. Oh, Mikel Garcia. Can't park there, sir. How on oh. earth has that happened? No, right, left hand down. Left hand down. What on earth has happened there? I, d I actually don't know how he's got it in that position. 
Is it to, something to do with the way they've been entering pit lane? Let's have a look. Um, He's overshot, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh dear. Now there you are, ladies and gentlemen, the turning circle of the Hyundai Veloster. Tell you what, not bad. He's fitted in that. He's parallel parked in that space. Okay. Wow. I've not seen that before. New to me. Notice most of the other cars there are already down off the jacks. So um, the, the the tires get done pretty quickly, and the fuel takes a while. But I would suggest there's a chance they even got a penalty for that, and they're still being being held uh, for reversing on pit lane. Something. Yeah. Uh, not, not great. Yeah, I mean, I suppose it's not ideal when you if you were coming into pit lane there, and there's a Hyundai trying to. Uh, <laughs> Parallel park into the into the pit stop. MSI Esports are in from second position. SimRC Honda carrying on, so they go. This is interesting. They go a lot longer. Uh, of course, they're only going to need three stops across the whole race. So keeping out the pits for TCR more important than really than any any class. It's uh, keep those pit stops to a minimum and Corentin Gaynor I wonder has he been has he been soft pedalling potentially David I think so this has been sort of the hallmark of their strategy is to try to go long cut time out of the final fuel stop but also the the tyre warm up is famously pretty brutal in, in TCR cars so the overcut is a much stronger strategy than than the undercut so uh, by going one lap longer and uh, being light on fuel and quick while everyone else is tiptoeing around in their outlap you can often make some some decent gains I also just had a check uh, there are 60 pit stalls here at the circuit of the Americas and there are 55 cars so no shared pit stalls so the TCRs are gonna be right at the uh, the entry of pit lane there and that's caught some out There, well, Simar, see, this is poor, mega stint for the opening, uh, opening stint of the day for the TCR. They're well into their, into the forty-second bracket. We're going to dip away here on Race Spot TV for just a moment. Well, why don't we ride on board with car number one seventy-six? Well, the uh, Simar C Honda goes in to the pit lane and. Uh, take us through how a pit stop works here in the 24H series. Back in a moment.
Welcome back to round three of the 24H Series Esports live here from the Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas. My name is Peter Mackay, taking you through all the action here on Racebot TV alongside David Haynes. So, four hours and 13 minutes to go. How do we stand? Well, MSI Esports lead the way in their Porsche, being run down by the number 98 of Maxime Brion, who's flying at the moment in his BMW M4 GT3 in the Porsche Cup category. Well, we've, uh, at the moment, our class leader in that class is the Team 75 by Bernhard Sim RC machine leading by 23 and a half seconds as things stand in gt4 well it's an all mercedes top four at the moment with the uh, championship in fact excuse me the src mivano and my apologies again the Sa sabel esports gt4 car leads the way at the moment and in tcr it's sim rc's quarantin guinez who leads the way there as well so, David, your thoughts on the race so far? We've got wide open strategy in GT3 once again. It doesn't seem like it's coming down to that fuel economy like it had in the first two rounds. For whatever reason, uh, not so many concerns on that. But the tyre strategy is wide open. And uh, there's, there's a chance for some upset there. Watching the, the TCRs here, which have been a bit interesting. The Zenith have been one of the stronger cars of the first hour and a half. They have just uh, been unlapped by Manizzi or something. Yeah, the uh, Man Manizzi car, yeah, down a, down a lap from the Clash leader, Damien Owen Harris. He had a difficult day at the office on um, uh, Thursday night in the uh, World Touring Car Series and yeah difficult day as well a, a, a kind of should we say admin error David would that be fair that gave them a, a significant penalty to start with yeah a pretty fundamental pretty self-inflicted uh, problem yes I think that would be fair, fair to fair to say Penalties, 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 penalties. David, talk to me. Who have got, what have we got uh, on, on the sheet at the moment? Oh, so much. N not all of it of any uh, great significance. Um, what have we got? Williams in 992 have got another five seconds for overtaking outside of track limits. Uh, the 944 in that class have got five seconds for a dive bomb in the class. There's, there's no massive penalties, just a couple ten, five seconds uh, penalties. Ooh, nearly uh, Sabalt versus Sabalt's <laughs> attack there. Oof. They're uh, strapped together on, uh, on circuit. And this is a really interesting demonstration because the 992, an absolute rocket in a straight line, has pulled back past its GT3 brethren. But on the brakes... What? It's outbreaking BS competition? Wow. Uh, well... Oh! Oh! It nearly opened wow. the door for its GT3 teammate to, to, to make a position, and I'm... I'm like, no, don't feel right about that. Yeah, I do think there's definitely a bit of cooperation going on here for sure with the Sabelt cars. Of course, they're both black and yellow Porsches. One's a 992, one's a 991, but of course, one's a GT3 spec. There it goes. Oh, no, no, it, yeah, yes, it does. Yes, it does. They are hard to tell apart, actually. Uh, no jokes. Uh, well, it, 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 you can see why people make jokes about the, uh, the laziness of Porsche designers. <laughs> That was one of Jeremy Clarkson's favourites, how they, certainly the design language uh, sort of evolves gently over time. Whereas when you look at the BMW, for example, that's, uh, you just wouldn't recognise that compared to the uh, the previous uh, M4. If you, if you travelled back in time with that BMW M4, people, people wouldn't take you seriously. They'd, they'd believe it was, like, a practical joke or something. Like, the... The first person to return back to England with a platypus, and everyone was like, "Okay, what animals did you sew together to create a funny joke?" Because 
I don't believe you. I think the M in M4 stands for marmot. It's kind of got marmot teeth. Marmot or beaver? Either or. They're quite similar looking animals. I actually though, I, slightly on, I think the car as a racing car fits because, you know, racing cars tend to have, obviously with the laws of aerodynamics, they, you know, they have wings and, you know, intakes and all sorts of things anywhere, which kind of don't make a very clean shape anyway. Um, so it kind of gets away with it as part of a racing car. But actually, do you know what, David? I saw the road going M3 a little while ago in a lovely kind of dark green colour and actually a really nice car. It looked lovely. And it's I mean, sort of like, a racing car always yeah. has you know, exaggerated features. A road yeah. car has one feature that is quite exaggerated. So it does, yeah. It's all in how you paint it. Um, a little bit as well for the for the for the race car and I guess as you've just said for the road car as well. They do yeah, have some good paint options. They do, yeah. They are, of course they're all named after race tracks as well on the M cars. Uh, I do, I'm glad. Well, I don't know if you can get like the kind of baby sick one that was you used to get. I think it was E46 M3 that was. It was hideous. It was like kind of bright. Uh, yeah, well, it was sick color basically. It was horrible. Um, and also, of course, where the registration plate in the UK, we have a registration plate on the front of the car, so that can make a difference as well of what it what it looks like. Anyway, uh, four hours and seven minutes to go. We shouldn't be long, David, before we start to get our GT3 runners coming into pit lane. And then we'll shoot. I think we'll get a better picture of the order after the second stops and see who's where in terms of strategy. Yeah, because we had almost everyone um, uh, take fuel only in GT3 the first time around with the exception of that sort of maybe one or two tyre change from the 46 uh, we'll, we'll get to these next round of stops and it will be interesting to see are there any Porsche teams that really fancy themselves a, a triple stint and that seems like something a Porsche 911 could do that the BMWs uh, aren't I think a treble around here would be a big ask but if it can be done well that was the secret to Gwanda Simsport winning this year's Spa 24 hour was their ability to use way less fuel than others but also the, the tyre usage as well they were trebling tyres when everybody else could only double them and I mean, that was the big difference. The car didn't have the one lap pace, but they won it on pure strategy. So let's see if that's the key today. Uh, I do still think, David, it's all going to come down to who m makes the least mistakes in traffic and who avoids getting themselves in the penalty box. I think this, that penalty box is going to be worn out by the end of the day. Hey, did you see what I saw and that's why you've queued that up? Because perfect timing, a penalty has oh. just come through for the number 46 Beeler Racing Ooh. Team Euronics. It's an another 15 seconds, so they've got 5, 5, plus another 15, which they say never do maths live on air, but I think that's 25 that they're going to have to serve next time around. Well, and it's a game changing for... amount of time another dive bomb and because it's the second penalty they've been given for dive bombing uh, it, it it starts to um, ramp up a little exponentially yeah you wonder as well it's maybe a good time to get Sven Haas out of the car I mean he's driven I mean his, his pace has been incredible uh, both in qualifying and in the early stint of the race but you got to think of the Maybe concentration might start be starting to blip now. You know, he had the qualifying session to do, probably a bit of warm up in practice. Two hours in, probably a good time to get get a you know Bila have a good deep uh, roster of drivers. So it's not as if they're going to be trading any pace away. I think uh, it could be a good time for uh, for a driver change. I think we'll see these cars in in a couple of laps time. Yeah, we've had just a few little pit stops already, um, short of that top of the hour. Oh, flashing the headlights to your own teammate. All right, that's a pretty clear uh, form of communication. Uh, so ASR Able Esports uh, actually clipped the wall on the way in, and they're um, in pit lane at the moment. I don't think they did much damage, but they did um, 
have a little issue on, on, on pit entry. We saw the uh, Maxim Brion Apex Racing Academy car come in, also short of that, uh, that top of the hour, but we knew that was going to happen on account of they were committed to a six stop but aggressive strategy. So they're going absolutely flat out the whole race, but taking that extra splash and dash. That's interesting. That's very interesting, especially in the BMW as well with its associated tyre issues. However, that said, if you can't make the tyre last, might as well just go go for it. Um, the one thing you can be sure is the teams will have simulated it, they'll have worked it out, and they'll have made their call on what they think will work best. Now, there won't be much that's a surprise uh, to them. Uh, oh, great one from uh, from Tim Perry in our, our uh, Racebot TV chat, David. He says that they should put the number plate to the side, like the Alpha 156. That's an excellent call. I think... Was that a swap of the uh, BMW Yes, it cars? was a swap of yeah. I believe that's the technical term, but this doesn't seem to be helping the two of them. This doesn't look like it's a formation flight. He didn't have much trust in his teammate dive bombing him back there, did he? <laughs> 46 is still ahead. Yeah, 46 pulls onto the racing line, 45 does as well. Sven Haase, Lucas Jestet. Uh, a combined 18,600 I rating, if you don't mind. Wow, that's quite remarkable, isn't it? And, well, our GT4 leaders just come in um, from... Oh! Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Well, he'll be spasming oh in his oh armchair dear. after that one. The two Beela teammates have collided. Oh, dear. Yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, Frank Beela would not be, not be impressed with that one. So, let's see what happens. Get a look at it then as well. So, Sven Hasse was, uh, appeared to be just a little bit flustered. And Let's see, does he light it up? on the rear or is it the 45 car kind of coming in yeah oh dear that's very very strange and that's well not strange just clumsy Lucas yes that will be yeah he he will not be popular right now in that Bela Ironics team room he'll be flashing his headlight at his teammate earlier hoping to yeah. get 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 cleanly past he thinks he sees a car whip down the inside and he rolls in a little hot and the two teammates collide both of them lose time. Um, Oops. I'm not sure either are going to protest each other. <laughs> I'm not sure that makes any sense. But, um, yeah. And then 46 has come into pit lane. And they will have to serve uh, their penalties at this one. This is right on cue, by the way, because they are just to that top of the hour, two hours into the race, four to go. So if you're trying to make it six even stints in a five-stop strategy, now is is A-OK. -okay. But we have seen some of these Porsches run it even a little bit longer, including MSI Esports, who's still leading Williams Esports, Ben Q, who we look at here. Made great gains from overcutting last time around, so they might aim to do that again. Car 96, BS Turner, uh... Uh, what, number, uh, BMW uh, Kai Kishube coming in and swapping to pole sitter Ruben Bonga going up on the jacks as well taking tyres uh, and pit stop time yeah just circling around uh, around about a minute which is yeah tyres tyres and fuel um, yeah just over a minute in the box so yeah just just exactly how what we would expect um, for that, so they, yeah, they're on course for the the five stop. But there seems to be a good mix, actually, uh, David, of uh, uh, five and six stoppers. It looks like Apex Racing Academy and uh, former race leader Riley Sim Racing. They're going for the the six stop, but sprint rather than the five block five stop marathon. I mean, you've seen it more noticeably in previous races but it's uh, it's again it's a GT3 fuel strategy question they do 58 minutes and some of the teams really wish uh, they'd do 60 
So do they strive for that at the expense of pace and track position? Or do they just push on flat out? And clearly that's a, um, a, a, a gamble but aggressive call from Relay and from uh, Apex Racing Academy that they've very early thrown in the towel on fuel saving and said no we're gonna we're gonna go for aggressive track position uh, we're gonna go for you know half fueling at one of the stops to try to be light and quick so we'll see who who's got the that conundrum right in just under four hours time we've hit one third distance here in round three of the 24 age series esports from the circuit of the Americas. Porsche Cup, well, the, the gap just continues to grow. I mean, Team 75 Bernhard are cruising right now. 27 seconds to the good for Jurgen Frank, who's just in the slot right now. And I guess when you built up this kind of lead early on, David, he doesn't need to take, or that car doesn't need to take the risks in traffic that the others do. They've got time in hand to play with. Sometimes, you know, when you're just that good, it, it, it makes everything look easy. It has a sort of a compounding effect where you get to pick and choose your, your fights and, and your battles and how much how much risk to take. And and then it you know, makes you look even smarter, even even quicker, even pacier. So uh, GT3 cars all starting to kind of take their stops now as well. MSI, we should see, and Sabelt are in as well. MSI, they took, yeah, they're they're leading at the moment on their 30th lap of the stint. Um, so we should see them in any moment now, but they're looking very good for that, uh, that five-stop strategy, our, our, as our Sebelt Porsche, Emanuele Petri in. I was about to say Emanuele Piro there. Oh, well, That's a that'd be an easy little slip of the tongue to, yeah. to make, and I don't think many people would be unflattered by the comparison. Oh, yeah, I certainly wouldn't be. I've never, funnily enough, uh, David, I've never been mistaken for Alan McNish when I'm driving, but I have been mistaken for Alan McNish behind the microphone many times. So that's not quite as much the, the compliment, but it's, it's not I'll bad. I'll take compliment. it. He's a very, very knowledgeable man with a lot of experience, so the fact that anyone would think that I'm... Yeah, I even sound it's like a lot of know what of racing too as well, you know, yeah. as, a, as a test driver and then a race driver in Formula One. And then obviously he's fantastic achievements in uh, world sports car racing and then also in, in, in Formula E. So all of those drastic, well, uh, many similarities, but also some drastic differences as, as disciplines of racing. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I, I'm not surprised he did well as a team manager with Formula E. I mean, I, I have no information to you know, to, to, to back up, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Audi select him for their, uh, to be the team principal of their F1 team. Um, I, I could really see that, I could see that happening, um, given the, the Audi Formula E team that he managed was very successful. I love their, their strategy at, uh, was, it, was it London? Where they, they were behind a pace car and they, they, they sent, the, they sent I think it was Julie, Julian Degrassi down pit lane. <laughs> And it would have worked it would, if it weren't for those pesky kids. No, uh, it would have worked if he hadn't sped in pit lane. But if he did, if he did done it, it would, he would have come out and in the lead. So look how long Williams Esports BenQ have been able to extend the fuel again in this stint. It's, you know, six minutes past the top of the hour. Here comes the uh, BS Competition car as well to make their second stop. Josh Anderson, my countryman. The man in the race with the second largest ping after the Hunkos racing driver. Quick thought from MSI. Of course, they were in the lane uh, first as well as the, as the leaders. So it's actually going to be a very comfortable five stops for, for these set of teams. They're even going to have to start thinking about 
you know, how short they have to fuel at the at the final time through, and if they, uh, yeah, what, what what that ends up doing for them on tyres. I can tell you that after that stint, it was tyres for MSI Esports for Williams Esports BenQ. So they've doubled the first time out. So I expect we'll see them double again and then double home. So three sets of tyres for the race uh, in GT3. And of course, with tyre changes, often comes driver changes. Interesting one, the BS competition, number 89, have taken less tyres. Either that or they've short fueled. Um, and they're going to go for a six-stop strategy because, oh, and they're really getting thrown into traffic as the 89 car here. But, yeah, they, they were in the pit box for 20 seconds less than everybody else who's taken on a full, full tank of fuel and four new tyres. So they've done one of two things, David. They've either filled up the fuel and taken only two tyres, which I doubt would be the case with a BMW, or they've uh, short-filled and taken four tyres. I think that's fuel only. Uh, fuel in one tire for the 89 there. I, I, I don't... Let me look if Anderson started this race, but I think they might have taken four tires at the... No, four tires at the first stop on that car. Hang on. What's the I think they took now? two tires on the first stop, but uh, maybe that's... They're, they're playing some playing some strategical games. Uh, unless they feel like... Uh, they've, 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 I don't yeah. know. That's very difficult. So, Kvernbach started that car, drove the first hour and then Anderson's been in the second hour and has now stayed in so um, sure. they have gone a little off driver strategy compared to everyone else in GT3 how they've gone off tyre strategy we wait and see I think the pace will be definitely a, a interesting to watch here for them because that shorter stop has not really gained them any track benefit they're not they're not up there in the in the hunt uh for the podium yet they are with their team car though which might be helpful we're kind of marching through the field um always good to have a dancing partner if you if you can for especially a did that work for Biela, though it did no it did not uh but that was for other reasons <laughs> good point um but uh, yes yeah, you're so not going to be uh, inviting Hasa or um Yestat to to dance with you um Maybe if it was like like a, a mosh pit, possibly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I think uh, Ruben Bonga, who of course set the qualifying pole, uh, is a good good uh, front runner here for uh, for George Anderson. Let's we'll keep an eye on these two zebra cars, see how they go. Uh, but it's MSI Esports Porsche from Williams Esports Porsche at the moment then it's a string of BMWs from Apex Racing Academy Bila Uronix number 45 and Riley Sim Racing number 83 remember you keep an eye on that 83 Riley Sim Racing car but for their strategy to work they kind of need to be up the front all day if they drop behind then they are stuffed about 10 laps away from pit stops in 992 uh, for, for most of the leading cars oh, they're, they're, they're all pretty close for your lead here I mean two seconds is gonna cover your your, your top f uh, not your top four but 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 from sort of second third fourth fifth here 75 burnout by CMRC are uh, looking very strong in this class but it is a flurry of activity uh, here it's Apex Racing Academy a second Sabelt third then championship leaders Visceral Esports in behind and the Dahl and Jonas Wallmeyer is driving the Urano 992 behind that as well what an incredibly successful endurance racing driver in iRacing he's been over the years certainly has been certainly has been Sim RC looking very nice at the moment at the front of TCR of course TCR's only one stop for those cars Sim RC taking on 
40, ah, taking on 46 seconds of pit stop and therefore of fuel. Uh, Ross McFarlane in the Sim, uh, Pure Sims Esports Honda took on 54 seconds. Interestingly, the Zenith car 47.9, but the Zenith cars dropped back a lot. Uh, Curiously, a uh, huge amount of time actually, 30 seconds back. So what happened to Zenith while we were off air? Or while we were having a, a, a pouring ourselves a cup of coffee? Well, last lap was two seconds off the pace for Ricardo Rico as well. So what happened there? Because they, they haven't lost the time in the pit stop. How weird. How odd, because their pit stop time, they were right there with uh, the Sim RC Honda. Did they have to serve a penalty? I don't think so, because then they would have been in the pit lane for a lot longer. Hmm. How odd. That's a strange one. That is a strange one then for Zenith Esports as the number 421 McDonald's Mercedes comes down into pit lane for service in GT4. That class at the moment being led by Mevano Corsa GT4, Tommaso Carla at the front of the field at the moment. The 421 car, Martin Sirotek for CSRA is taking pit service. So it seems, David, you've been having a look at the, the Zenith car. We think it's it, simply in a matter of being on track for about 12 laps now. It's more a matter of pace than, than anything else. Let's uh, look at that live three-way battle before I uh, delve into the, the nerdery of the, the pit stop times. But uh, I'm just saying, Jonas Wallmeyer, uh, I was praising his ability in these endurance races. He has bitten off two McDonald's burgers in one bite just there. Uh, they're, if they're the 99p ones, then they're quite easy to take to two and a go. Yeah, so Urano Esports Heineken Media up into third. Sabelts uh, seem to be the losers out of that one as they drop back into fifth. But yeah, I mean, I, I can't see anything for Zenith. Um, other than, you know, they were doing two 17s in their first stint. And then they've had their driver change and they're doing two 19s. But by all accounts, Ricardo Rico should be a very competent driver over 7,000 I rating and I just re-watched their pit stop they definitely went up on the jacks to put new tires on so it wasn't a case of he somehow missed them or, or, or had a misstep in the in the pit stop so if we hear anything else from uh, you know Zenith Esports there could be something going on there otherwise it it, it seems like the the thing we don't see so much in this style of endurance racing where there is maybe just a more noticeable difference in speed from driver A to driver B. Well, certainly Corentin Guinness, he stayed on board uh, in the uh, leading CMRC car. So I do wonder then, yeah, I mean, if, if they've been on track for since the pit stops for 15, 16 laps or so, and yeah, 30 seconds the gap, two seconds per lap, there, there it goes. So yeah, it just shows you if you, if you back off for any, or if you can't match the pace at any point in the race it's uh, you will be punished this is a super battle for third in the Porsche Cup category Irana Esports leading the way from Asetek Sim Sports Sabel Esports in there as well very exciting it's Jonas Wallmeyer leading from Anders Dahl and Guilhem Egloff and of course Anders Dahl had to pull out a, 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 a real clutch lap to, to get the car, get that Atatec machine up the grid order, but he did so. Exciting battle as they have to negotiate a little bit of traffic of the Pure Sims GT4 and look at Atatec Sims Sports Visceral being thinking, you know, I can't get past this car here, but what I am going to do is park it so that Sabelt don't try to seize that hesitation, that moment. Uh, that opportunity. So that's clever defensive driving uh, in in that. You had an even stronger reaction to it than I did, so you'll be probably happy to know that the Pure Sims 992 did get 
penalised for an unsafe rejoin with the uh, kerfuffle that ensued between themselves and the GT3 leader. Penalty? Yeah, it was a big one. What was it, David? It was 30 seconds as a first penalty for a, an unsafe rejoin. Okay, so 30 seconds penalty for... Yeah, I think that's about, about right, I would say. Uh, it certainly p- compromised the, the 96's race remarkably, uh, it has to be said. The Apex Racing Academy car pushes on in second but has now got the attention of the Williams Esports Porsche driven at the moment by Moreno Sirica and Sirica last time by a lap time of 204.8 it was a 204 flat for Racim Fazui in the Apex Racing Academy car so fast lap last time by but yeah the Porsche looking ominous there in the background It's been so good uh, on its fuel and on its tyres at uh, Williams Esports BenQ car. A little yeah, bobble there from Urano though as they got in hot into the braking zone. Oh. Gotta choose your battles. Uh, choose how brave you want to be in a situation like this because Gully Megloff got a good good drive off the corner but, but knew the window was going to close and he didn't want to be the one to cause an incident this time. Yeah, you can see Gillian Egloff here can just play this one smart, let the guys in front of him just kind of figure it out. Just make sure that he's keeping this podium battle in touch. Maybe just save a little bit of fuel as well, just rolling the throttle a little bit more through the corners. And make, reduce the risk, let the cars in front take the risk. At this point he's seen the pace that Volmeyer has got in that car and might well be thinking, I'll, I'll go with that if I can. Um, because yeah. the sub up car was the car in third, so now the car in fifth. This is going to be a pressure moment again. They just let the traffic bring it all back to them. Yeah, Gailey Megloff trying to get a bit of a, a run here as well as the SMRC Aston gives room. And oh, and of course, that, that wasn't part of the deal. The overall race leader, oh, MSI Esports Porsche comes through and that just shuffles the pack once again. As they come through to the braking zone, this is going to be important into turn 11. We know how good the GT3s are on the brake, hard on the brakes they go. And uh, in fact, it wasn't the SMRC Aston, it was the Yunkos Aston that's uh, getting freight trained by these Porsches. But now this is a tough one for the MSI race leading Porsche is going to try and get in the slipstream of these Porsche Cup cars. As you can see, he's not really gaining anything, in fact, losing time on those slippery 992 machines, but then here comes the difference. Look at that difference on the braking. It's it's funny, isn't it? There's six hours of racing, but there is hundreds of hours of action because as we watch this, other drivers are you know having similar battles, similar. Uh, struggles with the traffic it doesn't look like it's been massively beneficial to MSI's pace to be doing what they're doing having to work their way through all this yeah MSI just uh, getting through as uh, leader in GT4 just come in Mercedes AMG Team Urano the uh, championship leader comes in to take service and SimRC Aston goes in to the lead temporarily. So GT4 battle raging on. And yeah, Rano, they'll be hoping to score another victory and put themselves in a handy championship lead. As you mentioned earlier, David, that with that 12-hour race at Catalonia uh, in round six, double points. Uh, of course, double length, double points. That you want to make sure you've got a buffer in there in case anything does 
go wrong in that last race. Just looking back at some of the best sectors, by the way, as you've seen the trouble that the GT3 leaders had trying to work his way through the very rapid in a straight line, uh, but not so quick in the corners, 992 cars. And the best third sector, which is from the braking zone at that hairpin down this straight to the next braking zone, uh, for the overall leader is 24 seconds. The best sector for the 992 leader 23.6 so the 992 cars which are four laps four seconds a lap slower are four tenths quicker through sector three of four around here and then they lose the rest of the time mainly in the final sector a little bit in the first sector uh, but but are quicker across the 24 seconds of of, of that sector it's insane yeah, you wonder with the, the traffic just how, how it can just cause such problems as uh, yup, the light is now on board for Urano Esports Mercedes GT4 machine um, for in the fight for the GT4 class victory. Apex Racing Academy is shuffling through traffic as well. Just pull these just as uh, MSI got caught up in that little phase of traffic, pulled a, just a, a second or so back to the leading Porsche and Apex Racing Academy now just putting a little bit of time in to the, oh, the Williams Porsche who makes a late move there on the Sebel, Sebel Porsche Cup car and gets through but this has been a great start to the race for the 98 of uh, for Apex Racing Academy started by Maxime Brion now Racim Fizoy doing a super job moment of hesitation with the traffic though and he knows they're in a good position he knows he's got to be so careful because the punishment does fit the prime if you go and nerf off uh, one of the other cars from a different class yeah and it, it's uh, yeah I can't um, you will re have really str really struggled to come back from that I think we've seen several teams who have had to have served penalties it's really taken them out of the running I mean we know the 46 car uh, the Bila Uronics team. Now have they served their penalty, Bila Uronics? Number 46. Great question. Yes, all of them. They have. Okay, so they're, they're, but they're 47 seconds back of the lead. That's going to take a lot of work over it. And you know, we're getting towards half race distance now. That's a lot of work to recover. But you know what? Since they served the 25 seconds of penalties, They've been given another um, as the stewards work their way through all of the protests. There was such a flurry of protests uh, at the start of the race that the most recently completed review is from 54 minutes into the race. So there is a little maybe hour and a half backlog in some of these that are still just coming through for people who were very naughty in the first hour of the race. And it's another 25 to the 46. As their third penalty within the dive bomb category. Well, that's, uh, that's gonna hurt. That's for sure. Driver changes going on here in the pits in the Porsche Cup category. Julien Meglov getting out. Matthias Luchik getting in the Sabel car, Anders Dahl getting back into the Asetek car. It looks like he's staying, I think. Ah, I thought he was going for a change there, but uh, well, that's a, that's a bit of a, that's certainly a mammoth stint there for, for Anders Dahl. He's had lots of driving today in that 996 yeah, car. V Vince Peters opened uh, the ah, race okay. for that team. So this is just this looks like staying in for the second stint for uh, for Anders Dahl. I see. I see. So that's, uh, of course, it was Dahl who qualified, wasn't it? That's where I'm getting myself mixed up. Uh, MSI plugging on at the front in their Porsche. And Apex Racing Academy are getting closer. 
they're getting much closer. Three and a half seconds now is the gap there. Uh, it's the MSI car just coming up against a little bit of traffic and haha, there's a uh, Apex Racing Academy Porsche Cup machine and just holding, holding their light. And our leader in Porsche Cup is now in to the pits. Team 75, Bernard by Sim RC. They've been utterly dominant all day uh, today. And into the pits they come. Jurgen Frank, job done. A double stint, two and a half hours of racing, plus the qualifying. And who will he hand over to? And Jurgen Frank has certainly done his job in that car. I'd say so, as, as dominant a lead as, as anyone has in any class. Only, uh, only thing close is their teammates uh, with their TCR lead at the moment. It's close for GT3 in closing, and it's close for GT4 and closing as well. It certainly is, yeah. There's two Mercedes, Mivano course, and Pure Sims here. They're uh, yeah, just got this very slight. They're on their towards the end of their stint now, so they might well drop back uh, into once they make their stops. Oh, little touch and go moment there. And the, the man we spoke to after qualifying, who wasn't the qualifying driver, is the driver now driving the 416 Ian Cardinal Renard. But, uh, he's had a little little touch and go moment trying to stay with the race lead. I'm going to have a look at it from a different angle. So that's Carbon Simsport, I believe. Oh, okay. It's actually the SRC car, Lorenzo Manfredotti. That's just a tiny little, uh, little tweak. Yeah, Carbon Simsport car kind of been bashed around a little bit today. Oh yeah, that's that's the yeah, Mivano car just getting way too deep and nothing the Carbon car could do to avoid it. Life in the TCR getting pogoed about. So uh, sometimes it's all right, sometimes it's it's not, but they do live a little bit of a punching bag kind of life, unfortunately. They do have the lowest insurance premiums, though. Mm. Do they? <laughs> Road cars, yeah, they would. We, we saw their turning circle demonstrated, ah. and it was, well, it was tough, but I still think probably the easiest to get into a car park, you know, to, to pick up your shopping. Definitely. Definitely. Going to be easier than, than one of those big Mercedes anyway, that's for sure. Whoa! There's the Williams Esports and Wave Italy getting a little bit of a sh shuffle around with uh, one of the other Porsche Cup machines. Yeah, the Williams Esports uh, car uh, on its outlet okay. there, so appearing from... Yeah, appearing from the pit lane in front of these two competitors. And we know, um, you know, you get fed out of the pit lane, you go uphill, and then there's a big squeeze towards the apex there, and they avoided too much of carnage or stress or damage. But then look, so, the, 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 the cold tyres, how tough they are on this car, how much they've gapped the Williams uh, Kamil Grabowski on this lap. He's like, e what? We can't even see him there no more. Yeah, it, it certainly is. It's always the case in endurance racing. The uh, the tyres are designed to, to run long periods of time, but therefore they they do take a little bit more time to bring up the bring up the temperature, bring the heat into them, and therefore when they're not at their operating temperature, they're, they're they aren't working. It's uh, it's simple as that, folks. And oh, it's the Fordzilla GT4 machine getting in about there. Uh, <laughs> trying to maintain its own lap time whilst being passed by the uh, faster Porsche Cup car traffic. Three and a half hours to go here and Habu sitting in second in the Porsche Cup category. However, they are due a stop. They're right at the end of their stint. So 
actually your effective second place car in the Porsche Cup category is Apex Racing Academy. They're about 27 seconds back from the leader. So I have to say, I, I did not expect such dominance in the Porsche Cup category, but Team 75 Bernard, they've been just superb. Yeah, put up one of those, you know, wet floor warning signs because they are wiping the floor with everyone at the moment. But a lot can happen and a lot out of your out of your hands, out of your own direct control can happen. Well, interestingly, Jurgen Frank is carried on. So he's going for another stint uh, here. So he's done the qualifying and the first well, what will be three stints of the race. So who is waiting in the wings there in the Team 75 Bernard garage to take over from, from Jürgen Frank? they got two options, which are Bram van Putin or Marvin Strel. And I think during the week on Twitter, I saw a graphic that suggested Marvin Strel, but I can't remember. All I remember is photoshopping a picture of a weight rack with 45 kilograms on the roof of this car, the GT3 machine. <laughs> I see. <laughs> uh, well, it doesn't seem to be holding the uh, holding them back too much because MSI Esports leading the race overall in the Porsche 911 GT3R. However, Apex Racing Academy are closing them in. Racim. Uh, Fizzoy doing a stellar, stellar job in that Apex Racing Academy BMW and uh, yeah, it really is game on at the front of GT3. Lucas De Vries in the Team 75 Bernard GT3R. Uh, that car Have is you... looking progressively better stop by stop but still not at best. That's what I was just thinking because you, you remember when that thing didn't have uh, a front oh, bumper or, or bonnet on it and now it's got a crinkled and bent bonnet on it and I always think you know if, if it's lost it and that has to new put one, one on. back on why is it a crinkled one on oh, does, does, did a new one not fit hmm yeah good point yeah I, you would think the They've got a pretty good button operating Surely budget, it's more think. effort to um, get out a hammer, damage a, a bonnet, and then fit it, than to just put a fresh one on. Quite possibly. Quite possibly. Maybe Again, well, I mean, that's maybe going in our email to um, Mr. Myers. Mm. Could be. I wonder how many emails he gets with suggestions in a week. I reckon... Um, I reckon Dale Jr., you know, has a, a couple cheeky midweek drinks and at 2 a.m. decides he'll type up one to, to his buddy Steve Myers with whatever suggestions at the top of his mind. That would be that would be quite quite interesting. Do you think uh, does uh, Dale Jr. does he do you think he frequents the the road racing world much or do you think he sticks to sticks to oval? Didn't he do the 24? in a Corvette with his dad one time? He did, absolutely he did, yes, yes he did, uh, C5. Um, it was a very, uh, sadly very shortly before his dad passed away. Um, the car caught on fire, didn't it? Oh, pass, I, I, don't, I don't recall. Um, I do remember his dad catching, I do remember a story about his, uh, when Jordan Taylor, current Corvette factory driver, came on to the Dale Jr. Download, very popular uh, podcast. And they were talking about when uh, Dale Jr. was talking about when he did uh, the uh, 24 Hours of Daytona in the Corvette with his dad, and uh, he was there with one of his friends, and they were having a, they were having a cigarette, and uh, of course it was, you know, when you're an athlete, you probably shouldn't be smoking cigarettes, but he, uh, <laughs> his dad, Dale Senior, caught him with, uh, you know, the, the the Corvette drivers, they often have like a little kind of like air, like a, a little kind of gap in the helmet where the drink tube can go in. Well, he'd like taken that out and put a lit cigarette in there, so he was like walking around with his helmet on with the cigarette hanging out, and uh, his dad caught him, and his dad was not very happy. 
with you. Oh, good question from Tim Perry coming in from uh, on our Racebot TV uh, live chat. Uh, what are commentators' favourite liveries, or do we have to be impartial? Well, we, if, if we choose out with of this race, we, we, we can choose who we like, can't we? Yeah, I think so. You go first. Thanks. Um, the OG SimRC um, black and yellow, which I think is only on their... No, sorry, it's on their GT4 and their TCR car, just not on their... Their, their Porsches in the top two divisions. So CMRC split across all four categories. Um, that is four pies to have fingers in. But they're uh, the GT4 and the TCR. Just a classic, strong look, nice colours. That's a good choice. Well, so that's a yes. Yeah, so you you have gone in this race. I think. Hmm. I think, I, 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 do you know what I quite like is the, uh, yeah, this, the, I do like this one, the Team 75 Bernard, it's very cool, the uh, blue and red, it's very nice, oh, also sponsored by a very generous man called Paul, as you can see, um, yeah. although he hasn't given enough budget to pay for a new front bumper, obviously, um, what a bit that moment is very leery, very oversteered from Team 75 Bernard by CMRC, and it loses them the position off track, but I, I, I think they were halfway through that corner, and the, the camber, the load got to it, and they had to, to correct, open up the course, and test them on that. I wonder if the balance is even worse because of that. Yeah, it, it can't be handling perfectly. Uh, I had a big thump to the wall. Um, it will be getting better each pit stop that they take, but yeah, not an easy day at the office. I tell you, what, one livery that I, is a big favourite of mine this year, uh, David, is the uh, is the blue, blue, white, and black um, Porsche 911 GT3 R that was built for by Emotion Engineering for Pikes Peak, driven by Rhys Millen, uh, and it was uh, designed by a guy called Wade Devers. Very, very cool. Livery, and uh, yeah, that would that would be my pick at the moment. Look it up, right? And that Emotion Engineering 911 GT3 R, Reese Millen. I watched the onboard. It's you just, it's just unfathomable. This car, well over a thousand horsepower. Nice. Yeah, of course. At, at that altitude, everything is cool. So very true. <laughs> very true. Very true. So, three hours and 20 minutes to go here in the third round of the 24H Series Esports Championship. And MSI Esports lead the way, but now only by 1.2 seconds. So, the gap is coming down at the front in GT3. GT4, equally close, SRC Mivano lead from Pure Sims at the moment. And looking at the... Yeah, they're in the middle of their stint, so that is on merit uh, for those two outfits. So Mivano leading from Pure Sims at the moment. But that GT3 battle is kind of, it's really going to come to a point very soon, I think, David. 20 minutes until the kind of pit window comes back open again. And yeah, Apex getting closer and closer all the time. Yeah, they are. They've got great car speed, absolutely undeniable. Uh, that, but the the strategy is what I'm not I'm not sure about because they're absolutely committed to a six stop at at this point. So it it all looks great now um, and great car speed, but there will come a time towards the tail of this race where they do have to uh, pay that debt. Yeah, you can't escape it. You can't escape it. MSI. Yeah, I wonder if MSI maybe just keeping that in mind. They've got not a mark on the car at the moment. Uh, Apex Racing Academy, they've got a little bit of battle rush, but nothing too much to be concerned about yet. And 
yeah, great stuff from Apex Racing Academy. Whatever the strategy, their pace has been superb. Past the TCR car they go and right on, right on the case now. That must be a really quick lap here from Racine Fizoy. Yeah, seven tenths of a second he took out of the MSI eSports car of Danny Elgarbay last time by. So David, you got some news on a disqualification for one of our cars. Tell us about it. Yeah, well, I was uh, hesitant to get to this until we had the, the facts, but it's rare that you see, um, you know, a car completely black flagged, removed from the race, it, it appears, but it's for some apparently very severe uh, act, of, act of retaliation. That be the one of the ATRS 992s, the um, number 913, having apparently quite a strong disagreement with the GT4 car. Okay, so a sensitive let's... disposition. Look away now. Okay, so there's been one contact here then with the 913 as clattered into the back of the Torque Freak Mercedes GT4. Caleb John Lavender driving the ATRS Porsche. And uh, one hit, two hits, three hits, four hits. Oh dear, that's poor. That's really, really poor there. So. Yeah, this will give us a bit, maybe a bit impression of what kind of happened. Uh, oh. Did you? I didn't see anything that suggested the GT4 shouldn't have tried to take the corner there. No, they've got to. They're just driving along doing their own thing, and yeah, it just. Uh, let's have another look at it as well and see if we can get a better impression. Caleb I mean, John this doesn't, doesn't tell us anything. Um, yeah, there's the, there's the move. He's turning the wheel to the right and it's a left-hand corner. Yeah, that's pretty cut and shut. That's appalling. And race control, take action. DQ, out the race. Simple. Very simple. And that graphic is... Um, raw. It's incorrect. Is it's not Anton... <laughs> not Anton... Lachar... Lacharit. Caleb John Lavender. This will just give us an impression from Caleb's point of view. He's coming in way too fast into that corner. It was always going to close in front of him, and I don't know what the hell he thinks he's doing here. And it's when the wheel is turning to the right as you're entering a left-hand corner. It's pretty cut and shut, uh, really. And yeah, the organisers have done the right thing to put him out the race. And luckily, the Torque Freak car has been able to continue. Who are probably a little bit confused what, it, what the fuss is all about. Smoke in the air, and it's your championship leader, Anders Dahl, and that's the Tech Team Sports Visceral winners last time out in this category at Spa, and they've gone for a loop in the final sector here. Big traffic, they're trying to pass the TCR, they know there's a GT3 down the inside, that's the race leaders, the TCR goes off the circuit, so does a GT4, and then... Oh, get the Apex Academy GT3 car there clatters into the back. So let's get a look at this again. So, MSI, your race leader, they're up ahead. They escape. So there they go. They're gone. They're going off. Oh, maybe see you later. Porsche Cup car is about to go in. The Aztec car about to get hit by the TCR. Bang, bang. Oh, so Rafim Fezui, he did have a little bit of battle rash on the car already. Oh, that's going to add some more. And that just lets MSI off the hook a little bit, David. Yeah, it sure does. There'll be a couple of people not entirely happy with that. Anders Dahl, one of them, who... It, it looks like thought he had the right to claim the next corner, given that the the TCR had 
run off the road. But, um, TCR then decided it was holding the apex, and I thought the first time we've seen cars try to go too wide through there, and it just be a little, little clumsy, and the car on the outside, you know, think they're giving lots of space to the inside, but still somehow manage to touch the car on the, uh, on the inside. For both parties, it's not easy to judge at all. So the Riley BMW make a move here through a bit of traffic, trying to get by the Sim RC Aston Martin. The Team 75 Bernard Porsche in there too. This is towards the back end of the top 10 in GT3. Yep, 8th and 9th. Riley in 8th. Team Bernard in 9th. And, oh, the Bernard car just gets caught through those S's. If you get caught in those S's in a GT3 car, you lose so much time because it's all about aerodynamic grip through those corners and the GT3 simply just has way more of it. Look at the gap there, pull out, massive amount. It gets out to 1.6 seconds, doesn't it? Yep, just like that, just in the blink of an eye. Big credit to Fasim Erathim Fizoi because he's not letting that incident get him down at all. He's back on the power again and chasing down the MSI Porsche. Nothing he could have really done about that. All the incident happened in front of him. There was nowhere to go, but he's put, him, put his head down. And uh, yeah, sometimes a driver with a bit between their teeth can really drag out that extra 1% of pace. And yet again, look at this MSI caught right behind the Apex Academy Porsche Cup car. And I'm sure he... Oh, doesn't let his team go, teammate go. Okay. Uh, will do this time, I'm sure. Yeah, and R Rathim Fazui is now right on the back for the overall lead. Good to see the Torque Freak GT4 carrying on after that bizarre piece of aggression from John Caleb Lavender. And... Yeah, still still going. But this is your own battle for the overall lead after two hours and 50 minutes of racing. That uh, Merc GT4, it seems to be built very strong. Yeah. That's a, that's a, yeah, a, good, a good ad. Now, both these teams, though, have pitted twice. MSI Esports are going to need three more to get to the chequered flag. Apex Racing Academy are going to need four more stops to get to the chequered flag. So, MSI are clever. They'll, I'm sure, have done exactly the same numbers that I've uh, arrived at, and probably even better, because they're not going to be worrying about what's happening in 992, what's happening in GT4, what's happening in TCR like we are. Their focus is going to be solely on the people they're racing in GT3. So they'll know what the strategy is, what, what game is afoot, that they uh, don't need to battle too hard uh, with Apex Racing Academy. If MSI back in their own strategy is the right one, then they'll, they'll believe they still have the upper hand in the long run and to the end of the race for the win here. So it's going to rage on then between MSI and Apex Racing Academy. The gap at the front of the 992 class, well, continues to rage on. It's now up to half a minute before we've even reached half race distance. Quite remarkable. In GT4, well, SRC Mivano, of course, lead by just half a second from Pearson, so it's very, very tight there in GT4. Meanwhile, SimRC lead by 20 seconds in TCR. That gap's come down a little bit, I think. The Pearson's Honda of uh, Ross McFarlane just closing a little bit of gap into Quentin Guinness. Lucas Gabler in the growling Aston Martin Vantage. Fifth position trying to get fourth place here from the CSRA by Entropic Machine as the Abu Porsche TT3R swoops around the outside. some slightly fluffier penalty news. Go on. At our first time penalty for 50 
track limit abuses. Wow, already? Yeah, not even wow. at the halfway point of the race. 50 of them. Um, and it belongs to the uh, 933 of SRC Movano Corsa Porsche Cup. And don't put all the blame on the driver who's in the car right now, but it's Andrea Barillaro driving at the minute. Who else has been in that car? I'm going to have a, a look. So that then means then that it's a... Uh, yeah, so they get a drive-through penalty yeah. for that. It's a, it's a stop and go uh, to... You know, it's, uh, it's 25 penalty. seconds, just like all the other penalties in the penalty box. So, yeah, not good. But, uh, oh, not good. So you've got to drive through pit lane, take a 25-second no. stop. That's very damaging. So... We wonder then with your next pit stop. Yeah, Just like every other twenty-five second penalty. Ah, right. Yes, correct. Of course. Um, so 20, uh, 25 seconds in the pit box. Oof, that's uh, in the penalty box. Excuse me. That's uh, quite significant. So I wonder then. They are, they can't be the only one. I mean, because you get twenty-five off tracks is you get a warning, and then another twenty-five is when the penalty comes in. They can't be the only one, especially with three hours uh, down, three hours still to go. Yeah, they weren't even the first team to get the warning for 25. That was the number 178 TCR car, which is... Uh, 178. Uh, I don't see a 178. Ah, oh, that's the Manini car that's incorrectly numbered. Ah, that uh, which they were penalised for. So that's a 48. They're out of the race, it seems. Um, they've parked up. So we have, yeah, we have a, quite a few retirements. We've, already, we've got Altus Esports Porsche GT3R out of the race. ATRS Esports, uh, number 913 of Kale John Lavender. They're disqualified. Uh, oh, shame! Tort Freak Racing by TFR Lab. Their Mercedes. they they've been taken out the race, uh, or or they they have retired. One of the two. Ford uh, Miniti uh, TCR. We knew that. And Daniel Ferguson, the Pure Sims Porsche. That car, of course, was the. Now, was that the car that had the penalty for track limits? Sorry, which who? What? The nine one six Pure Sims Esports. No, that was the car that had the penalty for the unsafe rejoin. Ah, okay, well, it, it, it's showing us out. Now, Torque Freak are showing us back in the race again. Uh, it's a glitch on the timing screen as well, but they are, they've are they had to stop for significant uh, repairs, it seems, so that hit from Caleb John Lavender appears to have spoiled the race. on the outlet now with anti Selman and aren't they? Am I going to be made to eat a little bit of crow um, about this, about Apex Racing Academy? Are they gonna, gonna, gonna work back to the top of the hour? Well, and, 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 and do this race on only five stops? Well, their pit stop was pretty much the same time, give or take a couple of seconds, as the leading MSI car. Um, and, yeah, they're... Mm, well, they, they are, although they did pick five laps earlier than MSI, but MSI are looking very good in terms of that to the hour. So they go around for another stop, another lap. So Rathim Fazoy goes another two minutes around, then takes a pit stop, then, do you know, I think they might actually be back in the window, you know. Um, it's been a superb drive from Rafim. Really putting quite a lot of pressure now on the leading MSI Porsche of Danny Elgarbay. And is this going to come down to tyres and how many tyres are required to fit 
of course any tyres that are fitted have to be done separately to the fuel so any tyres you fit it takes more time and is it going to be that the BMW eats its tyres more than the Porsche does or have Apex Racing Academy got a setup on the car that negates that we shall see that's the questions that will be answered in the next three hours as we approach uh, half race distance one of the teams are unfortunately missing uh, Koana Gaming they had some crazy setup at, at Sebring where uh, they were doing exactly the same lap times on their third stint as they were on their first um, so they had really I think optimised in that direction kind of to the detriment of their, their one lap one lap pass so it's 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 possible so interestingly they're into the braking zone Rathim Fazui di dipping the clutch uh, trying to coast into the braking zone trying to reduce the amount of throttle input and therefore save fuel uh, so Rathim Fazui maybe just trying to play himself into the same strategy as the MSI car because clearly this Apex Racing BMW has got serious pace certainly in Rathim Fazui's hands but does it have the lasting fuel mileage to make it work there's the pit stop but do you know what David 3 hours 2 minutes 25 to go he's certainly getting closer to that window yeah it's uh not bad is it the, yeah he's getting the there the thing i can say to that is that obviously they've still got to fill five more laps of fuel maybe six than than msi than uh williams esports benq who were in third um for this phase of the pit stop so having gone much longer early on the short fill for these porsche teams is coming later we know that apex racing academy have already um eaten that uh, that that cookie from the jar. Mm. Well, we'll see how it shuffles out as we approach half race distance. One one uh, race that's proving very much one sided at the moment is the uh, Porsche Cup category. Uh, Thirty one seconds the gap now between Team Seventy Five Bernard and Apex Racing Academy. Rathim Frizoy takes. Uh, takes his service and gets back out. Not a surprise at all that the Apex Racing Academy team have left him in the car. He's driving brilliantly and looks like just a fuel only stop there. Yep, I agree with that. Fuel only. So how does their pace go on this second stint with those tyres is also the question. GT4 providing the action that it's, that it's known for here. Very few Astons in this category, but uh, I, I happen to like it. I happen to like it. I do. I think the Aston's a nice, uh, nice car to drive as well. Uh, it's got good. Uh, seems to have good straight line speed. Um, nice and nice and predictable car as well. I would say. I haven't driven the Merc yet. Have you, David? Uh, no. In I fact. Think. I think when I go to join these race sessions as a spectator, the only car on the grid in this race that I own is the 992 Porsche Cup car. So at some point, if they move on from that, I'll, I'll have to buy something just to be able to spectate. <laughs> uh, so, so, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, I've tried the, the Mercedes is the only GT4 car I haven't tried yet. I must have been its next test drive. I, I must have, have a go and see what it's like. Uh, unsurprisingly, as you imagine, I'm, uh, I like the uh, the Cayman GT4, actually. It's a lovely balance, but you, uh, you do get pulverised on the straight by these, uh, these uh, dragsters. Um, only to make it up on the brakes. It's, uh, it's good fun. It makes for great racing, actually. I really enjoy the GT4 racing. Such variety as well. Of course, got the McLarens in there as well. So, we'll, we'll have to wait a couple of laps, maybe another 10 minutes or so, before we kind of get an impression on where Apex Racing Academy fit into this battle here in GT3. Strained, 
strained European relations in this GT4 battle. The, um, the checks of CSRA by Entropic coming under pressure from the Germans of SimRC. And the uh, looks all Italian lineup of Sabelt Esports applying the, the burner from the back. Well, of course, Aston Martin and uh, AMG, they only get closer uh, in so many ways. Of course, sharing, uh, they share, I say they share, Aston use Mercedes engines uh, in their road cars. They use a lot of Mercedes switch gear and sat navs and all the kind of, you know, uh, what's the word, infotainment and that kind of thing. So, yeah, there is a lot of Mercedes AMG DNA that goes into these Astons these days. I mean, if there was one complaint about, you know, older generation Aston Martins, it was that their gearboxes, infotainment and switches were too reliable. The Aston Martin ones were. Mm. Mm, yeah. So, uh, yeah, changing those particular bits up for uh, Mercedes-Benz developed units and keeping the things people actually enjoy about owning an Aston Martin, like looking at it, um, s- s- sounds smart to me. Because, gosh, it's been a while since they came out with an ugly car. You'll always have an excuse to wear a tuxedo. It's like, I'm just going out to uh, the supermarket. I'll just put my tuxedo on and pretend that James Bond. It wouldn't be for me. I have to say, I, I didn't, nah, I would, it wouldn't, wouldn't be for me. I do like the, the Mercedes. It's a cool car. The, the AMG GT, it, it, it looks really cool, especially in Black Series form. It's, it's crazy because, you know, in pictures and, you know, here, you're like, okay, right? But then I was, uh, yeah, I, I saw one go past on the road and I just, like, watched it go past. And I was like, it's just, on the road, just got so much presence and, 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 and well proportioned. It just never seems to come across in pictures of it stand alone. But when it's on the road next to yeah, a Honda Civic and whatever the hell is selling as a crossover these days oh. suddenly it does in it's that context on, 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 on a you know, random street on your commute you're like wow uh, so yeah yeah I think I think you're right I think it looks spectacular on the, on, on the street it's, uh, I was never crazy yeah. for it until I saw one like on, on, on the streets you know in, in motion in, in that environment and it, and it looked amazing Sounds good so, too. Oh, there go the Italians for pit lane because I was going to put to you that Czechs followed by German followed by Italian is also the order in which I would drink their beer. Uh, uh, Czechs followed by um, yeah, I'd probably I'd go with that. Yeah, uh, have we got any Belgians? They would be at the front for me. I'm I'm a big Belgian beer fan actually. Yep, that'd be a popular, uh, popular, and well shared opinion, I, I think. Any, any, any particular favourites? See what you've been enjoying recently. Oh gosh, if I say the Germans will, the Germans will come for me. But um, I've been drinking Ertinger. Ah, I, I, I'm a big fan of Saint Barnabas, especially the Saint Barnabas Twelve, with the blue label and the very happy-looking monk on the front of it. That's a, that's a winner. I really like that. Also, quack. Although I do feel a little bit like a jelly baby after a after a bottle of that. My lovely wife actually brought me back a a, a seventy five uh, cl bottle of quack uh, the other day, and uh, I, I finished it over the course of the evening, and I did feel a bit like a jelly baby. Yes. We, we've got to deliver some kind of po- positive message you know, on this platform, I'm sure. Yes. Yes, take your time. <laughs> uh, enjoy, but take your time. Uh, so, MSI Esports leading the way by 6.2 seconds. However, they are about to come in for a stop, as are 
the 55 Williams Esports Porsche. These uh, Porsches have been really frugal today compared to the BMWs. Um, I, I, I think fuel economy wise, they've both been pretty similar because BS competition in third are on the same laps, same uh, fuel extension as, as, uh, as everyone else. It's just a matter of the tires, I think, where the, yeah, the, the right, Porsches actually. look like it saved them a little better. And we did see two BMW teams choose to go off strategy and off cycle early. It's flash your headlights in the final sector day, SimRC and our, uh, our, our TCR friends. That was the Aspar uh, on the TCR. It's got a huge amount of damage on the front right, so it's been a problem there. For sale, Honda Civic, one careful owner, only driven on Sundays. Yes, never driven in the rain, that's another one. I, do, I, that, I, I never, ever, ever believe that in, a, in an advert. It's like, never driven in the wet. It's like, that's an absolute lie. This is the United Kingdom. And also if that referring, were true, there'd be no miles on the odometer. None, exactly. Also, uh, I don't know if this is a thing in Australia, David, but certainly in the UK, every single, you know, business that happens to retail cars, whether they be new, used or otherwise, has to refer to every single car, no matter what it is, whether it's a Ferrari or a Dacia, it's all, every single one referred to as stunning. Everything is stunning. Oh, this is a stunning example. It's like you are, oh, it's the most overused word in all retail, stunning. See, if, if, uh, if a Dacia Sandero is stunning, then I suspect something's gone wrong with the heated seats, and that's what's zapping you. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's incredibly, it, it, it annoys me. I mean, uh, a bright pink. Lamborghini is stunning. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's like, wow, that is quite eye-catching. But uh, uh, a, a hearing aid brown Dacia is, or hearing aid brown Volvo, for that matter, is is not. Um, anyway, Simone Passoni in the pits, and our leader in, Danny Elkerbay, brings the MSI Porsche in for a pit stop, as does the Williams Esports BenQ team, uh, Moreno Sirica, bringing in that car ready for action again two hours 51 minutes to go and where are we looking tcr wise what has happened to sim rc have they taken an early stop yes they're in the pit lane so our tcrs are coming in for their second round of pit stops past the halfway point so then they'll have one more after this they're sort of Comfortably doing a little more than 90 minutes, which is a, a nice way to divide a six-hour race in four. But uh, it's a pretty well a three-stop race for all. So Nathan Ames on board the SMRC Honda now. Quentin Guinness has done his job, put the car on pole, led away throughout the first half of the race. And it's now over to... Nathan Ames to see what he can do. Pure Sims, they've kind of spread spread it out a little bit more. As uh, Ross McFarland in that car at the moment, number one one six, running the race number of team owner Ash Sutton. That's the car he runs on his British touring car. Apart from when he's won the championship, then he puts a one on it. But uh, if he hasn't won the championship for the year before, it's one one six. You'll see all of them uh, ending in 1 6, so 9 1 6, 4 1 6, 4 1 7, and 1 1 6. Uh, we'll give them uh, a free kick to... on the 1 7. Yeah. Aha! So Steen Ledger now hops on board to take over from Ross McFarlane Pearsons, just like Sim RC, in fact. They're kind of, I would say they're the two leading TCR teams uh, on the iRacing platform at this stage and they had an amazing battle in the uh, World Touring Car Series which we broadcast here on Racebot TV the Drivers' Championship going the way of Sim RC but the uh, the Teams' Championship that went right down to the wire that actually went the way of Pure Sims so 
it was uh, very tightly contested and that's going to play out over the course of the next 2 hours and 49 minutes to see who takes the silverware here today. So I think that means we've had the most recent pit stops from everyone in GT3. We've still got a couple of cars on their outlap, like the 89 BS competition. Felix Fernbach has taken that one back. And the Team 75 Bernhard car out on the lane, uh, out uh, on track again. And uh, hopefully a little tidier than last time we saw it, but I'm not sure they make any any guarantees of that. And it's going to be spicy for that race lead again. I think MSI Esports. Have they gone just a tiny bit short on their fuel at this stop? Or am I seeing the number wrong? Because once again, they're back within a second of Apex Racing Academy. Mmm, I wonder. I wonder. MSI. Let's have a look. Yeah, absolutely identical times for in the pit uh, pit stall for MSI and Apex Racing Academy. So they kind of go back into battle at the, as they were again with the... I think MSI Esports now are just simply covering off uh, Apex Racing Academy um, and knowing that they can short fill on that last, last, last stop by five laps worth, which is quite a lot here at uh, Circuit of the Americas. So Apex Racing Academy, they've got to they've got to do a kind of balancing act here, I guess, David. They've got to keep pace with MSI, but actually save five laps of fuel over the next two hours and 46 minutes or so. Yeah, and of course it takes 40 seconds to put 30 laps of fuel in the car. So you can kind of use that that number that each extra lap that you're going to have to fuel up is going to cost you 1.2 seconds or so uh, in the pit stall so it's kind of a seven or eight second remaining um, fueling time delta between MSI Esports and, and Apex Racing Academy so even if they're a second apart on track I would still pencil into my strategy that MSI are kind of six or seven seconds ahead, adjusting uh, for that strategy. Question coming in from S on Zebra in our Racebot TV chat, uh, asking about the BMW M4 GT4. Uh, it, it's not that it's uh, it's not that it's slow. It's not actually an option at the start of the season. Uh, the teams are given an option of two cars: the Mercedes AMG GT4 or the Aston Martin AMR GT4. So that was your uh, your choice. So uh, front engine V8 or nothing uh, in GT4, and it certainly makes the balance of performance a little bit easier uh, for the organisers as well. But you can kind of choose your brand, which do you prefer. Uh, are you a Total Wolf fan or are you a Lauren School fan? You, you make your own mind up uh, for, for that one. So no option for the BMW GT4. However, in GT3, the uh, BMW M4 GT3, very much an option and very much in the hunt for this race win. So hope that answers uh, your question. S on Zebra. And any other questions, please do fire them in to the Racebot TV chat. Always good to hear from you. Or at Mackay Podcast on Twitter. Or at Mackay, or yes, yes. Indeed, I do, yeah, I need I need some Twitter followers. I, not not enough so I get a blue tick. I mean, I, I'll, I'm Scottish, I wouldn't want to pay the $8 or whatever it is a month that Musk's charging. Oh, big move there for MSI car. Getting past, ironically, the Apex Racing Academy Porsche Cup car, but... Uh, Yes, I do need I do need some love on Twitter, so that would be nice too. She's got six hundred and twenty-eight followers, so four hundred and something more than me, Chief. Oh, I'm I, I've uh, by no means I, I think I've, I'm followed by about two hundred, and then 
following about four thousand. <laughs> it's a busy, busy, twi- busy Twitter feed as well. Another question coming in from S on Zebra. Yes, Gearhead Twenty Five. We are reading the comments, but we uh, we can't do question time the whole way through. Uh, can you choose all the GT3 cars? Well, there is certainly a very big choice of GT3 cars on the iRacing platform. Uh, and the answer is no, you can't choose them all. Uh, in this uh, in this lineup, you have uh, the choice of the Porsche, the Lamborghini, or the BMW M4. The reason for that is, now, correct me if I'm wrong here, David, I think there is a limit of how many cars the iRacing simulator can handle. I think it's eight. And we're on that limit, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, I mean, in I total. remember back in the day when the, the limit of different car models that could race against each other was kind of three or four. Actually, I think it was five when I joined, and as the years have gone by, they've just slowly uh, increased it out, you know, six, seven. We are at eight now, I think. But when you can only choose eight models of car and you've got four classes here, uh, it stands to reason that we can't have every model of GT4 and every model of TCR and every model of GT3 and even if we did it would make it so much more of a headache for the series balance of performance which is already a bit of a a sticking point for some of the teams and and, and a bit of a headache for the series administration it doesn't need to be a more difficult more controversial task apparently it's a 10 car limit Um, the point is valid, though. It's uh, you know you are you'd have to r- run a very 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 expensive computer to be able to run ten cars all all at once. Um, we know which ATRS Esports car this is because it's the one remaining one. But they've gone in very deep at the hairpin in what was a very closely fought battle in this class. So I think it's cost them three spots, just one one lockup. I think we need to start a campaign. Hashtag Conroy for a blue tick. So he's got more followers than both of us, David. Does that make him an influencer? I, I don't know. Maybe he just tweet. Maybe he's just got better tweets than us. Probably. Oh, that's guaranteed. Yeah, that's guaranteed. Uh, that is certainly guaranteed. Two hours and forty minutes to go. So an IMSA sprint race to go as the GT, some of the GT4 runners putting in their pit stops as well. Hard to figure out the GT4 strategy. So Urano Esports are back in the lead by 20 seconds. However, I do think they are due... Let's see, where are they due? Yes, they are due a stop. So again, it comes back to SRC, Mavano Course and Pure Sims. They are the kind of net leader if you like. It's Yoke Delight is leading on track at the moment but is due a pit stop. Track temperatures stayed remarkably stable as we're middle of the afternoon now in Sim here in Austin, Texas. It's been hovering around 28, 29 for the majority of the race so that's uh, going to be good news for the teams. If it stays anywhere under 30 that's quite good for the tyres. Anything over that it starts to get a little bit more tricky. new batch of penalties just came through um, so now the backlog at race control only stands at about an hour 20 minutes um, catching up my goodness it's been what a toll on on them in what's a generally pretty thankless task 64 protests uh, on the sheet and they've worked their way up to number 45 at this time but there is five seconds for the car 96 which is BS Turner currently running in fourth place um, so that's not a, a ridiculous penalty is it? it's it's just an extra five seconds to the next pit stop they can definitely um, work their way through that but it does teach them to try to avoid what uh, they did which was contact with one of the 992s I think it could come down to penalties. You know, any any other of note that we, we that could have an effect, uh, David? Um. Well, 
impulse in 12th place in class at 15 seconds so there's there's a lot of these ones that are you know probably pretty frustrating or um, you know for the, for the for the teams involved but if it's not you know the, the podium in class and it's not a 60 second penalty it's like oh we probably wouldn't notice if 12th in uh, GT4 had a 10 second longer stop on accident instead of just a penalty. So I, I like that because in a different style of race control, uh, the only penalty, sorry, the smallest penalty race control could give would be a drive through, which is a pretty big penalty. And depending on the circuit, sometimes it's, it's an even bigger penalty. So then you. They, they wouldn't pull the trigger on anything except massively egregious, reckless, or in, intentional conduct. Whereas here with the 5, 10, 15 second post pit stop, you know, penalty box penalties that they can add, they're a very, very fine granular tool where they can say, you know, you, you overstepped the mark a little bit here. Through, through traffic, you know, maybe forcing a TCR off, but there wasn't contact or something. The kind of thing that you would never give out a drive-through penalty for, but the kind of thing you can softly discourage uh, to, to try to keep the racing fair and to try to, to keep the racing clean for everyone in all of the classes. Because obviously it's, it's great to have four classes, but it also creates... Um, some, some some tension and frustration in some racing situations that, that if race control stay on top of it normally everyone's pretty well behaved and considerate yeah I think it's a good way to do it actually I, I, re I really really do um, keeps everything kind of running smoothly um, and yeah definitely a deterrent to to do anything uh, do anything silly in traffic about 2 hours and 35 minutes to go or so in this race and if, if I just racing, close that that, that, yeah. that point you've got to have something in between you know tut tutting and keeping the whole class back at lunch like you've got to you, you got to, you got to have something in between there to keep the troublemakers in line yes definitely true I think it's a, it's a good way to police it uh, for sure yeah Apex Racing Academy doing a super job here of keeping in touch with MSI Esports. Why don't we ride on board with them? Car number 98 uh, of uh, Rathim Fazui. The man of the hour, it has to be said, he's maintaining a good pace. He's going to be our taxi driver for the next couple of laps. And myself, Peter Mackay, and David Haynes will be back in just a moment. Do not go anywhere.
Welcome back to round three of the 24H Series Esports live from the Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas. It's myself, Peter Mackay, and David Haynes here in the Race Spot TV commentary booth taking you through the next two and a half hours to the checkered flag. At the top of the shop, it's MSI Esports who lead the way by just around four seconds from the car on your screen right now, the white, green, and black. Apex Racing Academy BMW. They've just dropped a little bit of time the last couple of laps, but they're right there in the hunt for this lead. And in third, BMW Team BS Turner there, just in the fight for the podium at the moment. Williams Esports Bank in their Porsche are fourth, with Fila Racing Team Euronics rounding out the top five. In the Porsche Cup category, well, it's been absolute domination from the Team 75 Bernard car. Uh, 26 seconds the gap at the front of the field to Apex Racing Academy squad. And Jurgen Frank is the driver who's been doing the business at the front of the field. Put the car on the class pole and pulled away. In fact, no, he didn't start in the class pole. In fact, I do tell a lie. He started up near the front, but has just charged off at the front and put together some incredible lap times and very consistent and looking very very good at the moment. Urano Esports there sitting in third at the moment in their number 911. The 996 of Asetek Simsports they sit in fourth with Sabel Esports in fifth at the moment. In the GT4 category well it's very very tight there as things stand. Uh, all Mercedes up the front of the field but uh, now, uh, as it is at the moment, yes, the Sim RC Aston Martin is leading at the moment, but is due a pit stop. So really your net leader there is the SRC Mivano Course Mercedes leading from the Urano Esports Mercedes. I think might also need a pit stop as well. Uh, Pearson's Esports right there in the fight in fourth. Sabel Esports in fifth. So very much in a state of shuffle at the moment in GT4. TCR. Well, TCR going the way of Sim RC at the moment. They're looking really strong. Nathan Ames taking over the driving from Quentin Guinness with the number 116 Pure Sims Honda now being driven by Stain Ledgers. Ross McFarland doing the last couple of stints there as well. So that is your picture. And with two hours, 27 minutes to go, David, how are we looking strategy-wise? What are you expecting to, to happen over these next uh, couple of hours to the finish? Well, I think my key point is about this, this GT3 lead battle where on a brand new set of tyres, the BMW looks like the car you want to have. But right here on the second stint of the tyres, I'd say the Porsche is the car you want to have because every time there's a new set of tyres on that Apex Racing Academy car, it's flying. It's one of the quicker cars that there are. And Beeler have also been pretty strong on new tyres and so have, have BS. But right now... You know, what was underneath the second between the overall leaders is out to, to six now as the BMW just starts to struggle on um, some life-expired tyres. And for whatever reason, the, the wear and the balance of the Porsche just maintains the pace a little better, a little longer. Yeah, it does certainly seem that way. Uh, what we've... Uh what we've seen so far but it can it can change at any moment we've seen a lot of penalties being handed out um, over the course of the race mainly for incidents in traffic and usually I it, from what I've seen anyway David it's more cars in different classes coming together rather than those in the same class yes but not exclusively Penalties for GT3 versus GT3 attacks. There are five seconds for the, the 148 TCR for contact with one of the other TCRs. And, but when you think about some of the big race-changing uh, penalties, you've got to think of the, the Beeler 46, which has now had almost like 50 seconds of penalties predominantly for contact with and dive bombs on GT4s and, and, and TCR cars. So, 
Yeah, when you think of the ones that are having a big effect on who could win the class, who could win overall, that's one of the ones you, um, you can't go past. The other penalty that we're going to start talking a lot more about in this back half of the race is those track limits, because two more have uh, have come through, and those are uh, very quickly through the steward's box, because they're a pretty matter-of-fact slam dunk, no interpretation, no second opinion needed. It's a... Uh, well, you, you've got 50 incident points. Well, off tracks, not, not necessarily incident points. It is exclusively 50 off tracks. So those have come through on the... Uh, I think we already mentioned the 933, which was the... Hang Porsche on. Cup. It's Mavano yes. course, Porsche Cup. That's right. Yes, Mavano course and Porsche Cup. We did mention that one. But then on the 466, which is... Uh, Team Fordzilla, GT4, and 79, which is the Havu GT3 Porsche. So, with still more than two hours of racing to go, I don't think that's the last track limits penalty we're going to see. Oh, we get a replay here of Mark Perez. The MSI Esports Sunday number 114 through the hairpin. Uh, we think we might have had some sort of issue coming through into the flip flop section through here through 13, 14, and turn 15 in that little Hyundai Veloster. Maneuverable little touring car, short wheelbase, of course, uh, in that machine. Appears to be running along smoothly. But uh, we do know if you just catch one of these curbs the wrong way, they've got sometimes a, almost like a little kicker on the inside of the corner, right at the apex point in most cases. And if you clip it, it can really set unsettle the car. So Mark Perez, I think maybe just run wide somewhere and it's triggered the warning system. But yeah, it looks okay. No such problem for the... Uh, little MSI Hyundai truck and wave. an invoice for that, that coverage. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Now, that's, but that's great, isn't it, right? Because every time we go to a replay, it's like, oh, something horrible. Or Here comes a plane crash. Yeah. Happened. <laughs> it's like, you know what we never get? It's just a replay of someone having a good final sector. You know, yeah. just keeping it within the track limits and not getting hit by a GT3. You know, you know, um, plane takes off and lands safely, never makes a news headline. But no less impressive. Yes, I, I agree. I agree. Ah, CMRC finally take their pit stop in GT4. That puts the Mercedes of Mivano course back into the lead. Uh, now, as we've, we've seen a kind of pattern forming in the second stint on tyres for our GT3 runners, their second stint and just going into the second half of that second stint that's where the difference between the BMW drivers and the Porsche drivers seems to be splitting because look at the gap now between MSI Esports and Apex Racing Academy of course MSI and the Porsche Apex Racing Academy and the BMW that gap it was hovering around within a second second and a half it's now eight seconds David so as uh, I mean we've seen Racine Fuzu has had an amazing Amazing stint at the double stint at the wheel, but this second half of the second stint has you really start to see how that tire that car is eating its tires. Yeah, and and I think back a couple hours now to the opening 30 minutes of this race and uh, the 46 Beeler BMW and the two BMWs of um, BS Competition and BS Turner. The three of them stormed out front, started storming away from everyone, and uh, that was th th that. In a nutshell, is where the peak of the performance seems to be, relatively speaking, for the BMW M4 GT3. Is that uh, on the higher fuel loads and newer tyres, definitely got pace that the Porsches don't don't quite have. But then here middle of the fuel run tires are an hour and a half old they've done 
45 laps and uh, and that's where the Porsche is then in its own so it's a great little seesaw back and forth and I don't doubt you know in about 20 minutes when we see the next pit stops again from GT3 Apex Racing Academy will probably come out of the lane uh, 10 12 seconds behind MSI or something and probably have a really good run because they got two great drivers in the form of uh, Maxim Priant and Resin Fazui. They've got a car that's obviously super quick in that state. Uh, the, the BMW is just a bit, a bit meaner, a bit meaner to the tyres. So hopefully it all, it all balances out in the end. But right now it should be uh, MSI time. And Apex, Apex time might be you know five minutes past the top of the hour. That's their happy hour. Yeah, but Jason, you see if Apex have managed to close in that gap in terms of the fuel strategy on NSI Esports, if uh, they'll be able to have be able to take on less fuel at the end of the at the end of the race on that last stop. Of course, the penultimate stops coming up at the moment for those on a five-stop strategy. Those on a six-stop, well, that was of course different, but. Uh, I think I, I really don't see how the, a six stop is going to work. Um, it's just too long in the pit lane and there's just not enough of a benefit on those tyres. It's an interesting one because, you know, we see in certain series around the world where you can, you can fit tyres during the fuel stop and others where you can't. And it, uh, yeah, it opens up interesting dynamics and of course the tyre it's not a sprint tyre it's an endurance tyre so it doesn't have that just explosive difference in in lap time but it's an interesting one because the thing is if you've got an explosive difference in lap time you, you say where all of a sudden you gain a second and a half with a, a tyre it almost it almost doesn't it almost doesn't it then negates any racing because you've got so much of a difference from each tyre to another that you're not really getting racing it's just sort of who's who's kind of fastest over two separate time trials it's it's not really proper wheel to wheel racing we see it f1 have tried to do it with you know since in the whole pirelli tire era you see the you know, lap times diving about all over the place but yeah interesting one Niti, Sabelt, Asetek, these are a bunch of the 992 cars that we'd seen battling each other at one point. There was a, a four-way scrap going on in this part of this field. Um, I think the yeah, Sabelt are about two and a half seconds back there. They were closer. ATRS, I think, had another spin, but it looks like Havu uh, are, are in there. So there's a great fight for a good chunk of points and it's always good you know not just when you've got a close battle at the lead of a category but when you can look somewhere you know in the middle of it and these guys aren't you know wasting six hours of their Sunday they're, they're, they're having a ripping time and, and, and a great race and really committed to this all the way you know lights to flag yeah you bet they are yeah Manatee yeah, it's about two and a half seconds back to the Usabelt car there, just further further on. If you drove for six hours on a Sunday, how far from home could you get? Uh, so I'm in Edinburgh. I could go, well, probably if it's a distance wise, uh, get the furthest away, you'd head south because there's a better motorway going south. Uh, probably get to about Birmingham, somewhere like that. Edinburgh to Birmingham. Yeah, it's about six hours. How about you? I could drive for six hours and I'd still be in Queensland. Uh, that's not entirely true. If I went dead south, I could probably get about halfway to Sydney. From where? From from Brisbane. From Brisbane. Okay. Ah. Yeah, six hours. I think you're probably the, definitely the winner of, of uh, how far can you drive from home in six hours as someone who lives in sort of the western part of Germany and heads east. Because I think from Hamburg, kind of Berlin, it's... Autobahn a lot of the way, uh, and if you did it in the middle of the night, I, but that, that's a good competition. Who could do? Actually, we're not not that we're advocating this, of course, but um, yeah, that would be quite cool. I think. Uh, what car would you use for that? I think I'd go for a 911 Turbo S. I think that would be the perfect job car for the job. Oh, 
Oh, dude, I've got to send you some some pictures because I went past this place in uh, in in Richmond, Virginia, in the U.S. and it's called European Motors Richmond or something. But but by the look of every single car in this used car yard on display, it's like it's like a hoarder who had to register it as a business because I've never seen more. 924s, 928s, 944s, um, Mercedes SELs in a in a dire in a dire dire state, and it's a dire state there for uh, Williams Esports BenQ as they lose a spot. Yeah, that drops above the podium at this stage. Um, so just yeah, a bit of a moment there for the 55 car of Moreno Serica. B.S. Turner in the pit box with Ruben Bonga, who's completed his. Now they want his. it back. Ah, oh, oh, great move there from Sirica, straight around the outside there of Stefan Hofbauer. He won't like that. The car 96 is in pit lane. Uh, Ruben Bonga came in for service, full service, interestingly. Hmm. That's not on time. Well, they just completed a 30-lap stint. The thing ah. is that their stint before that was only Shorter. 19. Yeah. Here we go again. Here comes Hofbauer up the inside, hard on the brakes. Sarika's not going to let him have it, is he? Runs it out wide. Uh, they're not. They're costing each other time here, but it's great entertainment for us. Tell you who this benefits massively is that Apex Racing Academy oh, yeah. car because realistically they were, were in a battle for second against these guys. You know, um, Williams Esports BenQ and now also this Bila 45 were sort of far enough back that if the tyres fell off hard for Apex Racing Academy and that final fuel stop was, you know, eight or ten seconds longer, they were going to be, you know, right in it for that sort of second place. Now, the, the pace is not as great on the second stint of the tyres for Williams Esports BenQ as maybe that hope. They have been caught by Beeler Racing Team Euronix, and uh, there is an interesting battle, sort of second, third, fourth, I'd say between these two and Apex Racing Academy. It's all in play there. Definitely, definitely. And if uh, Beeler Euronix 45 and 55 Williams Esports, if they start if they start tripping over each other well it's it's only going to help as you say Apex Racing Academy totally buy that one um, the gap at the front has increased more up to 11 and a half seconds so this last portion of the double stint for Apex Racing Academy has really not gone their way it seems like it really is playing into the hands of MSI in this in this stage I mean it could be that, you know, Apex Racing Academy trying to play themselves in to the same strategy as MSI Esports. How will they do that? Well, they need to save fuel, basically, because they were stopping five laps earlier than MSI were. And of course, that then has an invoice to pay at the last pit stop because they've got to put more fuel in. Uh, so, let's see. And uh, David, some more news on penalties, even for some drivers who are <laughs> parked up in the, uh, in the car park. Yeah, a, a few of the, the the transgressions of the Alta C Sports 43 Porsche 911 GT3 have, you know, co co eventually come across the steward's desk and been, been acted on even though the car uh, appears to be retired um, at this point. And I'll keep up with anything else that's um, happening there, but we haven't had any more penalties yet for the 50 off tracks um, there is so many places around this circuit where it's easy to pick up one or two it's it's not insane to think you might in a in a bad lap in traffic or you know pick up three off tracks or, or something because you can you can get an exit of the final corner you can get an exit of the first corner you can uh, you can get it down here very easily in the penultimate corner. The car wants to wash out wide and 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 pass the white line, and, and almost almost anywhere there's this astro turf on the exit of the corner. You get out a little bit wide. The car will want to keep going wide, and uh, and and then you're you're out of bounds. So. 
So, two hours and nine minutes to go here then in this third round of the 24-8 series eSports. And Apex Racing Academy still shedding away time to MSI eSports. It's now 12 and a half seconds, so it's just ebbing away a little bit there. Uh, the, it seems that the front right tyre, particularly a bit of a an issue here around the circuit of the Americas. Of course, it's a uh, anti-clockwise circuit, and therefore the front right will get a real a real pounding through that as well. Of course, they've raced MotoGP here since 2013, and Mark Marquez absolutely dominated this circuit. And he's a huge fan of left-hand circuits due to his training technique, the uh, dirt track, American flat track style of training. Uh, they're always turning left there, so. That's uh, one of the theories why he's so good on these types of circuits. As a change for fifth position, Ori's Rincon goes by to on Assetek Sim Sports Visceral. And most people aren't too keen on the IRS in, in this country. Uh, no. So I hope it stands no. for something a little more pleasant on the Ori's car. And they've made a pretty tidy move inside of turn one in that in that battle they were part of. So Is our Italians and our Czechs. I'm just gonna go out on a limb. I'm pretty sure CSRA is like Czech Sim Racing Association or something. Yes, I'll go go with that one. Uh, now you were saying you'd rather have the Czech beer over an Italian beer. I would I would go with that. Uh, nothing against Italian beer, it's just a Czech beer is excellent. Uh, however, I'd rather have Italian food. I don't know much about the uh, cuisine of Czechia. Um, that's, that's, that corner always scares me because people take different lines, mm. different breaking points in there. and um, My goodness, they actually got a little close there, but, but I think they knew what they were doing. Um, we did see that be the cause of potentially be the cause of the accident between the two Beela teammates. Um, if you think back to that. But yes, Italian cuisine, absolutely fantastic. I uh, didn't do a great service to Italian cuisine with my dinner tonight, which involved spiral pasta and uh, sausages, but it was still tasty. Main thing, That's the main thing. She's put a lot of damage on the side of that CSRA machine by Entropic on the, their Mercedes. I don't think there's many of the lower class cars that have survived any, uh, have survived the whole race without a, at least a bit of a rub from some of the faster cars coming through. Um, it, it was being downright aggressive in some areas. Just, oh, a big slide there for the CSRA Merc. And he's about to get picked here by the Havu GT3R Porsche. There it goes gets the job done through um, six minutes before the top of the hour when we'll start to get a, a feel for where we are in terms of uh, in terms of strategy for the run to the finish I don't think it will be long before we see Apex Racing Academy's BMW coming in to pit lane they've done 26 laps on this stint maybe a couple more and you know what uh, David, they might have at least played themselves comfortably into that five-stop strategy when we thought they might have been forced to do a six. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. But the the, the only downside at this point is that they took that, that short stop early and they might come up against Williams Esports BenQ and even a little bit of Beeler Racing Team 45. Uh, having having shorter final stops there that they've just got to make sure they 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 cover off got a bit of time in hand to the teams that currently run third and fourth that are looking like the the win might just elude them MSI Esports GT3 might be looking a little too strong at the moment we do expect then those final round of, of sorry that that upcoming round of GT3 stops to potentially be the final tyre change uh, on most of those teams and probably also the final driver change sort of sets us up for the the last segment of the race to run to the end
So this battle still rages on between Maniti and Ori's ring gone then. Uh, into turn one they go. Oh, it's a bit of a late look there from Maniti. And oof, just has to back out of it at the last moment there. Trying to make its way safely through traffic. And of course, yeah, any penalties now, of course, will be really and the thing is as well if you cop a penalty and you've done your last stop you've got to come in and serve it though so added post race it gets added post ah, race. okay okay fair, fair enough fair any enough. penalty okay. that you get um assessed in the final 90 minutes of the race if you don't serve during the race gets added post race which is actually quite nice because we've had That's this better. situation before wherein as you as you mentioned if you do serve it at a pit stop you've got to accelerate out of your pit box up towards the the pit lane speed limit and then slow down again stop in the penalty box then you've got to make sure you serve over not under the time you don't want to alpha towery your five second penalty so realistically you know a oh oh my goodness oh wow that's not it. Big damage for Maniti, you end up in the wall. What exactly went on between those two 992s? And they've almost gone and involved CSRA by Entropic as an innocent bystander, three wide at the end of the straight here. Well, let's get a look at it then. So Maniti leading the way in the green and black car. The IRS car goes up the inside, hard on the brakes, bang hits him in the braking zone and yeah the CSRA car sees them both clattering through clumsy one really and if you're a Maniti you're going to feel pretty aggrieved at that surely yeah if you're Maniti you're going to say well hang on he knew we were three wide and he's not 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 giving me enough space and if you're uh Oris Rincon IRS you're going to say Maniti knew this was going to be three wide because they had the best visibility of the upcoming traffic I couldn't see them as well because I was riding behind the car I was trying to pass and he was a little late to pull out maybe so um, I don't think that dent is going to get better on the left hand side for Martin Suratek a bit of fuel saving for Martin but you see him ready Boink. oh dear Enter I mean, stage left, exit it, stage right. Yeah, I think, I mean, for, for Miniti, they're, they're breaking in a perfectly straight line, it seemed there. Wheel seemed straight, and the I IRS car just kind of carved, carved across. Um, that's certainly how I read it, but uh, Kevin Tavares, I don't think he'll feel pretty aggrieved at that. I mean, certainly the Miniti car came off a lot worse, a lot of damage. It is a difficult one because it's obviously you treat it as a straight because you're absolutely flat out in sixth gear and then you break down into first gear but the, 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 it isn't straight at all the road does curve and move and go uphill and down dale so it does make things a little bit more but you do get checkups um, and then we saw i mean look at look at where we have formula one here it can happen here too that's new damage on the rear wing for Sabelt Esports, and I'd wager you it's costing them some straight line speed because look at how quickly BS competition swallowed them up and are leaving them behind. Yeah, of course, that uh, the rear of the car, that's exactly where the engine is, uh, hanging out over the rear wheels, so I wonder if it maybe got a little bit of damage there. Uh, or uh, potentially just the aerodynamics, as you say, great spot there, David, the rear of that rear wing, the right rear of the rear wing is, uh, yeah, deformed. Ah, so, Williams Esports into the pit lane at the Kaupanen. Taking on fuel. Now, with two hours to go, I would imagine we'll see them go up on the, the jacks, put on four tyres, and that will be them ready for the run to the flag. Just a little splash of fuel required, and there it goes, yeah, up on the jacks. And just behind them, their teammates, Williams Esports Chill Blast, are also going for the same strategy. Dino Lombardi coming in a little early on this one, and I wonder if the strategy is just get on those fresh tyres as early as we can. GT3 cars can definitely uh, perform a bit of an undercut. Um, 
you know, we saw GT4 and TCR not so much, but in GT3, definitely if you're struggling on those old tyres, uh, get, get in, get on the new ones would be the way to go. I think so. I think that's a good, definitely a good idea. I mean, the MSI, their pace has been fantastic at the front of the field. This last part could be a pivotal part of the race. You know, they've really... Daniel Garbay has opened up a really good gap. He's opened up 1.1 second just on the last lap of own from Rasim Fuzui, who's, I think, yes, his tyres will be right, but I do think Rasim's had to do a lot of fuel saving over the second part of his stint in the car, and that's definitely cost him time. Um, but it has played him into the, into the window in terms of strategy. So maybe with some fresh tyres on the car, we could see that. Apex Racing Academy BMW come back into the fray because as you alluded to earlier David it does seem that on the fresh tyres in the first stint the BMWs have got the pace. I'm seeing Apex Racing Academy as having gone on the 31st lap of this stint which is a little unprecedented wow. so maybe that's where this sort of drop of you know seven eight ten seconds away from MSI is also partially come from is that difference in lines and and breaking points in towards the final sector as the Beeler Racing Team 46 much penalised uh, comes under pressure from the BS Turner occasionally damaged yeah they were looking so good at the start of the race but that incident with the Pure Sims Porsche Cup car really uh, really helped them back actually I think over the course of the day into pit lane comes the Bila Uronix car now is it 45 or 46 coming in 46 coming in Gregory Tansen so this will be the penultimate stop for this car into the pit box they come and no That's driver changes yet oh yes there is there's a there's a driver change Sven Hasse back on board Definitely a, a, a fiery, passionate, maybe aggressive driver. It's really quick through that opening stint, but then we kind of came to learn that it's because he was his bullying on some of the, the, the traffic harder than others were, and, and that came back to bite a little bit. So we'll see if we're going to get a just as quick but potentially reformed Sven Hasse in the final stint to bring it home and maybe maybe right some wrongs and continue scoring some good points for the 46. So Apex Racing Academy into pit lane then and their BMW number 98 and service going on with him a superb double stint in, in all things concerned brought that car really into contention for the win it looks like the theme is going to stay on board don't see a driver change happening as yet so he's done two hours in the car obviously feels happy to go for another go and does that mean that we'll see him go right to the finish then or because otherwise outrageous. the driver changed the, yeah that would be a four hour stint that would be big ask so tyres going on there as we expected I think all the cars will be taking in GT3 will be taking new tyres to get them to the end of the race um, but yeah that, that does mean surely David then if you're just taking fuel on board on the last stop and you do a driver change you're going to lose time now I, I, I believe at this point you know, you're going to see Russin stay in and, um, until the end and he's going to you know, just cl close out with the four, the four stints. I, I, he's been known to do that kind of thing. Doesn't mind the the Iron Man stints and the, and the grind. But what they've got to be careful of is Maxim Briant drove one opening stint, then they stopped a little short, short fueled it a little bit, and then Russim got in before the two hour mark. Now the drive time rules, I do believe, is seventy percent. So no one driver can do more than 70% of the team's laps. Now, obviously, if one driver drives two hours and the other drives four hours, then the driver who drives the most is going to do about 66% of the time, about 66% of the laps. That 
the fact that that Briant did the short stop, the the short stint, and then has handed over to Racine. They've got to be careful about that drive time uh, rule. They're definitely one of the teams who could be um, in 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 place to get caught short on on the drive time, which doesn't happen that regularly. Because for the reasons we just mentioned, I mean, you look at the driver strategy of. Uh, Beeler 46, for example. Sven Haaser drives two hours, hands to his teammate who drives two hours, Sven goes to drive the remaining two. You know, even though one driver does the the, the, the most, they do almost two-thirds. They've got to do more than 70% for it to, to get in trouble, which doesn't happen all that often with the way the GT3 stick windows um, fall. But if you really, really minimise one driver's time, and, and have the other driver really stretch it out. You could end up in trouble on that one. Oh, that's trouble. That's a drift and a half. That's a nerf and a half there from the number 75 car. Uh, who's driving that at the moment? Lucas De Vries just drilled the CSRV Mercedes. That was really, really clumsy and that, that will definitely cop a penalty. Um, just... Yeah, no perception at all there. Really, really silly. That car has been in the wars. It's had a lot of incident. Um, yeah, not the best. Not the best, it must be said. But yeah, I think driving really wise, tough it does breaks. seem... It, it, they have, yeah. I, I do think, uh, though, David, the... Um, I, do, I do think that uh, the drive time, the Apex have definitely... I get the feeling that they've planned perfectly to have Maxime Brion do a limited, basically the minimum number of laps that they've predicted and then put Rathim Fazui in for the rest. So they've basically tried to maximise his time and minimise Maxime Brion's, interestingly. So car 75, the Team, uh, team Bernard car, really in the wars there, taking the FSRA Mercedes just cleaning it out. CSRA, excuse me, number 421. Uh, just on that last lap there, David, it really was that really was a bit a bit clumsy. Yeah, I was going to say, no wonder there's a dent on the left door of that car. It's like the third time someone's, you know... It's almost, it's almost comical the way they just slide out of frame, but it's, it's, it's not funny for, for that team who just keep finding themselves, you know, getting, getting bullied around. A bit of a punching bag, it seems. Just, just look at this. They're just going, going around, running and running, and bang. Like, what is happening there? Held the slide, just chef's kiss. But that's it's just not what they, not what they want. You're just waiting for it here. Just going along about your business, bang. You almost don't know what's worse there, is it? You almost think that was so bad that you think, was it deliberate? It can, I'm sure it's not, but it's just so clumsy otherwise. Well, we're it's... still waiting on MSI Esports coming through to take their penultimate stop. And yeah, they're they are playing themselves in quite nicely uh, for a little bit of a shorter fill uh, over. And I wonder actually, David, whether they'll take the short fill now and keep themselves clear of Apex Racing Academy because we know how quick they've been on new tyres. I wonder if they want to make sure they've still got a gap to play with. Yeah, I mean, they, they're in the position now to react to what they've seen from Apex Racing Academy, which was, of course, complete service, you know, a full tank of fuel and, and, and four tyres. So MSI can, you know... Okay. <laughs> Apex Racing Academy just roll over for BMW Team BS Turner there. Not what I quite expected to, to see. But, yeah, obviously MSI Esports GT3 are in the position to react. They'll know... They could take, you know, equal 
fuel drops from now until the end and say, all right, well, I have 95% of a tank of fuel now and 95% of a tank of fuel at the next stop and, you know, uh, never have to put the full weight um, on these tyres and, and hopefully save them a bit like that. Could be. Yeah, it could, could be. Let's, we'll see what they, what they do. Danny Elkar by coming around now to... Comp- now, is he going to go, come into pit lane or is he going to go around? He is going to come to pit lane. So in comes our race leader then, Danny Elgarbay for MSI Esports. Will be four new tyres here. And fuel, how much is the question? It's around about a minute for a full tank of fuel and four tyres. And let's see how they compare to Apex Racing Academy who appear to be uh, the closest rival on strategy at the moment, possibly. But Danny Algerbay, he switches over and in, uh, installs Christian Lamela into the car. Now, coming back to that moment there where B.S. Turner just kind of breezed on past uh, Apex Racing Academy, of course, they're on a completely different strategy s- schedule, David. I wonder if the Apex team just thought, you know what, let, it, let, let them go and we'll, we'll just tuck in behind. Yeah, I... I guess we're still expecting to see two more from two more stops from BS Turner 96 whereas yeah. Apex Racing Academy and now MSA Esports were expecting one more stop to to get to the end so yeah I guess I I, I believe you on that one I've also uh, busted out the old calculator and based on my predicted race distance of 172 laps the 55 laps that Maxim Briant completed will end up being 32% of race distance. So 68% of race distance for Rassim Fazui if he takes this to the end. So probably on the correct side of the regulations by, you know, t- two laps or so. Well, very well calculated uh, for Apex Racing Academy, if that is the case. Um, so... Uh, looking uh, looking good at the moment still MSI carry on uh, and see I'm working backwards on it but if you were working forwards on 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 that well, you'd, you'd you'd have your first driver get in and then you'd say all right well 32 percent of the race time has elapsed now I, I think I think we're safe that you've done enough yeah I think I think so I think so. Uh, so yeah, Chris, Christian Lamella there is now out front by 21 seconds from BMW Team Turner. Of course, the MSI have done their stop, as, as, as mentioned. Um, BMW Team BS Turner, they of course we, we think are due two stops. They're not really in the picture. In third place, Apex Racing Academy, 33.9 seconds is the gap. Uh, so excuse me uh, 20 sorry 23 seconds is the gap at the moment uh, at the front of the field to the third placed driver of um, Apex Racing Academy's oh, Rathim Fezui so that is that. your gap and I was like come on Zenith Esports flash your headlights we've seen you do it you know you want to and boom right on right on cue from our our, our, our Zenith driver yeah, he's uh, obviously not not happy. Uh, it's gonna be. A, it's been a tough day for the uh, all the, a lot of the TCR runners having to keep and try and get themselves out of trouble. You know as 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 well as I that the TCR car, you know, quite a wide stance. It's on racing slick tyres. It it's not completely devoid of aero, and it's a front wheel drive car. So they they like to carry good corner speed. You know, because then they don't punch off the corner quite so well as as, as front wheel drive. So a quick lap in a TCR car is a little different to the GT3s that can kind of park on the apex, square it, and then, you know, have a lot of power and a lot of traction off the corner. So nothing wrong or protestable or, you know, untoward or unsporting from MSI Esports and, and Christian Lamella there. It's just that... You overtake a TCR car like that, you kind of take the apex away from them, 
and and it it costs them the way that they want to drive the track which is to to really flow the the apex speed and prioritize apex speed over corner exit traction and that's where that's where the little flashy headlights from zenith walls was like oh you've gone and cost me a little bit of time with the way you've chosen to do that works for you it's legal but it's not optimal for me that's also a, part, a big part of the game of uh, multi-class racing it's not just the faster classes knowing how to pass it's the slower classes knowing how to be passed and made, managing that well very very important now we're in three quarters to go then in this third round of the 24 inch series esports and who's going to come out on top well at the moment msi esports are looking looking pretty strong they've got a little bit of uh, a little bit of a buffer in time in on track already that's there that's confirmed but also they are going to need less time at the fuel pumps uh, than apex racing academy will uh, or in the in, at the final uh, at the final stop and that's going to going to help that as well uh, lap time wise yeah msi are really really crunching it right now opening up two seconds more on the apex racing academy last time by really making the most of a clean run in traffic so all the apex racing academy can do is just keep pushing on keep forging forwards minimize or eliminate any mistakes and hope that uh, msi hit uh, hit some issues Okay, another track limits abuse penalty, but not for a new car. The SRC Movano Corsa 933 has now used a hundred track limits and gets another penalty for it. Oh dear. That's, uh, that's quite impressive yeah four ca three cars have had penalties for track limits but one of them now three times I, I wow for example, that. next door on the penalty sheet to SRC Movano Course's penalty for their third infringement of 100 off-tracks is the 176 Sim RC leading TCR just getting their first warning for 25 at one minute apart from where that 992 car got their penalty, their third penalty, for 100 off tracks at this point in the race. So, if they just keep on tracking, you know, 125. Well, it's uh, they're certainly winning that competition for the most uh, off tracks. That's uh, that's for sure. Uh, car, yeah. Interestingly, car 481, uh, car 481, the torque freak car, is given a 10 second time penalty for contact with car 913, who, who posted a, a protest about that, but then of course car 913 then got disqualified for retaliation for that uh, incident, so goodness me, it's, uh, it's busy in that steward's room. Uh, not picking favourites or uh, making friends, but I I'm yet to see a penalty that I've disagreed with. That's kind of uh, that's kind of the right. I think they they're they're, they're they're applying their own rules and 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 following the procedure when it, when it looks like that. Yeah, certainly. Uh, I think you have to commend them. Uh, to commend them a lot actually it's uh, been a, a busy busy day to keep on top of everything 
but uh, no, it's certainly, it's certainly been a, an intriguing intriguing race uh, so far a matter of strategy and how to get that to work and I have to say I really have to say uh, David that it's quite remarkable that um, quite remarkable that the Porsche with 45 kilos of ballast is still uh, still looking really 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 strong I mean really really strong even with that difference yeah, I mean, you see it, you're like, oh, 45 kilograms of, of ballast, that's like a lot, but it's the right amount. <laughs> like, it, if anything, I mean, 55, I, I, I suspect, you know, MSI and Williams Esports Bank Q would still be up there. Uh, if it was 55 kilograms of ballast, it just seems like a really strong race car. Uh, especially the difference in its its tire wear compared to the BMW, it seems. Yeah, that does seem to be a bit of a factor. Uh, that even with all that weight, you would think that would crucify the tires, but uh, not so. Not so. Hour and forty minutes to go, and we're getting to the point where the TCRs can fit and uh, make it to the end of the race, and. Of course, they can fit tyres when they take fuel on board. So at this point, David, do you try and go for a bit of an undercut as well and try and get the, get those new tyres on now and make the most of them? Yeah, that's what we thought some were, were trying to do. I mean... depends on your class depends on your kind of car but for for TCR for example there if you want to undercut with tires you've got to do it really early because you've then got to you know warm them up three laps before they come good and then you you you're getting that time back and in that that time you pit well your rival can can react and negate your your strategy for GT3 when we saw some some people look like they were doing it okay Good strategy but then if you were hurting coming up towards the two hour mark in the middle of the race you're going to be hurting at the end of the race then you're, you're just shifting the pain from the end of this run to the end of the next um, tire run so the GT4 interesting Mercedes AMG team Murano leading the way of course championship leaders uh, they lead by 31 seconds but we won't really know what the full picture is there until those cars have all had their last stops because yeah it's evolving on slightly different interpretations of strategy um, so the number 490 Mercedes AMG Urano car with the uh, yoke the light on board of that car it's a very passionate uh, passionate driver um, and in this, this kind of multi-class environment can get very, very hot and heated at times. But uh, Team 75 Bernard, they lead the way in the Porsche Cup category by 21 seconds from Apex Racing Academy, who have brought back a little bit of a gap to Team 75 Bernhard, who finally made a driver change. So Jürgen Frank has handed over to Marvin Strell. Jürgen Frank has been dependable and, and, and mega, so Strel's been given a very good position. You all uh, always love if you can have a teammate like that. Yeah, certainly can. Yeah, that's always nice to get, get the car handed over in a, in a good spot. Unfortunately, it's not been so good for the team car in the GT3 category, car 75. Uh, car 75 made heavy contact with the GT4 machine number 421 I would imagine they'll get a penalty for that but there's a little bit of a backlog we are now uh, up to our 83rd uh, no excuse me our uh, 78th uh, protest uh, get to 100 for a free coffee mm. get all the stamps in the book yeah have you ever got to the end of a of a, a 10 coffee buy 10 coffees get one free I've done it once in my local coffee shop no no twice 
but uh, I've got lots of other cards for other coffee shops that I've not even got close for losing. No, I think I'm... I'm not one for uh, ordering coffee out that much, and I'm also... A, a, a little on the wrong side of the generation gap where I'm more likely to order on the app 10 times and it, you know, adds a free coffee to your account than to have a card in my wallet that I need to remember to get stamped. Yeah, I definitely have not got the app, that's for sure. Uh, couldn't be bothered with that. Couldn't be bothered with that. Anyway, the... Uh, Sebel Mercedes there just to bit bar get his way past the uh, Zenith Hyundai TCR and Sebel getting a, a place back once the CSRA car unfortunately got tangled up with one with the uh, number 75 Bernard Porsche um, so yeah CSRA down in 7th in class now Roberto Ferrari here 6th in class for Sebel Mercedes. And BS Turner, they, although they're looking good right now, they do owe us two stops. Uh, well, Lord. Yeah, I think they're going to come up. They're going to have to do a heck of a fuel save if they were, but no, I think they are going to need two stops where everyone else needs one. So it's a story of what maybe what could have been for BMW Turner. Yeah, because I've got a predicted 46 laps still to go in this. Uh, they're 21 laps already on this tank of fuel. So, best case, they'd need to go... 36 laps on this stint and 36 on the next, when the furthest we've seen anyone go is 31, and that was even an outlier because most teams are doing 30. Yeah, it doesn't quite quite stack up um, to me. So quite a few more penalties coming in. Car 121. Um, the, uh, so we'll start with car, car 5. Uh, that is the uh, Williams Esport Chill Blast car. Five second penalty for dive bombing car 975. That's your leader in the Porsche Cup category. Uh, the car number 121, the TCR machine, Aspar team there already out. Uh, car 148, uh, Team Heusingveld, Roman Persky, uh, gets a 10 second penalty for contact with the car coming out of pit lane. Car 960, 10 second penalty for contact with another car. Uh, the car 960, that's one of our Porsche Cup cars, that's the Seibelt Porsche Cup car. Car 83, Riley Simrace in BMW, 10 second penalty for contact with again with the 975 car. So the leading Porsche Cup car, maybe that's where that kind of loss in pace has come from. Maybe a little bit of damage potentially. Uh, 25 second penalty for car 933. We've covered that one uh, for SRC Movano course Porsche Cup, who are actually out of the race now. Uh, car 466. The uh, GT4s, uh, again, I think out of the race as well. I can't see on my timing screen here. Four, six, ah, there you go, Team Fordzilla. They've got themselves a 25-second penalty as well. Car 79, uh, they've got... Uh, they've, they're out of the race as well, Havu. So, they're... Uh, they, they, <laughs> race control, they're catching up. They're catching up. Yeah, the opening two hours backlog is, has cleared itself a little bit. How about the hang time off one of those curbs? Off the Hunkos. How about the maybe damage off one of those curbs for the Hunkos GT4? Well, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised to see it because uh, when you're hitting those curbs, it's, they are like, they're like skateboard kickers. They really are aggressive. And yeah, I wouldn't be surprised when we see it at the Nürburgring, at the Nordschleife, when we still have seen cars yeah, you know, I remember um, Sammy Matty Trogan leading a, a digital NLS race 
and Carr got quite significant damage on cur curb strike. So, yeah, it can happen. Um, let's get a look then for the, the Yunkos car. Oh, so that was uh, already... Just ran a little bit wide. Yeah, so, okay, so that's where the pace went, is that they clipped one of the curbs and then went wide, cut the track and had to <clears throat> slow down and give up the time gained. That sounds familiar. Oh! Yeah, this is the, the replay, but even that counts as a cut track, I do believe. Oof, you would almost get lose the... You would give that time back. Give back the time gained, as you say, David. Uh, with the... And you know what? The, what? That has put them over 50 off tracks. So that's a 25 second penalty for that oh. cut track. Now I put I, I put to you that if they were on 49 with 90 minutes to go, they're probably already headed for that. But that's salt in a a car that definitely has a wound. It won't turn left, and now they're they're pitting. Ah, that uh, that is a pity for the Uncos team. Octavio Rondoletto pits up on the jacks. And now, can you get home from here for a GT4? I think it's maybe just stretching out a bit too much, mm, would you say? I wouldn't, don't think so. No, Maxi Stefan and <laughs> taking over board. Taking on board. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of 32 lap stints, and there's still 43 laps for a GT3. Uh, we get lapped a couple of times, but, you know, give or take still 35, 37 laps for a GT4. So that's car 96 serving, as, uh, serving a penalty. Uh, last penalty they got was a five second penalty for a collision with another car. So yeah, one more stop to go then for BS competition. Um, so yeah, they're kind of now on the same uh, stops to go as everybody else and that, that drops them down to that drops them down to sixth position at the moment. So they could still be in, in for some in for some strong points. Uh, will be as Turner. Or certainly they'll hope so, but you never know what can happen in the next hour and twenty seven minutes. There's a lot of racing still to go. NSI Esports hold a good cushion right now from Apex Racing Academy. It's been a really smooth run from this team. I like the colour on that car. I'm a fan of blue cars. That is nice. Lots of different shades of blue. Something about it is a little too toothpaste tube for me. It almost looks like if SeaWorld were going to uh, sponsor a car. Yeah, well, the way track limits are going the very uh, spacious enclosure for all of our cars it's about as spacious as it's going to get yeah certainly here at, uh, at uh, Circuit of the Americas but yeah they've barely put a, a wheel out of line here have MSI eSports Christian Lamella now on board and lapping very smoothly indeed the last lap by a 203.6 just a tenth of a second drop to Rathim Fazui in the Apex Racing Academy car 203.2 for the Bila team number 45 Lucas yes that kind of a story of what could have been for Bila they they were being super fast but just made a few little a few little errors in execution and a few little tangles in traffic and that's cost them yeah, the 45 was also one of the very first cars to pit from GT3, um, short of the hour as well. So they, from the early on, were a little off what seemed like the competitive strategy. And of course, the 46, the penalty, penalty, penalty. For them, unfortunately, and and we kind of made it sound like they were being a me, we, me, uh, kind of made it sound like they were being a bit of a menace for a long time. The reality was it was all sort of in that first hour. There was such a backlog of protests that you know a penalty would come through for something they'd done 30 minutes ago, and then down the road a penalty would come in for something they'd done 60 minutes ago. So they 
kind of, you know, were, were driving how they were driving with the, the, the risk and the aggression that they were. And it was quite a while later that they actually got, you know, slapped on the wrist for it and, you know, properly officially told that, you know, that's, that's too much and that's, that's too far. And they've been far more behaved since then. So I, I kind of do feel for them that, like, you know, you do something, you see it gets protested, but it takes a while for the, for, 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 for the stewards to get to it. And in the meantime, you've gone and done that thing a second and a third time. And then when it all shakes out, you know, you get penalised five seconds the first time and then 10 seconds and then 15 seconds. And it all adds up to to 30 seconds for something you would have stopped doing the first time you got a five second penalty for it if that had, that had come through a little, a little quicker. So a minute, an hour and 23 minutes to go here in this race. It's been interesting where MSI Esports are leaders if they pit with kind of an hour to go or whether they run in with a full tank of fuel and then short fill on their last stop. You shall see. Uh, whatever happens, they will have to. They, will, they won't have to spend as much time at the, at the pumps as Apex Racing Academy will. Now, are Apex Racing Academy are they? by any means safe in second position. No, they aren't. They're only eight seconds ahead of Lucas Yestat and the Bila Racing team and their BMW. Um, and fairly similar on strategy, certainly similar enough on strategy. So this is game on for second place, I would say. Um, Racine Fuzui took two tenths out of Yestat last time by, but that could play over the course of the rest of the day. So second place might not be sewn up yet. In fact, none of the positions are sewn up yet, but uh, Apex Racing Academy are going to have to keep their eyes forward as well as back. Yeah, but good lap just then from Fazui, but there has been maybe a bit of a resurgence from that uh, that that bill of 45 for a long time there third third place looked pretty locked in for Williams Esports BenQ didn't it and uh, they have uh, faded somewhat on that O'Reilly Sim Racing there in for a pit stop as well. They will not get home with that. Uh, they will have to take another splash and dash uh, before the end of the race. So we, we they were a, a threat early on. They kind of posed a little bit of a threat but it hasn't quite worked out for them. That six stop strategy not going to work by the looks of things. So looking like as, as we predicted at the beginning, five stop strategy definitely the way to go. the way most of our top runners are going to the point where anyone not doing it is uh, standing out like a sore thumb and that's Relay Sim Racing and, and BS Turner and pretty well uh, uh, no one else yeah BS Turner they've kind of been kind of forced, forced into this sort of strategy wouldn't be their ideal scenario but uh, yeah it just doesn't quite gone their way as uh, so yeah there's the Riley car and in for some penalties as well Dominic Bush as the Heusingvelt TCR one in one out okay. my turn yeah so that Heusingvelt TCR machine serving a penalty for making contact with the 434 GT4 machine uh, when exiting pit lane a little bit earlier on Mum says it's my turn with the penalty box. The penalty, <laughs> the naughty step. We should call it the naughty step, I think. The naughty step will be at the, the bottom of pit lane. Not always 
at that end of pit lane. In fact, I think more commonly it's towards the entry side. It was underneath the podium at Spa and at Sebring. It was also on the entry, but at Imola it's typically towards the exit end of the, the pit lane. So it just depends on where there's space uh, in the particular pit lane. In Nurburgring, it's usually in the on the entry, normally. Mm. Um, when you when you come in there, the GP uh, circuit. Uh, goodness knows where you'd put it on the Nordschleife pits because they are tiny. Certainly, when I racing, they're tiny. Yeah, well, at Monza, I have a feeling, which is next round on the fourth of December, I have a feeling like it's probably going to be on the the the, the entry, kind of near where that podium is. When we go to the Nürburgring on the 5th of February in the new year, that's of course on the combined circuit. So we use the the GP pits like you expect to see out of, you know, VLN racing or the Nürburgring 24 hour, or in fact, almost all racing, that's, you know, racing, racing uh, on the Nordschleife. That's of course the, the, the combined circuit with the modern pit building. And then Barcelona is our season finale on the 4th of March. Again, I'm trying to picture that pit lane, but it's a pretty, pretty modern, pretty spacious uh, pit lane, so they'll find somewhere. Oh, yeah, there's uh, there's a reasonable amount of room on the way in, but uh, I'm only just going off uh, off memory. Um, ah, so SMRC first to first to blink on the pit stops for TCR. So. The Marcy have kind of had the, they've had it under control all day in TCR. Here they come, and they're Honda, but Pearson's eSports are close enough to cause a problem. So out of pit lane they come then, so they're fueled up, ready to go for the run to the flag. And now, does Nathan Amis stay on board, or does Cortaginez get back in? Uh, Nathan Amis stays on board. So, let's see what he can do. We saw him in the Race Spot TV chat earlier on. And his, his teammate, Gontagina, has put it on pole position. Did the first double stint. And uh, Nathan Amis has kind of cracked on from there. Roughly splitting the driving half and half. Let's see what Pearsons do. They had Ross McFarlane in earlier. Then uh, Stain Ledger will Stain stay into the end of the race. The uh, TCR teams do have uh, a few little complications uh, to their driver availability. Other sim racing championships exist. Um, complicates GT3 and TCR a little more than the others uh, would be said. This isn't bad for pure sims because we know that the tyre warm up on TCR is a challenge. So if pure sims just react one or two laps later, there can be some advantage um, to that. We of course already saw Sim Hoisting Belt through the lane. They are a little further adrift of being in the conversation about uh, the class winner. So it's Van Hassett. Eight position for that number 46 machine story of really of what could have been for this car such pace but uh, penalties mistakes have yeah really uh, really cost them and uh, yeah the day to day maybe to oh, the story of what could have been uh, in the Porsche Cup category well the gap continues to close we saw a gap of nearly half a minute for Team 75 by Bernard Simrc but the gap is now down to 18 seconds back to Apex Racing Academy. So Apex Racing Academy really, really charging in car 998. Uh, Maggi Johansson at the at the wheel at the moment. And I do wonder, yeah, they pulled over a second and a, a second and a bit out of Marvin Strell last time by in the Team 75 Bernard car. I do wonder, David, if we've seen a couple of penalties for cars that have hit the number 975. I do wonder. Is that holding them back? The car looks okay. Certainly over the 
the front left and the rear. Is anything on the front right? Uh, that looks okay. Yeah, I can't spot much. No. Out of line. Maybe just this with the with the flag in sight, just not taking too much risk. So I don't know what we <laughs> what we quite call this, but I just was reading about that number 96 BS Turner. And they had a problem at one of their pit stops wherein they could only put 60 litres in. The fuel tank capacity is somewhere around 100, 110 ish. Yeah, it's not completely double that, but uh, yeah, they're somewhere between sort of 95, 110 ish. And so that's. That's what set them back and, and off strategy, so not uh, not really something that seemed like it was within their control. No, this is a strange one. Uh, ah, our, our TCR leader are in uh, for their pit stop, Pearson's Esports. Stain Larger bringing that car in. Looks like he's going to stay in for the run to the flag. There he goes. Off he goes. Sim RC have already gone past into the lead. So it's going to be a showdown then between Nathan Amis in the Sim RC car and Stain Ledger in the 116 Pure Sims Honda. And work to do for the Pure Sims Honda, but not an insurmountable gap. As MSI Esports, they go through into second position there they are in that uh, in that hyundai just at, at the front of shot as we went as we went through now have msi pitted no they're due a pit stop so they're kind of so the pure sims car is net uh, net second place and immediately behind is impulse who are seventh in class and have stopped and are a lap down to the class leaders here yeah, the gap's 17 seconds between Sim RC and Pure Sim, so you're kind of, they've both pitted, they're both clean to the end of the race, uh, whereas the MSI car in second does need to pit uh, to get to the end. GT4, I'm, I'm, I don't even want to, I don't even want to think what, what, what the story is until we absolutely know everyone's done their last stops and we can have a better picture because the strategy seems to have been all over the place there this, uh, this race. Yeah, for me, um, no, I, I know some GT4 teams have tried uh, fuel saving and, and whatnot, but is this 490 going to make it to the end from where they stopped three laps ago? That seems really, uh, really touch and go if you ask me. SSC Mavano Corsa, third in class, I've obviously got to have one more. Pure Sims 4th are going to have one more. Sabelt are going to have to have one more. Sim RC leading are about to come around to uh, their pit stop probably in about a lap's time. Some other tracks we've seen uh, Urano try four stops, which basically means you need to do an hour 12 every stint to uh, save yourself that stop. But if they stopped five, four laps ago, eight or nine minutes ago, you're asking for a one hour 20 stint. And I don't see any hints of anyone has successfully achieved this in class. So what do they got? Just a tiny splash at the end and that's the strategy. Yeah, well, keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on it, Carl, for number 490, Dylan Scrivens. For they are the championship there. leaders, undefeated yeah. so far this season. Two wins from two races. Yeah, they know how to get the job done, that's for sure. Um, 
they will know what they're they will know where they are they will know what their plan is but at the moment in gt4 it's the sim rc aston that leads um, which is uh, kind of holding up the flag for the british mark single almost single-handedly there is another one there's the yunkos car which is a little bit further down a little further, a little bit further down the pack, but we are now kind of in that window where the GT4s could pit and be fresh to the end of the race. And I think good opportunity for a kind of undercut style here to get in, get the new tyres on, which of course are done during the fuel stop, and uh, yeah, get them, get get the most out of them. Really use them up over these last hour and ten minutes or so. Ah, there we go, right on cue. Lucas Gabler bringing it down the lane. You know, it's sort of TCRs, then GT4s, then 992s, then GT3s in this pit lane. So he did not have to go too far to find his crew and to find his replacement driver, Adam Isaacson. So there goes the car up on the jacks as our overall leader charges on by MSI Esports. They've still got about. Well, about if they run to the end of this fuel tank, they'll have about 15 minutes or so left. So, yeah, they call it seven or eight laps until they make their final stop. And they'll just be thinking, right, just keep going. Keep those, keep those overtakes clean. Every car that comes up, just take it nice and steady. Don't need to take any unnecessary risk here. And by now in, a, in an endurance race of this type, you've you've usually got an idea of who the troublemakers are and who are clean and safe. We've all been there, haven't we, David? And we've all, uh, that's the great thing about iRacing is that at any level you can kind of get a group of friends together and have a go at an endurance race. And it, it's always the same. You always think, oh, the, the, here comes this car up behind us. They're usually okay. Or, oh, here's, here we're coming up on this car. They're usually fine. And then there's others which are just become the kind of rascals of the of the race, so by now, the teams will all be very much aware of what the form book is. Oh, by the end of a 24 hour race, me and my teammates always have some, some very unsavory nicknames for <laughs> some of the other teams. <laughs> um. uh, oh, no. Uh, five star Mercedes, car 455, in the Gulf esque colours. What has happened to this machine? Well, as you say, David, another aha. So I believe it's actually a problem with the the second placed Aston, or second of the Astons, 13th in GT4, the Yukos car, Maxi Stefanen in that Aston. Let's see what happens here down towards turn 12, braking zone. Got a good run on the Mercedes in front. Tries to slip it up the inside. Oh, oh double kiss. Whoops. That's the, uh, the rainbow coloured Mercedes. Yeah, SCK Frank Schultman. So that's for 12th place. So that is, they're both on the same lap. And oh, just clattered into one another, but uh, SEK continues to hold position. Perhaps with a little bit of damage, maybe. So, an hour and six minutes to go. Uh, so we're now at the point, if there are any penalties assigned, it's post-race. How far post-race, well, though, David? Will we find out? or not, ex not explicitly. We're at the point where the teams can now choose if they want to serve it at a pit stop or take it post-race, and for all the reasons we've touched on earlier, you'd be a fool to not take them post-race, but it's not cut and dry your only option. Mm. Yes, I think we're also, we could be due another batch of, uh, could be due another batch of penalties, I think it was the... Uh, uh, the stewards are going through them all at the moment. There is quite a few on the list. As this battle for 12th and GT4 continues, the SEK car, car having to give best to the Hunkos Aston there, which slips by. So, 
in this GT4 category, the 490 and Mercedes AMG team who ran away sports car does lead by just under 15 seconds. However, we don't believe that's enough fuel to make it to the end. Uh, now, have we had the car I think in the Porsche Cup category? Car number 975 has made its last stop. Yes, it has. So that was the former class leader, the uh, Team 75 Bernard car. But when the pit stops shake out, it, I would imagine it will rejoin. But in the lead that it had before, yes, the car 998 Apex Racing Academy car yet to make it stop. Yep, so in that phase for the 992 single mate Porsches of their final round of pit stops. Touch wood, yeah. but I know which car I'd want to be in. <laughs> yeah, the Team 75 cars had a great run all day. Uh, doing their team owner proud, Timo Bernard. One of the top sports car drivers of his generation. Many times a American Le Mans Series winner, five Nürburgring 24 hour victories. Um, one, at, one at Le Mans as well, one in an Audi, one in a Porsche outright. Incredible career. Won a lot of races outright in an LMP2 car as well in the American Le Mans Series. And a super nice guy to boot as well. That's all. Now, while we're thinking about GT4, Mercedes-AMG Team Urano Esports have a 15 second lead over SRC Movano Corsa. SimRC, their, their most recent stop and final stop was a little longer than uh, I, I, I guess I was expecting. I'm not sure, um, I guess there's some shorter splashes happening out of everyone else who's committed to, to five stops, but it's about 21 seconds pit lane transit time. So a couple of those cars in front of SimRC, you ask yourself, if they're not 21 seconds clear of SimRC, uh, then, th then they risk getting jumped when they come for their final splash and dashes uh, in, the, in the GT4 class. So it, it, it looks like... Urano have got SimRC covered off with enough time, but the SRC Movano Corsa GT4 and the Pure Sims GT4 can't let their eyes uh, off the prize here because uh, they, they might get surprised if they weren't expecting this Aston to only four stop. Well, let's see what if it if it, uh, if it plays in then for SRC uh, for SMRC, excuse me, not SRC. That's uh, the car number four three nine uh, Mercedes. So just coming up to the top of the final hour, five hours down here in this third round of the 24H series esports, and who is going to come out on top? Hanging in the balance in certainly GT4, I would say. And GT3, who knows what could happen in the next little while. As Apex Racing Academy started to chip away a little bit of time from MSI Esports, but they do have that gap to play with. As Apex Racing Academy do come into the pits from the 992 Cup lead, will they come out in front of Team 75 by Bernard? You would expect so. Uh, sorry, uh, behind it you would expect so given that they came in uh, that the Team 75 Bernard car came in with a lead but uh, we have been surprised by strategical changes today So down towards turn 11 then comes the Sim RC Aston Martin, the leading Aston Martin in the GT4 category. Really 
successful car. It's been a huge hit for Aston Martin customer racing. And you see them racing all over the world in various GT4 competitions. The heart of racing have had a lot of success with it as, as one of the one of many customer teams that run those cars. But this is your battle for the podium in TCR, MSI Esports in their Hyundai, trying to hold off the roster of Zenith Esports, who of course started right up the front of the field. But MSI have just quietly plodded their way through and are in a good position for some podium points at the moment. SimRC have a gap of 15 seconds in this class and looking strong at the moment. And just an hour to go and they are fueled up to the flag as are Pure Sims Esports. So if Pure Sims are going to catch SimRC in the TCR category, they've got to do it on lap time alone. The Porsche Cup category, Team 75 Bernard have come out in front of Apex Racing Academy but just by seven seconds. So that is game on all of a sudden in that Porsche Cup category, David. Yeah, it is. We made mention to uh, several noted race control incidents of maybe <laughs> that leading uh, Team 75 car getting punched around a, a little bit. And I never want to be in the position to talk down a, a, a driver's efforts, but sometimes I, I, I think you gotta you gotta hand it to Jurgen Frank. Definitely was the driving force of the early success um, of that car. Have you got some wildlife joining you there in the uh, in the Haynes Studios? Yep. Yep. Wait. <laughs> What, what type? They're outside and they're noisy. So, uh, there is a type of bird called a noisy miner. I reckon that's what it is. Ah, uh, so it's not, a, it's not a galah. Is it a galah? A flaming galah. No, it's not a flaming galah. No. They are, it is very noisy. Yeah, well. It's, uh, what time of day is it for you in Australia at the moment? Well, about the time that birds start chirping. Ah, early then. Early, very early. Well, uh, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm very impressed, David. Uh, you've done a, done a cracking job. Um, 57 minutes to go. And it's really not it, that impressive. I woke up at 2pm and we don't do daylight savings so the sun rises stupid early anyway. <laughs> I'm impressed. That is impressive. Been able to lie in that long as well. Um, now, 57 minutes to go. Apex Racing Academy haven't come for their stop yet, so they've really tried hard to play themselves back into the same window as MSI, as the number five chilled last Porsche for Williams Esports comes in for a final stop. Car that's copped a couple of penalties throughout the day for various infractions, but. Rathim Fuzui plods on in the Apex Racing Academy BMW. I, would, I wouldn't be surprised to see him in this lap, if not the next one, because the, the tank on that car is bound to be running relatively dry by now. And does he come? Yes, there he goes. Into pit lane for the final stop. Question is, how much longer can MSI esports go and therefore the longer they go the less time they have to spend in the pit box oh no he's oh, overshot costly. the box and that is going to be just you know two or three seconds sort of thrown away just overshooting the pit box I was about to comment you know he, he's angled the car aggressively for the exit but in trying to you know angle the car he's, he's missed the crew and he's got in too hot it's just one of those silly things you'll, you'll kick yourself for because if it if it comes down at two or three seconds at the end of the race you'll know that was a that was a slam dunk right, right there yeah that's really costly really really costly for the apex racing academy team it's hard to you hard to get on with him for Zui because he's done such a good job he's had driven so hard he's had to do the majority of the race but 
things like that can happen when you put a lot of weight towards one driver rather than balancing it out. I don't know who made the call on the, the strategy there, but it, it almost smells like the kind of thing Maxime, sorry, um, not Maxime, who opened up, Racine would, would, would request. Yeah, you never and know. It could be, um, it could be what's the word, uh, logistical. It could be that Maxime's got a hot date that he had to get off for. And the uh, noisy miner is a bird in the honey eater family and is endemic to eastern and southeastern Australia. It's a grey bird with a black head, orange yellow beak and feet, and a distinctive yellow patch behind the eye. Also, big fan of uh, virtual motorsport as well, by the looks of things. You'll be pleased to know that with as many of them as there are out my window, they are not considered to be of any concern uh, of um, being in danger. That's good. That's always nice. Well, tell you what is in, in danger, David, is the Team 75 Bernhardt's uh, lead in the Porsche Cup category because Apex Racing Academy took a second on the last lap out of the Team 75 Bernhardt car. And so Marvin Strell driving for the Bernhard car, the Apex car, Michael Yanni, and Michael is absolutely flying at the moment. 6.2 seconds is the gap, 53 minutes to go. It's game on there. I think so. So, problems for Dino Lombardi, car number five, uh, to take a long penalty here. Is sitting in pit lane, their race is done as the sole Lamborghini goes up on the jacks behind the BS Competition BMW in for service as well. Of course, we've got two BS Competition cars the BS Plus Turner and the BS Competition 96 and 89. And of course, we expect the oh, interesting, the 89 car for BS Competition having to take tyres for the last run to the flag. Yeah, Josh Anderson's getting in. Let's close that one out. Were they? Did they go off cycle early? Did they, did, did they take tyres at the first stop and then sort of be alternate to everyone? Quite possibly. It feels like the kind of thing I should have written down on this little notepad if it happened. Um, the notepad is a little bereft. Well, track okay, temperature cool. definitely peaked um, a couple hours ago as far as the tyre life is concerned because we sort of started at 24 Celsius for a surface temperature. It did rise towards 30 and now it's come back down again to to 24. So that's, that's probably a positive for um, Apex Racing Academy and, and, and other BMW teams that the track has cooled down a little again. Yeah, it definitely plays in in the favour there. The BMW teams, the higher track temperatures were definitely not kind to them. MSI Esports yet to take their last stop. They've been really good on the fuel. That number 14 Porsche has just sipped the fuel so frugally throughout the day. And I tell you what, though, the battle to watch is that Porsche Cup battle, battle because last lap after taking a second out, the lap before, Michael Yanni's taken another four tenths and then another three tenths. So three laps, he's taken close to two seconds out the leading Team 75 Bernard car. It's definitely heating up. Yanni with some, some pace compared to Marvin Strell at the moment. Team 75 Bernhardt cars also got a little bit, bit more of a, a longer run to the end, having, having pitted earlier as well. So that could, could come into the the tire life right at the end. And see them going past one of our favourite TCR battles, MSI and Zenith. 
that's for the podium in TCR as well. They're, they're, uh, it's going to be the battle to watch. I mean, it looks like SimRC are in control. They've put a bit of time into Pure Sims after that last pit stop. So the gap now up to 18.4 seconds there. But obviously no gap at all between these two Hyundai Velosters. MSI in third, Zenith in fourth there as well. Your drivers in at these cars, the MSI car driven by Gabi Montoro and Ricardo Rico for Zenith Esports. A little bit wide Those there the for limits. MSI. That was yep. the track limit, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I wonder, it was maybe just a bit spooked by the big scary BMW GT3 car coming into uh, coming into rear view and thought, oh God, I better, better just straighten the wheel up and let him go through. Maybe not. Well, I mean, if you've saved just a couple in your back pocket for the final hour, you would definitely take one of your 50 off tracks over the chance of, uh, you know, potentially race ending damage or, you know, damage that would send you through the pit lane again or damage that would cost you speed. It's your speed to clip that many of the orange curves though for MSI and it's, that's what makes it such a difficult section of track there in those S's, doesn't it? Because you get just a tiny bit offline and he came into the section of corners different to the typical racing line because of the car that was lapping him and then put one, it sends you just a little bit off your, your preferred line, ruins the, your, your rhythm, throws the Emperor off his groove. And then you find yourself sort of catching another one and it's tough to get back in the lane, get back in the zone when the corners are so quickly flowing into each other again like a like a slalom course. So overall leader in pit lane as the gap in Porsche Cup goes up by a second or so as the Apex Racing Academy car in Porsche Cup struggles through some traffic. But your overall leader, Christian Lamella for MSI Esports, in for the final scheduled stop loading up with a final drop of fuel and will rejoin the action you would expect with a reasonable gap if all goes to plan meanwhile the battle for GT4 raging on there with uh, uh, the Movano course machine Ashley Finch, Ashley Finch taking his final stop in GT4 new tyres Tank of fuel. Simossi have gone through. Mm. So if Simossi make it to the end, they are they are okay for well the end. Positioned. Yeah, they're they're yeah, in second, they... and we, we'd anticipate them to get to the end on that one. So but could we see <laughs> Aston coming through for a win in GT4 against the odds? I was about to say I don't think so because there is a whole minute and then a little bit of change, enough change for you to get yourself one of them them burgers and uh, for Urano it'll be a pretty short splash to get them home me thinks it's 21 seconds to transit the lane so even if they take you know 20 seconds of fuel they ought to still have 10 to 15 seconds spare or maybe even a tiny bit more to cover off sim I'll see here so I think I think second would uh, would still feel like a good result for the Aston and uh, and for CMRC. So Urano have played a strategical blinder here, so that who would have thought the late splash and dash was the way to go? So an, an, another stop on top of everybody else. No, no, that no same, same number. number of stops. Yeah, so I think it's basically working out. Everyone in GT4 is five stops except CMRC, and that might be a little bit of a you know Aston versus Mercedes kind of thing though no matter what the car is we know CMRC are really good with these fuel strategies they've played it to perfection before in you know the Porsche Cup cars in the TCR and in different models of um, GT4 in, in, in years past so that is the kind of thing that might lead them to the otherwise unpopular choice in the GT4 category knowing that occasionally they, can, they could pull out a strategy like this in it. So why don't we run on board with the number 998 Apex Racing Academy car uh, trying, to hold, trying to chase down the Team 75 Bernard car in a Porsche Cup. There's 8 seconds the difference between these two machines. 
and I'm going to take a couple of taxi laps here and myself Peter Mackay and David Haynes will be back in just a moment.
Welcome back to round three of the 24H Series Esports live on Racebot TV and live from the Circuit of the Americas here in Austin, Texas. Just 39 minutes to go in this six hour endurance race and MSI Esports lead the way overall by 24 seconds from Apex Racing Academy with the final pit stops complete. So MSI just got to try and coast that Porsche home for a victory with 45 kilos of balanced performance ballast on board showing just how strong that Porsche 911 GT3 R is at this moment in time. Bila Racing Team Ironics, they sit in third at the moment though with the last spot on the podium. BMW BS Turner in fourth and Williams Esports Porsche, they round out the top five. In the Porsche Cup category though, well, it's very much game on here because the front of the field we have Team 75 Bernard who have led throughout the day however they are being hunted down hard by Michael Yanni and the Apex Racing Academy just seven just over seven seconds the gap between these two cars at the moment and who is going to come out on top here as well there's still work to do for Michael Yanni and the Apex Racing Academy over the next 19 or 20 laps or so um, but definitely not an insurmountable gap. In GT4, well, at the moment, we have Sim RC sitting in second position by about a minute and five seconds. The Urano Esports Mercedes leading the way, but does owe us a pit stop, but we believe will not need to be in pit lane for long enough to give up that lead. So it's advantage number 490 Mercedes AMG Team Urano Esports, they are looking for their third win in a row to continue an unbeaten run in the GT4 category. In TCR, well, it's been the story of Sim RC today. They lead the way in a class at the moment in their Honda TCR from the number 116 Pure Sims Esports machine, 23 seconds the gap in Sim RC driver Nathan Arms, who's done a super job over the last stint to open up that gap as well so they are looking very comfy at the moment but question is David can Apex Racing Academy can they run down Team 75 Bernard who looked so dominant all day but that lead is looking fragile well we've got Sim RC leading the way in two categories we've got Apex Racing Academy running in second in two categories but they are chipping away at that lead Michael Janney doing a great job against Marvin Strell two laps newer tyres does it make a huge amount of difference? no but it's it, it's a state that it will exist for every lap to the end is that the tyres on Apex Racing Academy are always going to be just that little bit newer. They did get maybe a little lucky uh, with the traffic there. And look how much speed the TCR can carry through the medium speed corners there compared to the, the Porsche 992. I mean, it, it just goes to show they don't really have power for a straight line or super traction off of the slow corners. There are some, occasionally some corners that do suit the TCR pretty damn well. It's, it's, it's got some grip and some balance. Yeah, it just shows you there. They are real giant killing cars, the uh, TCR machines. So, our leader in GT4. Zenith getting a, a, little, a little cheesed off about having their line blocked um, earlier is they know the, the kind of speed they can... They can carry through some corners, but they just don't have the traction off slow corners to back it off, back it up. So Dylan Scriven's in, our leader in GT4, taking his final stop, the team's final stop. Just got to fill up with enough fuel to get to the finish. Now off they go, with still a pretty good advantage over Sim RC. So Sim RC have tried to play their strategical game, taking a stop less, but it's the pace of that fuel. Mercedes. More fuel than I expected. Nevertheless, it's come out with a really strong, no point risking it um, and running it tight. They've got a big gap back to Simrc, 19.6 seconds 
for Dylan Scrivens. So he's just got to get that Mercedes home and it'll be three wins from three in this 24H Esports Championship. And as we saw at the end of the last double stint in GT3, MSI Esports, well, oh, they're, uh, they're just getting faster and faster, building up that gap even more on Apex Racing Academy. It's up to 24 seconds now at the front of the field. Mighty, mighty stuff from Christian Lamella and the MSI team. And despite that 45 kilo ballast for balance of performance, um, uh, well, it's a, an amount we really don't see very often. You might get 10 or 15 and that's seen as significant, but 45 is quite remarkable. I, I just can't fathom how the tires have stayed in, the fuel consumption has stayed in. It just shows you the difference in the, uh, in the performance at this stage and actually how the base balance performance is a little bit out of kilter at the moment, I think it has to be said. Um, so much so that the series organisers have had to add a 45 kilogram addition. Uh, it tells you all you need to know, really. Um, so, 33 minutes to go, and that gap is coming down in Porsche Cup still. Just six seconds now between our two leading cars. Uh, Apex Racing Academy had lost a little touch of time on that last lap, but it's come back again. Two tenths of a second in the favour of Michael Yanni, and I think there's going to be even more on this lap. This looks like a really strong lap from Yanni as we come around. Got to hope he doesn't get held up too much with some GT4 and TCR traffic here. This has been one of the pinch points in the final sector here. That quick penultimate corner is where we saw CSRA get uh, a little unceremoniously nerfed, and not not the only ones at that point there. Some cars carry huge speed through the wide open preceding corners. Sensibly waited till the power and straight line speed of the cup car would get it past on the pit straight. Did still pick up time there on the Team 75 car, but only a tenth of a second. So it needs to be really pulling out probably about four tenths a lap or so. Uh, oh, big hop over the kerb there as well. That gets a little bit out of shape there for Michael Yanni. He's pushing, David. You would. Five and a half hours into this race, you can smell a win. You're, you're, you're a greyhound chasing that rabbit. So that's uh, always super motivating to have the, the relative box and you can see your second. You can see the leader ahead of you and watch the gap go from, you know, 8.9, 8.8, 8 8.7. 8 uh, it cheers you on. When the shoe is on the other foot, though, Marvin Strell is thinking 30 minutes is a long time to hold off this charge because just two cars back is his key rival for the race win in this category. Yeah, and that means then, of course, that there's a really good stream of uh, fresh air for the Apex Racing Academy car to lay down some quick times. It's got to dispose with the SimRC TCR car here, which of course has got a pretty handy lead as well, so I wouldn't expect it to cause much of an issue. Yep, the SimRC car just holding a really tight line there as well, saying, you know, you, you there you go, you go around the outside, yep. Not too much time lost there. So Michael Yanni, this is a great this is a really critical lap or two here for the Apex Racing Academy car. And you can see, yeah, just up yeah, there you go, just up the top of the hill is the Team 75 Bernard car that's led all the way through at a nearly a half a minute, but had just over a half a minute lead a little bit earlier on, and that has just come back to the Apex Racing Academy team. So it's game on now. Let's see what these lap times are going to be. I mean, last time by, we had for the Team 75 Bernard car, we had 208.3, 208 flat for Michael Yanni. So even in that traffic, took three tenths of a second out of the, the Team 75 Bernard car. 
So half an hour to go. I'm sure it'll be very tense in these two team rooms at the moment. Setting itself up very nicely in the run to the end. 24, there's our friends at CSRA by Entropic. Syratec was driving before, now it's Kadlicek. Now they're putting tyres on at their final stop here. I noticed Urano didn't. So that's, uh, that's, that's an interesting point of difference. Hmm, that is, yeah, very, very interesting stuff there for strategy-wise for, for them. They can't they can force it. 37 second stop for CSRA by Entropic just then, and it was 34 by my number, 33.7 by our broadcast number for Urano, so really, really close in stop times, and CSRA go, how about some new tyres? And Urano will make theirs go to the end. How durable are the GT4 tyres? How hard does the, does the car work them? It did... It does... It does seem like new tyres would be good. Well, I think maybe as well, it might not put four new tyres on. Uh, but if, if not putting a full tank of fuel in, you might put two. Uh, because, of course, with the GT4, you can take tyres while refueling. So you maybe time it accordingly to how much fuel is going in and how, much, how many tyres you can basically afford to put on without losing any time. Uh, so, yeah, interesting one there from the ZSRA. Guys, that car, unfortunately, has been a bit of a punching bag for several of the faster classes coming through. Uh, it's a shame, you can see the evidence of that on the left hand side of the car there uh, as well. There's a little bit Which of a response funny. here. They, they get it for free but I have to pay $8 a month for a check mark. Oh very good, very good. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well we, we got a real response there from Marvin Strell in the uh, Team 75 Bernard Whoa, car. Six Beeler cents around, per 46 quicker. around. In battle with the BS competition 89. Whoops. And uh, something's uh, made a bit of contact there. Sven Haas has been flying along. He's been trying to catch Josh Anderson in the, the BS competition car. And despite what ought to have been fresher tyres on the BS car, Haas has been closing down the gap. Just caught the end of it. Looks in a place. Oh, I don't know if they even touched. Did Hasser just so. pinch that on the narrow line himself? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Just pushing a little bit too hard. Let's look at it. So coming through these S's. Seems to get a good run here and thought, oh, I can maybe slip up the inside there. No, I can't. Oh, they do touch. Yes, they do. But of course, it's Hasser that comes off worst. Yeah, just pushing a little bit, a little bit overzealous there for Hassa. It's kind of been that sort of day. They've been fast, they've been spectacular, but ultimately, too many errors that have cost them. And that last lap by in the Porsche Cup category, there had been a response from Marvin Strell, had taken a, taken a four or five tenths back out of uh, Michael Yanni um, in second place. So. With 25 minutes to go, this is the 998 Porsche Cup car of Michael Yanni for Apex Racing Academy, just not taking enough time out of the Team 75 Bernard car and not consistently enough to be able to mount that challenge. But it just takes a couple of bad laps of traffic and three or four seconds can just disappear in no time. Everything is bigger in Texas, including the track limits apparently. Team Fordzilla are up to their second uh, penalty, so 75 off tracks. Mathematically, to need an advantage, um, with a 25 second penalty at every 25 off tracks, you need to make sure every off track you take is worth a second, and they're not because otherwise that would be the winning strategy potentially and at the moment it looks like the winning strategy is stay within uh, track limits uh, all around. Keep an eye on if anyone else oversteps those marks. So 
so 24 minutes to go then and MSI Esports still hold the lead by 24 seconds in GT3 Porsche Cup Team 75 Bernard just keeping Michael Yanni and Apex Racing Academy at bay and then GT4 it's Mercedes Team Urano leading from Sim RC by 19 seconds and looking like winning a third race in a row in this championship. Sim RC, well, tell you what, what a stint this has been from Nathan Ames in the last uh, last stint here in TCR, David. Up to 25 seconds now, the gap back to Pure Sims. Okay, strong finishes at the moment. I was off to a, a pretty handy little start as well, didn't they, with their, their qualifying towards the pointy end. And then the minute the GT3 traffic came through the TCRs for the first time, it just drove a, a, a wedge into the TCR train and sort of split your leaders from your mid-pack, from your, your tail pack, and how uh, powerful the fuel saving and the slipstreaming is in this class when you were... You know, not in the the, the peloton. It was, a, it was a tough place for anyone else to be, and Simar have driven exceptionally well, and exceptionally economically since then. So, do let us know on your thoughts on the race here in the Racebot TV live chat here on YouTube. Do let us know who your drivers of the day have been teams of the day, performances of note, do let us know. Uh, there's certainly been a few out there, that's for sure. Uh, a few time penalties coming through uh, as well. Mainly cars that are either out of the race or far down the order. Uh, there's another, oh, would you believe, have a guess, another, another penalty for car number 46. Currently sitting in 7th, Sven Hasse, Biela Racing Team Another 10 second penalty which will be added at the end of the race. That one of the penalties issued but not yet served. Here comes the Hunkos car still looking a little um, worse for wear. They last stopped that long ago. Yeah, oh no, it's a, sorry, they last stopped 29 laps ago, but that was, I think, when they might have been forced in with the, the damage. Yeah, that curb strike certainly did a bit of a job on the on the car. Well, Michael Yanni is still trying hard. He's pulled half a second last time by out of our leader in the Porsche Cup category, Marvin Strell in the Team 75 Bernard machine and it's still it's still gonna, it's all going to go down to the wire 21 minutes to go which will be about oh, be about call it 10 laps or so roughly um, so he's going to have to take that half a second lap out of Marvin Strell on each and every one of these laps Got a little bit of a little bit of gap ahead. He's got to try and get past this TCR car uh, for the braking zone in the two turn twelve. But uh, Michael Yanni is certainly trying his hardest here, trying desperately to run down and go for the win. I uh, kept an eye on it as you were talking about that. The overall leader has crossed the line for what I'm predicting to be 11 more laps uh, in this race, and I think will lap the 992 leaders once between now and then, so I, I think that makes it 10 laps remaining for, uh, for those guys in, in that battle. Oh, it's been a super performance from MSI Esports, they've run flawlessly all race long, they really they look good on fuel strategy as soon as they took the first stop, they are one of the last to stop at the first round of pit stops and they just continued to hold that this frugality advantage and yeah running really really strong consistent lap times not a mark on that car the number 14 Porsche whereas several of their rivals have 
uh, got themselves into incidents and therefore caught penalties and of course the subsequent damage holding back on pace as well. A lot of BMW runners running into that issue as well. That said, the number 98 car, Apex Racing Academy, the BMW, been a really good run, Rathim Fuzui. He's now, goodness me, he's nearly four hours into his stint and I've got to be thinking he'll be getting tired now, but uh, he's, done a, he's done a super job. Yeah, and I, I look at our top three now compared to the top three on the grid and the Apex Racing Academy came from seventh. Bula Racing 45 come from eighth, but the leaders from 14th on the grid. It just goes to show that uh, that qualifying wasn't as desperately important in GT3 as uh, I, I still feel like it carries a bit more weight in TCR and, and GT4, the way they get sliced up so early by the traffic and it and inflates the gaps between the front and the back of the field in the lower classes a little artificially, a little early. Um, but it, it kind of came down to this, uh, this, this overcut in the first couple of stops that launched MSI right up into into contention and they've just had great pace great tire life and good good fuel consumption since as well and those are all of the things that add together in a six hour race to, to make you competitive when you can save time on pit lane by not taking tires at alternating stops and then be quick on circuit on those second stinted tires when you're you know kind to them and 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 wear them maybe evenly rather than you know losing balance to the front or to the rear as as you go because you're being harsher to one one ends of the tires than the others so this yeah, this run from mercedes amg team Murano esports in gt4 will put them comfortably at the top of the standings of gt4 a third win in a row for the mercedes squad and you know, might we see a little adjustment in balance of performance there, potentially? I mean, they're very similar cars, the Aston Martin and the Mercedes, but it does seem like the Mercedes has got that kind of, it's that edge at the moment, but it's uh, it's all relative, and it all depends on the circuit as well, of course. Uh, of course, next up, uh, Monza next up as well. That's, uh, if there's any, <laughs> any track that's going to be a horsepower track, it's there. Yeah, I'm so looking forward to that uh, for, for all number of reasons. One, the, the character of the circuit uh, is, is different to Sebring, where we were last, and Kota, where we find ourselves today. It's a lot more big straight, one corner, big straight again, one corner, big, big straight. And that helps, I think, with the traffic. Um, because you, you can tell yourself, oh, if I don't, you know, try to dive bomb or outbreak this car in, in, in front of me, if I just wait, get a good exit off this corner, I'll get him on the next straight. Whereas there are places here where you're like, well, if I don't, if I, if I don't pass this TCR through turn two, I might have to wait all the way through the S's of, of three, four, five, six, you know, and, and that leads to sort of do or die attitude on it. And the other thing is you you hope with the long straights and the fewer curves that we get more uh, variety to the tire strategy and the fuel strategy as well across all of the classes. It could prove it could prove very interesting for for TCR how their fuel economy goes. It could prove very interesting for GT4 again if we get this four stop versus five stop thing happening and of course GT3 feels like the, uh, the feature of the show and, and, and I'm hoping it has that effect on their style and, and quality of racing there as well. Plus it's just a cool place everyone loves. Yeah, so it's a fun track to drive I always think. Uh, yeah, just trying to get you 
get your breaking points nailed and to hit places like turn one and uh, hop in the chicanes just perfectly and yeah, it's, uh, I think it's a really cool circuit, especially the Ascari chicane as well when you're coming out onto the onto the back straight. Very, very cool and I'm sure the, it will be fun to watch here. We'll have all the action here on Racebot TV for you and uh, this time next month, first Saturday, first Sunday, excuse me, of the month, we'll have all of the action there for you. 13, just under 14 minutes to go here as well, so about 7 laps the distance for these drivers as we've got a battle raging on for 12th place in GT4, undercut racing team in their Mercedes and Hunkos Racing Esports, Aston, the wounded Aston of Hunkos Racing there, the white and green machine battling away for that 12th spot another, speaking of a car that's wounded the Team 75 Bernard GT3 car uh, in ninth place in class, Karim Havis driving that machine there. But they got damage early on and they've had to deal with it all the way through to the end. Yeah, it hasn't gotten much better uh, as we've gone on. There are some bits that just don't, don't ever fix nicely uh, on the GT3 cars anyway. Um, not like... The LMP2, for example, where if your damage is entirely on the nose, a, a pit stop can relatively quickly change the front clip for a brand new one, not try to straighten out the dents in the existing one, and, and that normally sorts you out pretty well. I, uh, I imagine the damage will then work pretty similar for the forthcoming... Uh, I hope I get these in the right order. BMW M hybrid V8. Not the BMW V8 Hybrid M or the BMW M V8 Hybrid. The new BMW Le Mans car or GTP car or what? The GTP Hypercar LMDH DPI 2.0 no. car. Oh Biff! Oh dear. Oh Biff again. That's the undercut car slamming into the side of the carbon Simsport Hyundai and then Hunkos coming in there for to add to the melee as well. That was a whew, big move there under the brakes and hard contact between the undercut Mercedes and the carbon Hyundai which has been another bit of a punching bag today as well. So it's just minding its own business and there's a Mercedes up the inside there as well and Hunkos said oh I'll come in for a bit of that. They're having the opportunists, but it's it's different racing lines, different turning points for the different classes of car. The GT4 obviously has to break more in a straight line and turn in later, and the TCR doesn't. So the TCR line and the GT4 line have converged on the way in. It's made a bit of a mess and opportunistic from the Hunkos Aston Martin GT4 there in their battle for position. Curiously, there is uh, there is an outstanding investigation going into contact between the car number 176 and car number 439. Now, car number 439 is third in GT4, SRC Mivan, of course. The car number 176 is your leader in TCR. 30 seconds it leads in the uh, TCR category, so it's opening up that gap all the time. But uh, depending on what the outcome of that that is, you, would, you wouldn't expect it to be any more than a seconds uh, penalty. So maybe that's why SimRC are pushing on right to the end here, David, to make sure they've got enough of enough, a buffer just in case they get a penalty. Yeah, we had some positions on the podium, sort of uh, not quite settled, but but the post-race penalty was hanging in the balance and we had that that scenario where you're going well they need five seconds on track they need five seconds just to, to make sure they've, they've they've covered it off and they're clear it was koana or msi but in the end it, it, it didn't end up factoring in too much because the the quicker car was the the quicker car to the end we'll keep an eye on that one and CSRA by Entropic have picked up the 
25 seconds for their track limits quite late on here and where they are in the 421 car uh, I'm not sure if they are 25 seconds ahead of 5 star motorsport in 7th so uh, I wonder if Connor has got the magic button because the way my timing works it won't exactly tell me but what it does mean is if CSRA by Entropic catch Sabelt in front of them and pass them uh, it won't end up mattering because there's 25 seconds hanging over CSRA by Entropic. Well, what I can tell you for sure is that six tenths of a second has been dragged out of the gap between there are two leading cars in Porsche Cup, so Team 75 Bernard now only have a gap of just five seconds back to Apex Racing Academy's Michael Yanni. So with eight and a half minutes to go, it's about, I'll give it four or five laps. Yeah, maybe five or six laps. Um, it's going to be tight. Uh, Michael Yanni's going to have to push really hard, but the closer you get, the more nervous the Team 75 Bernard team will be getting. And after six hours of racing, amazing, it's come down to such a tight gap as all the others. Other gaps are sort of around 25 seconds to half a minute. Not so in the Porsche Cup category, which ironically, David, the Porsche Cup category was the one that looked sewn up uh, most of all up until about three quarter distance. So apparently this uh, 25 seconds for the track limits could take a spot away from CSRA by Entropic here. 20 second minutes. It's a five star motorsport behind. And, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm with you on this, Peter. This is why you never say never in this style of racing because there are, there are, the races are always too long and there's always too many variables. Track limits, penalties, every team has to have two drivers you know as a minimum for their uh, their combination and no two drivers are identical no two drivers are going to have identical pace you can never say that you know oh you know because this team was faster in the first stint they're going to be faster all the way to the end of the race sometimes you know, it, it, it flip-flops like that. A team might have a, a stronger driver for the opening stint, and then another team comes back at them because they've saved their strongest driver for the, the closing stint. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it seems that Michael Yanni has been making a big difference in this last, uh, this last stint. The gap is now under four seconds at the front of Porsche Cup. Uh, Michael Yanni absolutely flying. Uh, and whatever happens, he can... Uh, go to sleep tonight knowing that he's throwing everything at it yeah it's really the gap is coming down and like I say the more that snowball effect happens I mean, all it takes is just one person to one faster car to come through and push Team 75 Bernard wide or someone spins in front of them or whatever and all of a sudden it's game on and certainly in terms of lap time it's in the favour of Apex Racing Academy right now so there's the Team 75 Bernard car and there is Apex Racing Academy so they're in the same shot now there they are that is your gap yeah the, the numbers get very very simple at this point of the race it's going to be three laps to go there's going to be three seconds Michael Johnny needs to just keep pulling a second a lap out of his competitor if he can and the, the teams don't know for each other we don't know how close they are to their 50 off tracks before they get a penalty. Could could Team 75 Bernhard be, be on 48, 49 here and Michael Janney's got just a couple more that his teammates saved him so he can push a little harder, he can take a little more risk because for, for Team 75 Bernhard, if I was driving and we were right on that, that limit, I would, I'd sooner let the guy catch me and, and force him to pass than overextend myself trying to pretend, protect the gap and maybe, you know, give away that slam dunk 25 second penalty that makes it you know, uh, unavoidable that I've thrown away the lead. Make the other guy do the work. There's more than a second on that lap, wasn't it? And that's what Michael Janney needs. 
yeah, just keep keep on pushing, and he'll just be getting encouraged so much. You know, he'll have a spotter in the ear saying, "Come on, push, 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 push." There you go. Gets just slices past the TCR car. He's got the full send machine up next. Moments like that are what start to become do or die here for Apex Racing Academy because if you were half a car length further back on that TCR, you were still going to go for it exactly, even if it became, you know, a, a, a little risky. How do you, how do you navigate this when you know the sands and the the timer uh, are very few? Well, I would think now that Michael Yanni, the last of this TCR train here, oh, it's about GT4, isn't it? Should get actually a good draft off this GT4 car. And, would imagine, yeah, make it down into the tight turn 12 with this GT4 car disposed on. It's got a great, great draft there from the Ford Zilla Mercedes. And next now, there is no cars between them. 3.1 seconds. Oh, this is coming down to the wire here as well. What a drive this has been from Michael Yanni. And you know what? I think your point on the track limits, uh, David, could be spot on. Uh, we don't know, we don't have that information how close they are on off-track penalties but uh, they have a limit of 50 effectively and you would think after 6 laps especially how fast that Jürgen Frank was earlier on, you've got to think to run that pace you've got to be breaking it, if it's breaking it from time to time and yeah, just under 3 seconds now the gap comes down as well so motor racing is a battle team rash sport. on the front right there, yeah it's, it's a team sport and your teammates can, can make you look like heroes or make you look like fools because if, if, if Jürgen Frank used up 45 of those off tracks to, to build a lead and, and set quick laps and make gaps and then hands it over to Marvin Strell who's got a tippy toe uh, in his ballerina boots then you know Frank looks like the hero and Marvin Strell uh, you know looks like he forgot to eat breakfast but you know, what went on behind the scenes, what was the state of the car, the fuel, the tyres, the track limits when it when it got handed to him. Marvin Strell could be the real hero here uh, at the end, and exactly the same could be said for Apex Racing Team. Maybe the teammates have set up Journey to look like a hero in the final stint, because the other way around can happen. You can... Um, you, you can throw away a lot of time and a lot of track position at, at, at the end. Well, there, your lap time last time I, there, your leader, 207.4, 207 flat for Michael Yanni, so four tenths was the difference there. And yeah, it's, he's pulling it in. He's pulling it in, two and a half seconds, and there you go, he can appear in the mirror. Now, so, what's kind of critical racing. to this battle, actually, is where the overall leader is. Because the, with a minute left on the clock, the overall leader is going to get around to start one more lap after this. We are not on the final lap yet. And I think the overall leader is in... Where is the overall leader relative to that battle then as well? Because it, it, th there could be a little more time for the 992 battle than, than, than we think. So, well, there's some track limits. There's some track limits for, for Team 75. So is the leader going to get them on this lap? If the leader doesn't get them, the leader's taking the white flag now. If the leader lets those two stay in front of him, they've got two more laps to, to have. But if he gets a, a past both of them on this lap, that's the final lap for them. I, uh, I I wager there's two more. I wager there's two more that Marvin Strell's got to hang on and that Michael Johnny has to try to pursue this. And we saw in the final sector, Marvin Strell start to get a little bit looser and more free with the track limits. So they know how many's left in, in their wallet on that one. We don't until they step over the limit of 50 and get penalised. Well, it's coming down to this then. Michael Yanni, he'll be hoping that that MSI Porsche, the overall race leader, stays behind 
and gives these guys the last lap, the very last lap. This could be working perfectly for Apex Racing Academy. It's oh, a little moment there for Marvin Strell in the Team 75 Bernard car and he's close enough now as Michael Yanni to get a slipstream from Marvin Strell just dragging hundred by hundred, thousands by thousands they come into the braking zone now turn 12 hard on the brakes down the gearbox Yanni getting so close now we've got a bogey up ahead the TCR machine for Carbon Simsport, oh and the 975 of Marvin Strell hasn't been able to get by just yet, he does eventually and then, then Yanni's got to go round the TCR machine but this is your battle for the win here in the Porsche Cup category, where is MSI, there it is at the back of the back of the shot there, I, you know what David, I just don't see that MSI Porsche getting there in time to cut these guys out of a lap. Yeah, the MSI Esports Porsche is not far away from the chequered flag and a fantastic win to extend their lead, but it is going to give this battle one more lap as well. This is such an awesome finish. Well, they are going to get one more lap as the chequered flag is out, but that is for our overall winner, Christian Lamella, and MSI Esports win in GT3. What a drive for the Porsche squad, but it comes back to this, the Porsche Cup category, the 992 class, and it's a showdown between Team 75 Bernard and Apex Racing Academy, Marvin Strell versus Michael Yanni. There's going to be virtually no traffic for them to worry about coming through here. Here comes your TCR winner, Nathan Ames and Sim RC. They've been superb, well deserved. Back to the Porsche Cups we go as they come through the S's. You don't even need to know it's two tenths of a second. You can just see it's underneath the car length. You can see it's bumper to bumper and the pressure is on Marvin Strell. The pace is with Apex Racing Academy, but it's so few opportunities between here and the chequered flag. It's all about the end of this long straight. He's looking to go over under, looking to square off the exit, pick up the slipstream. It's going to be all on the brakes at the end of this straight. Last lap, last opportunity for the win in 9-9-2. Six hours of racing comes down to this then. The Marvin Strell driven 975 Porsche of Team Bernard hard on the brakes there. Yanni tries to go the long way around. It's all oh, mistake from Strell. Mistake from Strell. He goes wide off the circuit. Goes back on the brakes. They touch. They touch. Strell leans on him. Strell leans on Yanni as they come up towards. They touch again. They get together. Yanni's on the grass. Oh, the stewards are going to have a look at this one as Marvin Strell still trying to hang on. They touch again. Up they go. And, oh, Yanni turned in the fence. Yanni turned in the fence. Oh, Marvin Strell, well, he leads on the road. I do not know if he will get to hang it on to that one. Now, the question is, can Apex Racing Academy get home in second? And could yes. we potentially see the... Th yes, we can. Will Michael Yanni end up your winner? Marvin Strell wins on the road. But that incident there, David, that's going to need studying and studying and studying. Yeah, because of where the overall leader was, those were the only two cars in class that, that hadn't already taken the chequered flag. So uh, there was no way for Apex Racing Academy to not cross the line in, in second there because third was trapped the lap down. Uh, but, I mean, we wanted to see them race to the end. We didn't want to see it ended in the stewards' room post-race, but I, I, I think it will. It, it starts here with SimRC off the road uh, in the Team 75 SimRC Bernhard car and then that second look back down the inside feels feels cheeky but this is where it really force Apex off the road that's where I was thinking this is going to end in the stewards box not on track and that is it's, it's sad to see we wanted to see him race they raced and it's it, the it's ended with a little <laughs> controversy Love to see the steering up good there, Marvin Strell. That's the other really pretty inconclusive, but well, it's the interesting one, you know, when they when they came together the first time on the switch back there, you know, did Yanni leave enough room? Did Strell stuff it up the inside? It was really last, last lap stuff. So here, off track. So the position is yielded. The position has been taken there. Yanni takes it, but then leaves the door open. 
Strel takes it, fair enough. And then this part, I don't know, does Yanni have to back out at that stage? It's hard, that, again, for the stewards to decide. But here is where... Uh, oh, that's going to rumble on. That is going to rumble on. What I'm looking for right now is it doesn't appear that that put either of them over the uh, over the off tracks uh, from what I can tell at the moment if that was how it, it gets decided that'd be unfortunate but I, I despite that I, I I I still enjoyed seeing that because we know it it doesn't rob it can't rob Apex Racing Academy of a podium. Um, they, the, no matter what, they'll still get a podium. So I'm glad that both of them got the opportunity to to, to race like that. And it's it, it'll end in maybe some flared tempers, but it, it can't end in disaster or a championship over for either team. Well, uh, it's uh, it will rumble on for sure. But uh, in GT3, it was much more clean cut. Christian Lamella. An MSI Esports Porsche win by 28 seconds from Apex Racing Academy and Rathim Bezoi. Lucas Yestat for Beeler Racing Team Euronics was third. Then it was BMW Team BS Turner, a story of what could have been for them in fourth place. Rounding out the top five as Williams Esports and their Porsche. The Beeler Racing Team Euronics crew finished in sixth with the last few cars there, several laps down. The Williams Esports, Chilblack, Habu, Altus, and Lafitte CS Les. They do not make the flag, they retire. 992, well, that's your order at the moment. Marvin Strell winning on the road for Team 75 Bernard. 13 seconds ahead of Apex Racing Academy. What a last lap that was between Strell and Yanni. How will it end up? Well, we'll see. Urano Esports, they nip on to the podium with Sam Koitik in the car to the flag. Asetek Simsports for fourth. They built Esports in fifth. Then it's Ori's rink on by IRS. Manatee Racing, Wave Italy, Havu and ATRS Esports rounds out the top 10 in the Porsche Cup category. SRC, Mivano Course, Williams Esports, ATRS and Pure Sims did not reach the checkered flag. GT4, well, a strategical masterpiece from Dylan, Scribble, Dylan Scrivens and the Mercedes AMG Team Urano crew. They win by 25 seconds to complete their perfect run so far this season. CMRC, the lone standing Aston Martin there in the top 10, they finished in second after taking just four stops. SRC Mivano course, they round out the podium. Pure Sims Esports for fourth, followed by CSRA by Entropic. Sabel Esports, Five Star Motorsport, Impulse Racing, Team Fordzilla and fiercely forward. Last few, SEK Racing, Undercut Racing, Kunkos, Torque Freak, Pure Sims and Hardpoint all finishing outside of the top 10. And finally in TCR, well it was SimRC who took the day, Nathan Ames and Corentin Guinez, your winner, by 35 seconds from Pure Sims Esports. Zenith Esports, they get the last spot on the podium, MSI Esports have to settle for fourth, and Team Heusingville round out the top five. Impulse Racing were six, followed by Carbon Simsport, Toolsend Racing, Aspar, and Maniti Racing with the fastest lap of the race. Overall, going to Sven Hasse, 201.7 for the Euronics Bila driver. Well, well, well. Lots to talk about here as well. A few drivers coming in to tell their stories. I think why don't we, while it's uh, at the top of our mind, I think it's uh, time that we chat to a driver from car number 975, Jürgen Frank, will come in to join us now. Uh, and let's have a chat with the driver from the Team 75 Bernard machine. And he comes. Jürgen, uh, a win on the road there for Team 75 Bernard. Obviously, everyone's going to talk about that last lap. What's your view on that one? I can't say that much about it, to be honest. Um, yeah, I guess um, Marvin stayed pretty much on the, the right, and the Apex car uh, 
close a bit to the right side, but yeah, I don't know. It's a close one to talk about. And I'm sure you've had the chance to 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 chat to to Marvin. What's his uh, what's his kind of recall on on the situation? What was what are his uh, feedback? What's his feedback from it? Yeah, um, he said uh, for sure he made the car white the whole lap, and on the particular incident after the um, tight left corner, he said he uh, had the wheel straight and drove straight ahead. So for him, it's uh, a racing incident. Well, I appreciate appreciate uh, appreciate you telling us, Jürgen. Looking at the the race as a whole, you guys had really strong pace early on, leading by over half a minute. But where it, where did the pace kind of drop away in the in the latter part of the in the latter part of the race? Um, yeah, Marvin had a, had a pretty busy day today with a handball match, and <laughs> his uh, <laughs> body was not completely fit to do that uh, intense race here. And yeah, that's why he dropped a little bit, but still he did a great job and the mega fight in the end. And yeah, for myself, I can say I had a really good first free stint. Um, yeah, the car was flying. Uh, quality was not so good. So I, I binned the lap completely, but it was still P3. Uh, managed to get P1 at the start, so for me it went really good today. Well, we uh, we appreciate appreciate you coming in to to chat to us, Jürgen. Thanks so much, and uh, well done on on some fantastic pace today. Yeah, and thanks to you too for the commentating. See you next time. Thanks, Jürgen. So next will be the will be uh, joining our overall reader Danny Elgerby from Car Fourteen MSI Porsche. Down to you, David Haynes. Lapsing. Yeah, here we have our overall race winner. Congratulations to, to you guys. I mean, 14th on the grid to the win. Great tyre life, great fuel economy. Congrats. Thanks a lot, mate. Uh, the race was uh, really hard on them from the start because uh, Christian did uh, off tracks on, on quali and we had to start uh, last on the grid. But we knew our, our car on race pace was really good. Uh, we, we always are good on race pace, but not so much on quality. Uh, this time is no different here. And we knew that the nursing the tires on the first thing was really important to, to gain time against the BMWs because of the 45 kgs bob uh, on the Porsche here. And yeah, our race was really calm. We didn't have any big incident besides a, a touch with Altus on the first thing, I think. And it was just uh, pushing the car to the limit and not eating two of tracks per lap, which was easy to do on this track, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, we started this championship at Spa, but it didn't seem like people had nearly as many problems with off tracks there as, as, as here. Why is that? Yeah, I think Spa was uh, like, you could be fast, but not mm, on that limit uh, like on Kota, you need to be really really pushing the edge of the track to be fast on every exit of the corners to maximize the the track space and i think uh, it's really easy to to eat uh, an off track here or even three off tracks on one lap like uh, i did sometimes um it was just uh, manage management of the off tracks until the, the end of the race i think we had uh, only three off tracks left and I told Christian, slow down a bit. We don't need to push anymore. So you can take it easy. You win by 28 seconds. Um, could you still won with 55 kilograms? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Because uh, a lot of the BMWs uh, got many problems on the race. Uh, for example, Biela got uh, hit uh, and many penalties. BS, uh, Turner, Carr which was fast, uh, got penalties too. Uh, the BMW Apex car, for example, with Maxim Brand uh, was really fast, uh, for example, too. 
and I had to nurse my tires uh, because I knew that on the first thing there was no way I could be faster than a BMW. So I took all my cars onto the second thing. I nursed my tires on the first thing, and then on the second we were I were flying, but uh, the BMW was slower because I think uh, they pushed a lot more than me there. But I don't think with the 55 kgs we could have one. To be honest, I think the 45 kgs is more than enough on this track, and I think the BMW. The the pace that it lacks is not the pages, it's more the, the tire life because of the physics. Well, it's always a team effort in 24-hour Series eSports. Your teammate Christian Lamella did uh, a lot of laps in, in this race. What do, you, what do you have to say about his effort? Yeah, I, I told Christian that he had to do the four hours because I had a really bad uh, tooth pain these last two days and I slept like two hours for this race and he was like okay i can do it no problem and he did the quality not so good quality but i didn't go a, do a good quality on spa for example too <laughs> and uh, he did uh, like, amazing first two hours uh, of the race he went from last on the grid to almost uh, a podium i think we were no he finished p2 and um, the first two hours with which is amazing and he did amazing pace uh, he, he ate the tires a lot more than me, but he went. He was faster too, so I can't tell him anything bad. But he he did a job for this race. He prepared it uh, a lot more than me, for example, and the setup was r really good. And I can't thank him enough. Well, congratulations again to you guys. Your second win, never off the podium, uh, Danny. There are some some sponsors on the MSI car. Who are they? Uh, the sponsors we have right now are uh, Algadi, uh, Ucalsa, I think Philips uh, right now too, uh, GHK, which is a t-shirt brand, and I don't think I miss anyone, I think so. I don't know, I can't remember, right? Yeah, MSI, which is Motorsport Institute, that's another sponsor, but I think no, no more sponsors on the car, apart from those. Well, congratulations to you, your teammate Christian, and we look forward to seeing you guys at Monza in December. Thanks a lot, mate. See you there. There we have it, Peter. Toothaches, uh, handball injuries, I don't know, but, but it hasn't stopped our, our teams and our drivers and our winners. No, they, they, they forge on regardless. Well, we're going to get the other side of the story there with that last lap battle between the Apex Racing Academy Porsche Cup car and the Team 75 Bernard car. We've heard from... Team 75, Bernard, let's hear from Apex Racing Academy and Michael Yanni, who was there right in the middle of that fight. And, uh, yeah, and certainly lots to lots to talk about there. Uh, we'll get him to come and join us in just a moment here on Racebot TV. And, Michael, welcome to the Racebot TV commentary box. Thanks so much for coming to join us. Just tell us your uh, your assessment of that last lap. Michael, if just uh, if uh, thanks for coming to join us here in the Racebot TV commentary box. If uh, just if you could uh, kindly give us your uh, assessment of that last lap there. Okay, so having some problems getting a chat with Michael Yanni. Why don't we have a chat then with uh, with our GT4 winner, uh, Urano Esports, Dylan Scrivens, who pulled off a superb uh, finish to that race. A great strategical. Uh, ploy there from uh, Urano Esports. Dylan, welcome to the Racebot TV commentary box. Hello. Well, that was a superb win, third win of the season. Did uh, did it feel in control throughout the day, or tell us about it? Uh, definitely not. Uh, I think we uh, we well, I uh, mucked up a little bit in qualifying. Didn't quite get the the perfect lap, which set us on the back foot a little bit, and then uh, a bit of a boneheaded move from myself gave us a, a 15 second penalty at the start of the race which is not ideal but we persevered we stuck with it and ran our strategy and it, it worked out just fine in the end certainly did i mean tell us a little bit about the traffic there because gt4 is kind of stuck in the middle a little bit shall we say <laughs> and uh you know there's the, you've got faster cars coming through but you've also got to make your way through on the tcrs just tell us what it was like out there with the traffic 
Um, as all races in this series are, uh, especially in, the, in this class, uh, I think you've just got to use your brain and just uh, help out and cooperate as much with the other classes. Uh, if you're predictable, if you're not stupid, if you're not trying to block people, uh, then usually it, it should be all, all good. Well, certainly, it certainly worked out well. I mean, tell us about heading into the second half of the of the season. You've got three wins under your belt. The Mercedes looks like it's flying. I mean, how confident are you all feeling right now in that uh, Urano team room? Uh, pretty confident, I'd say. Um, we'll see how the how the rest of the season goes. Uh, some interesting tracks, especially the Nordschleife. Life. Looking forward to that one. Um, the other two, not so much, but, you know, same for everyone. We'll see. I share your thoughts on the Nord Life. Always fun to go and race there. Dylan, congratulations to you and the team. Well done and uh, good luck for the next round. Many thanks. So I think we've got uh, we've got Michael Yanni standing by now uh, here in the RaceBot TV commentary box. Uh, Michael, uh, thanks so much for coming to join us. Uh, if you could just give us uh, your assessment of that uh, of that last lap. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, uh, you know, first of all, my mic was on push to talk, so uh, that's on me. Um, secondly, yeah, that was uh, really a crazy last lap. Um, I mean, we knew going into it that we were going to have some good second, uh, like, I guess at the end of the stint, we, we knew we would have really good pace. Um, and it was just about trying to push it to the limit, I guess, and, and get there. And uh, ultimately, we did. Um, still unclear uh, as to the outcome of everything. But regardless of that, yeah. Uh, it was great work from everybody today and uh, really could provide some uh, some good pace there. So it was nice. I mean, you were certainly absolutely flying through that last little bit. We're getting word that you did step over the the uh, incident point limit. Uh, and of course, then associated penalty with that. Did you know how close you were and at what point did you step over that limit? Uh, yeah, we, so basically I had limited myself, so I had two extra uh, off tracks. Um, ultimately I think what happened is, uh, in our little scuffle, uh, when we went off into the grass, uh, that was the limit, uh, that pushed us over there. Um, so I'm unsure how, uh, that will be stewarded. Uh, but yeah, regardless, um, I think because we finished a lap up, am I right with that? Or... Yes, you did. Yes, your second, the very worst, uh, yeah, so which exactly. I guess isn't bad. Yeah, so I mean, that's a good place to be. Yeah, exactly. Good outcome for today. Uh, good points for the championship. So, yeah, just positives, really. Great race, a lot of fun. But uh, traffic is really crazy here. I don't think I've ever experienced anything like that uh, in my sim racing career so far. In what way, Michael, do you, would you say that it's, is it just the sheer mixture of asses out there or is it the circuit or combination of all? What What is it that made it so tough out there? Because it did look hard work in traffic. Yeah, um, I would say it's the braking zones because they're so long here and in multiple different corners. Uh, like you could take turn one, for example. A lot of the, like the TCRs, the GT4s, the TCRs can just straight brake later than us by about 50 meters. And the GT4s have that ABS to use, so they can carry a lot more speed to the Apex. So at least for us in the 992, it's really difficult to judge if we can send it in hard enough to actually get past them without overshooting the corner, for example. Um, and then, you know, the GT3s have bad levels of downforce, so they just come and sneak up on you through the S's. Um, but yeah, all that stuff is... It's a lot of fun, but there are definitely some hairy moments as uh, we experienced earlier. So certainly, it appeared to be a few. Well, uh, Michael, regardless, what a, a super, super last phase of the race that was! You drove superbly with an amazing pace, and uh, you certainly put on a show for us in that last uh, that last lap. Well done on a great drive, and good luck for the next round. Great, thanks, guys. So we got one more driver to have a chat with. David Haynes is down with our TCR winner, Nathan Ames. Yeah, congratulations to you guys again, making uh, a, a pretty winning habit in, uh, in in TCR, now breaking Pure Sims' winning streak and d delivering on what you guys thought maybe you could have done in the opening rounds. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, I can't speak much for round one as I wasn't, I wasn't driving there, but yeah, I think both... We, we really wanted to win both previous rounds and especially 
losing last round by about two seconds, I think it was in the end, really sucked for us. Um, so, yeah, just happy to get back where we want to be and kind of not let Pure Sims get that one hand on the championship. What's the key then to TCR at this place and TCR generally in, in this style of racing? Because while it, it is a car built with endurance racing kind of in mind, it, it, it is still partly at heart a sort of sprint racing car. Yeah, for sure. So um, I think the TCR field really stays together in that first hour or two and you have to fight yourself because you're like, oh, I wish I could just send it down the inside here like a normal sprint race for a TCR. But yeah, I think you, you've really got to pace yourself, um, especially in that first two, three hours, which I think Corentin did really well today. Um, I don't think we led any of the first stint, but we, we sat behind the leader and fuel saved. And I think that really helped us. Um, yeah, it really helped us today. So, yeah, it's, it is a very patient game. And the race, when you're that close together in a train, really doesn't start for, for a few hours. Some others in your category did overstep the, the track limits. Did uh, Corentin leave you leave you many to spare? Oh, yeah, Corentin did great, did great today. He got 14, I think, in that first, um, that double stint, so three hours, which 14 and three hours around here is just insane. Um, but yeah, I think, I think in the end we ended on 40, so that doesn't make me look very good, but, um, uh, I guess they were free to use, but yeah, I think Corentin, Corentin really helps me get into the car halfway through the race and know, right, I do have a bit of leniency. I can, I can push whilst being sensible. So no, yeah, I think Corentin really sorted me out today to be fair. You can't carry them over to next round, so you might as well uh, you might as well use them up before the checkered flag and uh, and and claim that's what it took to to take the victory. Exactly, yeah. I think fifty's a target, isn't it? And if if you're going around with twenty, then you're just you're leaving time on the table. So no, yeah, I'm I'm happy that it didn't become a oh like we really need to be careful. Um, I think it was always just about under control. But yeah, yeah, definitely don't want to be going over that fifty. Word about these TCR tires. I mean, they don't play a great role in in the strategy because you, you you get them for free. But I, I'd been under the impression that the the tire warm up on an endurance setup was 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 a bit tricky. But then the lap times of you and your teammate, it it seemed like they came in pretty quickly when they were new. Yeah, so TCR is going through a bit of a weird tire model phase at the moment. Um, but quickest thing to do basically I was to double stint um the tires because a stint going back out on a full tank and double stinting your tires is so much faster than changing all four tires and then going out for your second stint if that makes sense so um yeah it just it, today it was really don't change tires if you don't need to um but yeah um it was a really high high um, wearing track so yeah we we only just about managed to make that work well congrats to you guys you keep this tcr championship uh, alive and spicy and with double points for the final round which is still a while away i think everything's on the table till the 12 hours of barcelona yeah for sure i think going into the second half i think we know what we need to do um and um the last round i think is double points i could be wrong but i think it is so we really just need to put ourselves in the best position to go into that last round and um, be able, if, it, if it's a win for us in that last round, then that's all we need. That's the ideal situation. Well, you guys at SimRC have a car in every category. You come away with a win in two, which I'm sure uh, is delightful for uh, all involved. Anyone you would like to thank? Uh, just a massive thanks to Corentin. Um, I think he's had to work really hard this week between, uh, I think, three different leagues, including um, IMSA, which is currently on. Um, and to be able to divide his attention that many ways and still be such a use. Um, yeah, just a great guy to work with. And this whole team's just been amazing. I'm still relatively new here, but it's just been incredible so far. So hopefully we can keep it up. Awesome. Looking forward to Monza. Cheers, guys. See you there.
Well, that's about all we've got time for here on Racebot TV. Congratulations to all of our four class winners here in the third round of this 24-8 series eSports Championship. The next round, the first Sunday of December, we go to Monza for another six-hour enduro and we'll have all the action here on Racebot TV. But on behalf of us all here at Racebot TV, thanks so much for watching and goodbye.